Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time to the channel or to the live stream, first of all, welcome. Uh, the way this works, super simple. Drop your questions or comments down in the chat, and I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't. But either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care, your lawn care projects, things that are going well, things that are not going so well. And uh, yeah, just, just it's a fun time, fun time. All right, so let's see what we have in the chat tonight, man. Todd is starting out um, really good with a question about fungus. All right, we got Todd there. We got Jeremy Espinoza, King Khan. Uh, guys, I'm gonna come back to your questions. I just wanna greet a few people first and then we will, um, we'll get into the questions. King Khan saying, uh, greetings, Ron. What's going on, uh, King Khan? Hopefully you are doing uh, well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. Eileen Perez, what's going on, Eileen? Like your, your puppy with the, with the beret in its hair. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you as always. And um, let's just get right into the questions. I'm not sure how many people we're gonna have tonight, but let's see, let's just get right to it. All right, first question or comment of the evening comes from Todd Hickey. He says, hey Ron, I don't have fungus now, but I am very concerned about my neighbors with visible past damage. Should I apply Headway G to prevent their fungus from migrating to my yard? Hybrid Bermuda, Eastern North Carolina. Um, it's not a bad idea, Todd. So the thing is, do you remember what time of year it was that you saw the uh, the, the fungus problems in your neighbor's lawn? Uh, reason why is it's, it's a bit early uh, for fungicide. I mean, unless you have like a past history of having issues with, with lawn fungus this early in the season, I kind of doubt, but if unless you have that or your neighbors have that, I might wait a bit. So here's the thing, the general time, the general um, uh, guidance on applying fungicide, especially for preventative um, purposes, tends to be uh, the months of May and June. If you look at most product labels, you look at any of the product labels from Syngenta, that's what they're gonna tell you. May, June, if you're doing it as a, as a preventative. Uh, now, if again, if you have situations where you have a history of it happening earlier, that's when you might want to apply earlier. In my case, good example, a perfect example is like last year, I ran into an issue with some large patch in my lawn in the month of April. So this year, I'm going to be applying headway in April, a little bit earlier than I normally would, uh, which is normally May, um, just to just to be safe, just to be careful. That's it, just to, you know, I don't think it's really gonna be a problem this year, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go, um, you know, probably a few weeks early, not the beginning of April, but by mid-April, I'll get my fungicide down. So it's really up to you. Uh, it's a good idea, especially if you've got, um, you've seen issues with your neighbor's lawn and you definitely don't want that in your lawn. I mean, fungus, fungus problems and, and insect problems, two things you do not want in your lawn. They both take a while to fix and your lawn's basically an eyesore until they repair themselves. It's not something that you can really easily speed up, unfortunately. So yeah, I, I do think it's a good idea. I would um, I would wait as long as you can to apply it. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw it down just right now, unless there's, again, historical reasons for you to believe that uh, that now it would be necessary. Good job choosing Headway G. I mean, it's it's the one that I would go with, it's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, you know, I think Syngenta also makes, um, Oh, what's what's the old one called? Her it's Heritage, Heritage, which is just a uh, socks, just strobin, which I don't get why anyone. I think it's probably just a historical thing, right? I don't know why anyone would buy Heritage when Headways around because it's you know it's better. It's got two active ingredients. Two, I mean, it's excellent, excellent product. So great question. Hopefully that helps. If you need anything else, let me know. I see you have another question here, a follow up, but I will jump to that here in a second. Next up is Jeremy Espinosa. Jeremy says, Hey Ron, just bought the T-Jet, the AIX, I think this is, that's the, uh, that's, I think that's the, the um, air induction tip. Um, the, the air induction and the non-air induction T-Jet tips. How, we'll just, we'll just call it that, right? It says one is for foliar, one is for soil. If you use it as a combo to spray T-Nex and iron, uh, an iron product, and maybe a Bifin IT, which nozzle would you recommend? Huh, um, see the Bifin is the thing that's throwing me a curve. Really, I would go with the foliar. If I, I, I'm more lean, more inclined to go towards that. I don't know, I've never actually spray, sprayed uh, bifen, bifenthrin through a, a foliar tip to know how it would behave, especially maybe mixed with those other things. Uh, I, t I know like Trinexapac ethyl, like a PGR and a um, and an iron product or a, you know, a liquid fertilizer with an iron product should not be, is not gonna be an issue at all. I do it, I do that all the time. It shouldn't be a problem at all. It's just the it's just the bifin I'm not, I'm not sure about. So if you want to be super safe, if you want to be super safe, what you could do is you can mix up a small amount of it. So if it doesn't work, you're not wasting a ton of product and see how it does. For T-Nex um, and the, the liquid furt, uh, a foliar tip is the correct tip, is the most optimal tip to use. Now, if you use like an air induction tip, as long as it's not one of the ones that have the really, really large droplets, the ones for like, uh, for doing uh, pre-emergent, 
it's probably going to be okay. But if we're talking about, you know, you, you go through the trouble of buying, uh, you know, a, a um, you know, I don't know, a, a boutique, a higher end uh, spray nozzle. So why not use the right one for the product? I, I would be more inclined to apply them separately just to make sure. But again, if you want to, if you want to give it a go, mix a small amount, see how it does, make sure that it doesn't clog or anything weird like that. And, uh, and then just go from there. So hopefully that helps. Good job. I like how you're thinking, man. Thinking ahead. You're thinking ahead. Just trying to trying to save um, save steps. That is one advantage. You know, it's it's not really spoken about enough. That is one huge advantage to liquid products versus granular. Now, granular, you always have the the idea of easy application. Um, you know, you set the nozzle, uh, the um, sorry, the 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 setting on your spreader, and away you go. Uh, but as far as having a lot of control over application rates and being able to do what you're doing, right, which is doing multiple things at the same time, you know, you're a bit limited when it comes to granulars for that. So it's good, good job on uh, on thinking out of the box. And uh, yeah, let me know if you decide to do that, how it works out. The Teenex and the Liquid Furt won't be a problem. The Bifenthrin is the thing that I, it's a bit of a question mark. All right, next up, Todd is back with question number two. He says, I want to be done with granular products. I have a Flowzone Typhoon 2 backpack sprayer. Is it possible to do everything needed with strictly chemical applications? Hybrid Bermuda, Eastern North Carolina. So I guess you're asking, I mean, more so you're saying if it's just strictly liquid. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is It is possible. So let's see, if you were gonna do that, how would I go about it? Um, how would I go about it? If you're gonna do everything liquid, so you, so really the only thing you're not doing is like a granular furt uh, as you like your base. The only thing you, you might have a problem with is, is like pH adjustments, uh, Todd. So lime is, Say you want you need to raise pH. Lime is something that is just it's a, the most cost effective way of uh, of doing that. But outside of that, you should be able to do most things with um with, as, as a liquid. So let's take a look. If we were going to do that, if I were going to do that with you, let's go to the golf course lawn store. Take a ride here. What I would do is uh, you'd pick your um, your liquid first. So either release zero nine hundred one C, either like a nine hundred one C or Turf Plex, one of those two. That would be one of these two would be your FERT. Um, and then uh, I would tack on some Nutrizolve with it. Um, so you have your, your complete, so that you're covering your macros and your micros, right? Because Nutrizolve is going to cover your micros. Uh, Turfplex is going to cover, Turfplex or 901C is going to cover your macros. Turfplex has a little bit of phosphorus in it. So if you need that, that's an option there. If you do not need phosphorus and you just want some micronized carbon as well, then release 901C is a great um, option. And yeah, you absolutely could do that as long as you're willing to spray every couple of weeks, like a light rate. Um, that that could work. Uh, you know, also obviously if you if you couple it with a carbon kit, um, that's just going to make things that much better. Now there is a also a slow release a liquid nitrogen product on the store. If I use the search, uh, I think it's called Greens Plus. Yeah, so this guy is also a liquid fertilizer product. It is a slow release nitrogen. So if you don't want to get out there every couple of weeks and have to um, to spray your lawn, then this is an option as well. Um, but you know, you strike me as the kind of guy that likes to be out there in your lawn uh, messing around. So it's it's your call between whether you need uh, phosphorus or not, and in which case release, release 901C or Turfplex. In either case, combine that with Nutrizolve and then decide on um, on whether you're gonna do the, um, the the carbon kit as well. I think it's a great option. The, the, all those things mix well together. I've tested them all together. They mix well, no problems with, with clogging or any any kind of weirdness. So yeah, it is possible. It just depends on which way you want to go, right? Do you want to do more of a, um, a, a spoon feeding route where you're um, out there every couple of weeks and you're using uh, quicker release products? Or do you want to use a slower release uh, nitrogen um, and, and, and see how that works? I think it can work well. You know, I think it can work well. You just have to be out there a little bit more often than you would if you use like a, a granular uh, product. Uh, let's see what else. If you were gonna do like your insecticides, for, for example, a celeprin, a celeprin, you're gonna be able to get that um, in a liquid. So let's go back here. So for your insecticides, yeah, you could you could handle that. So we carry um, a celeprin in both a liquid and a granular, either way. Uh, this one, the liquid, you have a more options around, uh, more flexibility around application rates. Uh, and again, if you want to mix it with things, with other things, you can do that as well too. So there's that, uh, fungicide, uh, I don't believe, I don't believe the headway is not, I don't believe it's available, um, in a liquid. Um, so in your case, you know, you might be stuck with using heritage, which I think is available. I don't carry it, but I believe it is available as a liquid. So in fungicides, um, insecticides, you're covered. 
pest control. You're also covered because you can, if you want to, you can go with the Miramichi Green uh, pest control. So yeah, you could, you could theoretically do it all liquid. Um, you could, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to try out and see how that, how that works out. But yeah, I think you've got most things covered, uh, save like a bunch of, um, you know, save an, a way for really adjusting uh, pH. So yeah, if you, if you decide to do that route, give, give me a give me a shout. Let me know how it works out. But you definitely you definitely can pull it off. Definitely can pull it off. I don't know which way is going to be more cost effective. Probably liquids. Probably, probably liquids. So yeah, if you're gonna be out there anyway, could be worth considering. If you're gonna do that, Todd, uh, kind of like uh, Jeremy's question, make sure you get some proper tips. Like get um, a good air induction tip, like a slightly larger droplet tip, and then a, a proper foliar tip. And then go to town. Should be a great time. Sounds like uh, sounds like fun to me. All right. Next up, we have um, Eileen Perez in the house. She has a question. She says, "Could you speak about uh, how to control weeds during the overseed process?" Thank you. Great question, Eileen. Uh, so, really, um, during the time when you're seeding the lawn, if you're asking about stuff like pre-emergent, you're going to want to avoid that. Really, weeds are best controlled. If you're going to do a seeding project, is I would try and get rid of them as much as possible prior to doing the seeding. So let's say you've got you know a bunch of weeds in your lawn, um, get like a post-emergent herbicide. Something if you're dealing with broadleaf, something like Triad. If you got um, Triad or um, or Celsius or Certainty, uh, one of the get one of those depending on again depending on your grass type. Uh, and try and get rid of as much of the weeds as possible prior to doing all your prep work and seeding the lawn. Um, once the seed, once you've seeded the lawn, I really would stay away from herbicides until you've gotten to the point where uh, the new stand of grass is growing in and it's 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 getting to the point where you can mow it a couple of times. Where it's just you know it's it's got its legs. Um, and then again, you're going back on on spot spraying or spot treating weeds with a post emergent. I would really avoid um, uh, pre emergent. Sorry, post emergent. I'd really avoid pre emergent if overseeding is your main goal. You got you kind of have to pick your poison, right? If you if your goal is to have a weed free lawn, pre emergent by far is the most efficient and cost effective way to do that. Uh, if you decide that you know what I, I don't I'm planning to overseed my lawn or I'm planning to seed my lawn this year and that's my primary goal. That's the thing I really want to see be successful. Then you have to kind of be willing to accept a bit more weeds in your lawn during that process, right? And then afterwards you can always come back with a post emergent and clean them up. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Great, great question. Uh, it's just like uh, like everything in life, you can't you can't have it all all at the same time, you know, unfortunately. So let me get down here and let's get. I see I saw a couple of super chats. Let me get down here and get the first one. We got one from from Fred Mulligan. Thank you so much, Fred. I appreciate you. Super chat. Kicking it off, and Fred has the honor of being the show sponsor, sir. Your name in lights. You know, uh, Mull. I don't want to spell it wrong. You know, got to make sure I get the man's name right. Um, and there you go. You are now the show sponsor in the live stream. Very cool. All right, and we also have Eileen uh, with a super chat. Thank you so much, Eileen. I really do appreciate it. Super chat. Received. Thanks for all the love and support. And and yeah, hopefully that helps you as far as um, you know formulating your plan. Your plan, right? You have to kind of pick which way what's important to you. Uh, you know, for your lawn this year. And it sounds like seeding is what you're really leaning towards. So in that case, just know you're gonna have to deal with a bit more weeds. You know, go with post-emergent herbicides for your grass type. Again, Celsius is a great option. Certainty is also um, a good option as a post-emergent herbicide. On the subject of certainty, guys, um, this is a certainty box. And we now are carrying that on the golf course lawn store. So in case you guys know I did that video last year on um, the combination of Celsius and certainty, like using that combination together, and what I consider to be a very, very, very good um, combination that that. Uh, is not temperature sensitive and covers um, a lot of your your um, grassy weeds, your broadleaf weeds, your sedges, poannua. So it's like a really, really good concoction that is uh, relatively safe and is not going to ding your lawn like some of the more aggressive uh, herbicides can. So I'll show you guys really quick because I'm kind of proud of it. Proud of the product description. Wrote it all up myself. Did it all myself. So if you guys come here to Weed Killer on the store, you'll see now Certainty front and center right next to Celsius. And in both of these guys, the cool thing is I've got that video right there for you. So if you want to see how to use the two of those products together, I actually have a video in the product description showing you how to do that. So very, very excited. Very happy to finally be able to make that happen. So you got one-stop shopping for your warm season weed combination. 
All right, Eileen, we'll definitely keep you posted on how the project goes. Uh, and remember, when it comes to seeding, I'm not sure if you got warm season grass or cool season grass, but remember, the big thing is make sure um, to, to wait until conditions are right. So in most cases, your soil temps are where they need to be. So 65 degrees or higher for um, for Bermuda. Read the product label for the packaging for whatever seed you happen to be using and just follow that as far as when to uh, put your seed your seed down. And guys, I got to tell you, man, this week was was good, but it's also kind of depressing. Because, you know, we were thinking, you know, life is great. We're about to get into spring here soon. And now we got a cold snap coming. I don't know if you guys have been following the weather, but the news is not good. The news is not good. Let me show you guys really quick, man. I want you to go to, go to weather.com here and look at the 10-day forecast. Get my, get my face out of the way. And tonight's supposed to get down to 32 um, it's going to rain, and then we have 37, 22, 53, 34. Now, we, the, tomorrow's really supposed to be the only super crazy cold day, unfortunately. But, um, you know, that's that's the opposite of spring weather, guys. This is the opposite of what we want, you know, to be able to get our lawns uh, moving in the right direction. But, hey, such is life. Such is life. You know, the lawn is still coming together pretty nicely. Uh, this is the front lawn uh, right before the live stream. So you can see starting to green up pretty nicely. You can see, you'll see where the tree used to be in the lawn. And the back lawn, while I look for the next comment, is also starting to green up. It's trying to come out of that dormancy. So let's, this, this cold weather this weekend is not going to be good for that. But, um, you know, this too shall pass. This too shall pass, right? All right, next up is Eric B. He has a question. He says, Ron, mode low. Uh, the POA in the new seeded area from last year to not look at it. Yeah, I get it. You just don't want to see it. Yep, I get it. I, I, I'm with you on that. It says, will this damage only cutting the weed area low in the already weeded area in a fescue lawn still dormant? Plan to cut the grass at, I'm, I'm thinking you're trying to say at the proper height. Okay, so, think, so if, if I'm translating properly, Eric, what I think you're saying is, so you had an area of your lawn that's a fescue lawn that you got some POA in it. Poa, we know, is ugly. We don't like it in our lawns, especially you got warm season grass. We hate poa. And you mow the lawn really short in that area, including the fescue. Uh, will it permanently damage the fescue? I don't know. I don't think it should. It should bounce back. Um, the one thing I would say is once the grass starts growing, to your, you already know the answer to this, is you want to cut it at the right height. You don't want to be mowing the fescue, um, you don't want to be mowing the fescue super low. Uh, because that's that is going to stress it out and and potentially potentially damage it. So the thing we will take away from this is next year, next fall, definitely get your pre-emergent down. You know, get your pre-emergent down to to try and prevent POA from being a problem um, in your lawn, and then you won't really have to deal with this. But based on what you're saying, and again, I'm assuming I, I understand the question properly, you should be all right. You should be all right, just as long as you're not mowing the grass at that height. Uh, you know, going forward is you're not, as long as you're not trying to do that, you know, that once the grass starts greening up and it's trying to recover and, and, uh, and come out of dormancy. Great, great question. All right. Next up is Jidwan. Jidwan Park's in the house. He says, Hey Ron, what's your go-to macro liquid for of choice? Uh, great question, Jidwan. So I have two, so I have two that I can, that I can bounce between. So, uh, I, I was showing Todd earlier, but I like, um, both, uh, Turfplex and I like uh, Dino, release 901C. This year, I'm gonna change it up a bit and I'm gonna lead off with um, 901C. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in both cases. So release 901C is the, um, it's essentially release zero, which is 10% micronized carbon. This is the fertilizer product from Miramichi Green. It has 9% um, nitrogen, 1% uh, phosphorus. So in a case where you don't need any um, uh, phosphorus in your, sorry, potassium. I said phosphorus, I meant potassium. 9% um, um, nitrogen, 1% potassium, and no phosphorus. So in a case where you don't need phosphorus in your lawn, this is a good option. Uh, you know, another fertilizer, another option is um, the Turfplex, the 22.3. So if you want a little bit of phosphorus in your lawn in addition to nitrogen and potassium, this is a good option. Either one will work well. This year, I'm going to lead out with uh, with this guy. I'm gonna start out with 901C. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm gonna run um, for the first part of this season. And I'm going to be mixing those with Nutrizolve because, again, the Turflex and the 901C are your macros. And then the, the Nutrizolve has that iron that we really love, right, that's going to give us that nice green pop uh, to, uh, to the color of our lawn. So that's, that's what I'm rolling with, man. Another option as well, if in a case if you need like a higher uh, phosphorus for it, let's say you're doing a seeding project, then you can use something like Bloomplex. I don't have that on the first page, but if you come here and you search for Bloom, 
Uh, Bloomplex is an option as well. So this is an 8, 16, 5. So this is a situation where you want more phosphorus uh, in your lawn. Again, if you're doing like a seeding project or something along those lines, that's where Bloomplex uh, is a good is a good option. But in my case, it's going to be uh, 901C to start out the season. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for the questions, sir. Hopefully all is going well with you and the weather is warmer where you are versus what we're dealing with here. This will be another super chat in the, uh, in the live stream. Let me go down here and grab that really quick. From Mr. Merrill Williams. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate the support. Super chat received. He says, happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Ron, will Essential G help our lawn fight off freezing weather? I read an article online that water keeps the soil warm and this protects our lawn also. Is this true? Um, thanks. Yeah, so water is an insulator, um, um, Merrill. Uh, as far as it... Um, as far as it holding warmth, yeah, I mean, it, it does until it freezes and then it acts like it behaves kind of like an ice cube, right? So it, it, I guess if you're asking is a short or a short lived freeze. So say like what we have um, coming tonight and tomorrow night, right? Is a, a lawn with moisture in it, is that uh, a good thing? Yes. Um, is it enough to where it's gonna make a material difference? I think um, I, I, I can't really, I can't really say. I mean, I have to, I have to see the paper that you, that you're, or the research that you're looking at um, that that says that because you get to figure. Look at a, look at a lot of lawns up north right now, right? That are still under snow. Like they literally, it'll it'll snow on them, it'll thaw, and it snows again. So you have parts of the country that are still um, dealing with freezing conditions, and those lawns come out of um, out of dormancy just fine. And also, if you go out out um, out west, like out in like Colorado area, like where um, Devon is, like where Demer is, uh, they don't get as much um, snowfall, or say Arizona, they don't get as much snowfall. But uh, but the same thing, they don't have an issue with the lawns recover, with the grass types recovering once um, temperatures warm up. So, you know, I don't I don't know that I would go out and water your lawn or do anything special um, because of it. As far as Essential G, uh, it's a great product overall. As far as it having an effect on freezing weather, I I can't say that it really would, man. I don't I I don't I don't know that it that it's going to make. <laughs> that it's gonna make a difference that you could actually measure and say, yeah, this is, if I, if you took two parts of your lawn, in other words, right? If you took like, I don't know, two two uh, two plots and you put Essential G on one of them fairly heavily and you didn't do it on the other one and you had freezing conditions and to say that you'd be able to look at the two of them or even measure the two of them a difference as far as how the grass did um, immediately after, I don't know that you would... Um, that you would see that, you know what I mean? So it's an, it's an excellent product. It's something you still you should be using on your lawn. I mean, it has tons of other benefits outside of, um, you know, dealing with or fighting off freezing freezing conditions, but that is not something that um, that I'd, I'd be willing to say that it's going to make a a, a measurable or material difference uh, in your lawn, but you, should, you still should be applying it. Again, I did mine last week. Last week, I think, last weekend, um, the last week of February is when I did the last couple of days of February. So it's been a monthly thing for me now, coming up on two years, coming up with two years, a granular carbon product has gone on my lawn and, it's, and the, the, the soil looks great from it. The grass looks great from it. If you guys want to see, just to show you the, the what I'm talking about, I actually added this to um, the Essential G um, product page. But if you want to see the difference that carbon can make, if you look here, whenever I had the lawn dug up for irrigation, so this right here, the top part, that is the original soil. That's what the soil used to look like in my lawn. That's the original. This is several years of consistently applying carbon and other biostimulants, and you can see how much darker and richer this area is compared to this. So it's uh, it's definitely a good product. Absolutely believe in it. It, it has tons of benefits to your soil. I just want, I'm just not going to be able to say that... Um, you know, freezing conditions is gonna is gonna be one of them. So hopefully that helps. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much for the support as always. And I think we have to say now that you are the show sponsor. So let me fix that really quick. Merrill Williams and done. Congratulations, sir. I'm gonna put some music on while I go back upstairs and find where I was. What's the next comment? All right. Speaking of sipping, um, we got uh, King Khan saying, just sipping on some iced tea. You know me, sir. You know, got my lemonade. Lemonade of choice today. It's just lemonade and water. Nothing special. I didn't do anything exotic tonight. No, no sweet tea in it. No Arnold Palmer action. Just basic water and lemonade. That's what I am uh, I'm rolling, with, uh, rolling with tonight. Okay, next is um, VMH. She says, 
Hey, Ron. Uh, I'm excited about the new season. Last April, I had my entire St. Augustine lawn, um, lawn sod cut out and removed to hydrocede Bermuda grass. Hope for a good season. That's pretty awesome, man. That's <laughs> that's hardcore. That's hardcore. So you removed, you had all the St. Augustine removed and then um, hydrocede Bermuda. That's cool. That's very cool, VMH. Um, actually, I didn't know that, man. I know you were dealing with crabgrass in your lawn. I didn't realize that you used to be a St. Augustine lawn. Um, and uh, and that you you switched to Bermuda. So yeah, this this year should be better. I know you did a lot of recovery last year as far as cleaning up weeds. So this season, now that you got the grass that you want and the crabgrass should hopefully be at bay and because you also you put down your, your spring pre-emergent, which you did, right? Right? <laughs> then you shouldn't be fighting crabgrass uh, this year uh, as much. So yeah, very cool, man. Keep us posted on how it, how it does, how it does. All right, next up is Sherry. Uh, Aurora, that's a cool way of spelling it, okay. Says, hey Ron, I got a Ryobi backpack sprayer. I am applying Nutrizolve and Biosimilance. I noticed um, a 16.48 Medina liquid at Lowe's. Any thoughts on this fertilizer? I don't, I can't offer any kind of feedback on that one. I've never used it, never even heard of it until right now, until you, tell, until you told me about it. So I don't know. Um, I don't know, I can't, I can't, I can't offer feedback. I mean, the, the makeup looks pretty good for most grass types, assuming you need uh, phosphorus in your lawn, you know? So, um, I don't know if you want to give it a shot, you want to try it out, go for it. But I can't really comment on it because I've never, I've never really used that product, unfortunately. So keep me posted on how it, how it does if you decide to go, uh, to go that route. All right, next up is Todd's real lawn. He says, headed to work. Was going to do a soil test tomorrow, but eight inches of snow shut me down here in Buffalo. Dude, that stinks. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Hopefully we do not get any snow tomorrow. That would be make me a very, very sad lawn care geek. Uh, but yeah, I, I get it, man. Being in, in Buffalo, you guys are are still due for snow. You know, it's it's. Uh, I think not getting snow the rest of the year would be uh, very abnormal for uh, for Buffalo. Buffalo. On the subject of soil testing, uh, Todd, great um, great segue is you guys remember the the, co the discount that's running on the. Um, the MySoil test kits, these guys here, the soil test kits and the probes and all these guys, that ends on the 15th. So today is what, the 11th? So this is the last weekend to take advantage of that. So if you are in the market for a soil test, and the one that I recommend is one from MySoil, while you're at it, get a probe. This makes it, makes it way easier to collect samples, won't make a, as big a mess out of your lawn. Um, you can save on doing that. You can do that by using the discount code start spring right at the golf course lawn store. So I'll put that in the chat for you guys, for anyone watching this after the fact, it'll also be in the description. So all you guys are covered, but I don't want you guys to miss out on that because it's very, very rare actually that MySoul, um, you know, allows uh, allows us to run uh, sales. Really, it's only gonna be now and maybe, maybe like Black Friday. Uh, so yeah, take advantage. You know, if you need, if you wanna get a couple of tests, one for spring, one for fall, load up now, save yourself some money and, uh, and you should be good to go. But yeah, you still got time, Todd. You know, it sounds like you got plenty of snow on the ground. It's gonna be a while before you're fertilizing. So once you get a break in the weather, get your uh, get your soil test in and uh, should be good to go. And again, the soil tests I'm talking about are available on the homepage of the uh, of the golf course lawn store. All right, next up is Jin Wan Park. He has a follow-up to his question. He says, to add to my previous question, remember his question was on which um, liquid fert do I like for macros? Do you wait 24 hours after and before mowing to apply. Okay, so I do not. I do, um, what I will do is I will mow before I apply it, um, but then I will mow like two days later. So I, I guess I, I, so the mowing before is the part that I don't do. So like, for example, if I mow, because um, typically I'm on a every other day mowing cycle once the grass is growing, unlike last year when I you know, got this crazy idea to mow the lawn every single day because I was mowing super short. It was great exercise. But uh, but uh, let's just say it was it was a bit much. It was a bit much. So what it would look like for me, Jin Wan, let's say that Monday is my day to apply my liquid fur, right? What I would do is I would mow Sunday. That's what I, this is what I've typically done. I would mow Sunday, and then that Monday, the the next day, I would put my liquid fur down, and then not mow until um, the, the following day, till Tuesday. Another option too is you could mow if you wanted to apply your liquid fur after mowing, and then just wait till your next cycle to mow again. I've done that as well too. So I've mowed, I've mowed the lawn, you know, like get up early in the morning. I've mowed the lawn, um, and then done my liquid fur and biosimulants afterwards. And then just mow the lawn again on my next on my next cycle. You got to remember one of the big reasons why I'm such a huge fan of also of release zero of out of out of any of them 
if there's any of the um, the components in the Karma Kit that you really want to use, um, something like Release Zero makes a ton of sense because it, it really um, speeds up or maximizes the nutrient uptake, especially in foliar apps. So in my case, I will I can mow that morning, apply my uh, my liquid furt because um, I always mix it with like Release Zero, um, and then you know, mow the next time whenever I'm, I'm, I'm planning to do it. So, you know, I know a lot of times the guidance is wait 24 hours before, don't, in other words, wait the day before, don't mow the day before, apply your fur, don't mow the day afterwards. But that puts me like three days without mowing and not going to do that. So, uh, for what it's worth, that is what I do. My lawn still looks pretty decent, you know, despite, uh, despite not, despite mowing, you know, 24 hours, in some cases, hours prior to uh, a liquid fertilizer, uh, application. So try it out, see what you think. Uh, the one thing I would say to do, the only thing I, I would say is a no-no with the foliar apps is you don't want to, um, you don't want to water right afterwards. So what you would not want to do, especially if you're using something like Release Zero or uh, Turfplex, is you would not want to go put the, uh, spray those on your lawn and then like the, you know, uh, tw 20 minutes later, an hour later, go water your lawn. Now, if you apply the product in the morning and then you're supposed to get rain in the evening, that's more, that's gonna be fine. More than likely it's gonna be okay. But I would not water right afterwards. Like specifically those products, you do not need to water them in. So just something, just a, a tip. You didn't really ask about that, but came to mind. So I figured I would, uh, I would tell you that as well. Hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. All right. Next is Eric. He's back. He's like, I can't remember if Poa always leaves a bare spot after it dies off in the heat. If new grass seed was there, but the Poa took over prior to the reseed, I can't do reseeding this year with a split pre-emergent all year. Okay. Uh, does Poa leave bare spots in the after it dies off? In warm season grass like Bermuda, not really, because Bermuda will fill in as soon as it gets hot. Uh, cool season grass, I don't know. I can't say for sure. Um, if you have a grass that doesn't, that's like a creeping grass, like a fescue or something that doesn't spread, it might. It, it actually more than likely probably will leave a bare spot once it's gone. Uh, but in again, Bermuda lawns, uh, you're not, it's not it's not going to be an issue. Like a lot of the lawns around here, the ones that the few lawns that don't um, have a lawn care service and have POA in their lawns, whenever once it gets hot, by the time you know mid April, you know well, not say mid April, by by the time May rolls around and it's start the heat starting to come on and Bermuda and Bermuda really takes off. Any bare spots or spots where the POA used to be, you're not going to be able to see it. It's, it fills in really. Uh, really nicely. So yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about it uh, too much, Eric. And uh, you said you already did pre-emergent. So seeding is out. And again, you can try it if you want, like if you have a bare spot where the POA was and you want to try seeding uh, that area, you, you can, it's not going to work well, but I mean, it's not like you won't get, you'll get zero germination. It's just not going to, it's just, you're working against yourself if you put pre-emergent down, if that makes sense. So I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You I mean, you may lose a little bit of seed, but some of it might grow in and then you don't have a bare spot anymore, right? So worth a shot. Worth a shot. All right, next up is Higgy Pop. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Higgy. Hopefully you're doing well. He says, here and coming looks like a bad cold snap hitting this weekend. Yes, tonight and tomorrow night. And then we are back to, you know, hopefully the, the warming trend again. So, uh, so yeah, we are in for some cold weather. Shouldn't be too bad to really knock the grass back too much. But yeah, we are, you and I are on the same wavelength as far as cool weather coming in. Uh, Braden Rubens in the house. He says, happy Friday, everyone. I can't believe we are getting snow tomorrow. What is this global warming stuff? Uh, where are you, uh, Braden? Hopefully you're not in Georgia. If you are in Georgia, you need to, you need to uh, forget that noise. Don't listen. We are not talking about snow. I tell you what, if we get snow tomorrow, I'm going to blame you. Squarely, it's going to be your fault because you started talking about it. I mean, I heard cold weather. I heard like, you know, maybe a bit of freezing rain, but I didn't hear anything about snow. So keep that, no, keep that, keep that evil Keep that evil wherever wherever you are. We don't want any of that here in Northeast Georgia. So, uh, but yeah, thanks for thanks for the comment, man. You know, I'm just giving you a hard time, but yeah, I really don't want snow. Snow would, would be adding insult to injury at this point in the uh, in the process. And I agree with you, King Khan says Mother Nature having hot flashes and then snaps back to cold. All right, next up we have um, Peter uh, Pete uh, Calo. I think I'm saying your name right, Calodusis. He says. Uh, Kalodis says, all good here. Hope the same for all. Enjoy the new care, lawn care season. Yeah, man, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about this season. Looking forward to seeing how the, um, you know, how the lawn does this year, how the, how the lawn does with, uh, with it being on a more traditional program. You know, it got its pre-emergent in the spring like it likes, and I'm going to be doing my fertilization program as always. There probably will be a top dress. Even though I said I was going to top dress, there probably still be, will be one. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
you know, getting some plant growth regulator out, getting the lawn just looking nice and tight and sweet. Oh, right, you guys, on the topic of PGR, uh, here soon in the next week, uh, hopefully by this time next weekend, so like Friday next week, I'll hopefully should be able to announce to you guys that um, PGR in this size, Primo Max in this size, is in the uh, in the golf course lawn. So we're going to have this available for you guys to be able to purchase. So you'll be able to get the smaller amounts if that's something you want. If you wanted a smaller, you know, like a four ounce, um, a lesser amount of it versus having to buy a gallon, that's going to be an option here soon. Uh, it, the stuff is supposed to come in this during this week. I've already got the product description built and everything. So literally as soon as it shows up, I will turn it on and you guys can get uh, get ahead of the game and have your PGR set aside, good to go for whenever uh, that starts. Again, still way early for PGR, probably won't be until like April, May, but you know, I'm just give you guys a little uh, a public service announcement saying that is coming. That is coming. All right, Kevin Sheehan is here. He says, hi, all you Lonnie's and Ron. It's a hard, <laughs> you know what? All of last week, he, he's been waiting to tell me that. He says, all, um, all you Lonnie's, he says, Ron, it's a Harley greening up nicely on the North Carolina coast, but gonna be really cold Sunday. See, now here's the thing, Kevin. I did say Harley. Didn't I say that if I'm going to make a mistake, I'm going to err on the side of Harley? So, yeah. I didn't get in trouble. I didn't call it, uh, I didn't call it, you know, anything else. I called it a Harley. I gave you, you know, if anything, I upgraded the bike, right? So, that's always a good thing. I'm sure you're not going to have cold weather as cold as what we're dealing with here, but uh, but yeah. Such is such is life. Mother Nature has always wins, right? Always wins. All right, next up is Fairway Bermuda Law. What's going on, Daryl? Says, hi, hey, everyone. How are you doing, Ron? I am doing well. Cannot complain. I actually got out there and I mowed the lawn uh, yesterday evening, got off work and said, you know what? I'm going to get out there and I'm just going to mow. And here's what happened, guys. First, I just did the true cut. And I, if you guys watch my YouTube stories, you guys all, this is all old hat for you guys. You already know what happened. But I went out there and I mowed with the true cut. And I was like, oh, that looks pretty good. And I had the GM and it was just sitting there. And I said, you know what? It, it is time. It's time to break it out. Why not? Why not? Right. So I actually got it out and I cut both the front with it and the back. And um, what you're seeing here, this is the process of what the lawn looks like after being cut with the GM. Actually, if you want to see a good side to side, like a really, really good side to side, uh, it's only going to be on mobile. But break out your YouTube stories and you'll see because when I was cutting the front lawn, there was a, a point where I half of it was cut with a true cut. And then I was like, cutting the part that was already cut with the true cut with the greens master. So you can literally see side by side the difference in cut quality between the two mowers. So you have to look at that on mobile. Unfortunately, it's not something that you can see on desktop. So get your uh, your phone out and then go to YouTube and Ron Henry and you'll see like my uh, my YouTube stories. And the ones from yesterday will uh, show you will show you that comparison, which is pretty, pretty substantial. You forget. I forgot how good uh, the GM the GM really is. So. All right, next up is Demir in the house. He says, looking forward to some great turf talk. He says, spring is so close. Remember everyone, enjoy the process this year and just have fun in your yard. Mistakes are the best tools. Could not have said it better myself, sir. I know we're looking at having you back on in early April, I think is what we're thinking about. So that should be awesome if we can make that happen. But you're, at, but that's really good advice. You know, enjoy the process. Most Here's the thing, I get emails sometime uh, from viewers and it's like, hey, you know, Ron, this is the year, is this year is the year and I'm gonna turn my lawn around and I'm gonna do everything. I'm going to get it all right. And that's awesome. It's great enthusiasm, but it takes time. It's one of these things where, you know, yes, you know, you can clean up the weeds, you can start mowing more, you can get, you can get a soil test done and get on a good fertilization program. But even with all that, it takes time for the lawn to recover. Like the quickest I've seen a lawn turn around is Alex's lawn, like my neighbor's lawn. So his lawn, you know, it was, I'd say fairly typical. It, was, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't like great. Um, and in the course of three months, uh, his lawn went from, you know, basic or what, what I consider to be an average lawn to like a golf course lawn. Look, it looks really, really sweet. But here's the thing. He mowed like every other day. He was out there mowing all the time. He did, he got, took care of the weeds. He yeah, got his irrigation installed. I mean, he literally did everything, everything that I, that I said, Hey, listen, we got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. And he literally followed the process to the letter and got the result. Right? So it's just realize it's a process and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to over apply products. Sometimes you're going to burn your lawn with fertilizer. It's going to happen. Um, and it's grass. It'll come back. It'll come back. And if it doesn't come back, you can always just plant more. It'll be okay. You know what I mean? Just have, have fun enjoying the process. What, what, uh, Devin said is exactly right. Uh, just enjoy the journey. That's, that's the thing about, um, lawn care. It's never, it's never perfect. Never perfect. All right. Next up is SJ says, how long will Kentucky bluegrass take to start spreading more rapidly? I did a fall lawn reno last year. And I'm deciding whether to overseed or put down pre-emergent. Will regular feeding increase the spreading? 
Um, so Kentucky bluegrass, I don't believe it spreads as, as aggressively as Bermuda. Um, I mean, very few things spread as aggressively as Bermuda, so that's that's a safe bet. Uh, but it's you said you did it last fall. Um, I mean, I'd imagine once temps get a little warmer here and it starts growing better, SJ, it should start spreading and filling in. So it's 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 kind of your call. Like you, the fact that you did pre-emergent last fall, conventional guidance would tell, would say not to do. Um, so you did the seeding last fall. Conventional guidance would say to not do pre-emergent in the spring. With cool season grass, most um, people recommend uh, waiting a year before introducing pre-emergent to the lawn. So in your case, if you wanted to seed again this spring, you could, you could, right? So, and then just know that in the fall, you're gonna do your uh, your pre-emergent. Now, here's the thing. Seeding in the spring is not necessarily always the best, um, the best plan from a standpoint of, you're gonna put the seed down and then when summer months hit, that new grass is gonna have to deal with the um, with the heat of, of summer. So you may, you know, you may have to water more, you may have to do some things to try and keep the grass uh, alive during that that tough period. But uh, but based on what you're saying that you did the renovation last fall, meaning it's a relatively new grass, I would you know I'd lay off the pgr and just you know take this time to to, uh, to if you want to you know, put some seed down to fill in some bare spots, good idea. Um, and the thing that's also going to help you too, right, is once you get on a good uh, fertilization program, um, is mowing like mowing regularly is going to help the grass fill in um, faster, especially a creeping grass. Uh, like uh, like Kentucky bluegrass and Bermuda, like the more typically the, the more you mow it, especially at shorter heights, it's gonna tighten up. It's gonna tighten up. That's gonna that's gonna promote it spreading and uh, and growing in really nicely. So that's something else you can consider too. Yes, you can seed, but uh, can't beat mowing. Like mowing covers a multitude of sins, man. You know what I mean? Like when it, when, when in doubt, mow it. So uh, so hopefully that helps. I would lay off the, the pre emergent based on what you're saying, and uh, and just wait till next fall. You know. Or this, when I say next fall, this fall, the upcoming fall, September, whatever it is, six months from now, thereabouts. Uh, okay, next up is uh, bring back whole COB. All right, is an interesting question. He says, Ron, how do you say so fit? Um, martial arts, I mean, well, I guess part of it is karate a couple times a week. There's that, uh, which is, you know, every, you know, there's, with Mark, with karate, it's one of those things that every time, especially on a Tuesday, Tuesday night or, um, Saturday, like tomorrow, is one of those times you always question, I always question why I do it. Because on those days, especially now, we have what we call cycle. So anyone that is um, setting the, the goal of testing for either a first degree black belt or a higher degree of black belt, a higher rank, like a first or second degree or third degree, um, you starting in mid to mid January through April, um, literally, Tuesday nights and and Saturday mornings, so Tuesday nights an hour, and then Saturday is like an hour and a half, 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes of absolute um, brutality. It's 90 minutes, like imagine like going to a boot to boot camp like twice a week, uh, and that's what that's what it's like. And I go to those classes even though I, I really don't have to, um, so I subject myself to that. So that's, that's partially what helps me stay in decent shape. Also, being out in the lawn a lot helps as well too, like mowing. You know, when it when it starts when the lawn starts growing, I'll be out there every other day. I'll get up super early in the morning and get out there six thirty or so and just get the mowing done and just you know get my little exercise in. So that those things, staying active, is is a big is a big part of it. And then again, martial arts definitely uh, definitely helps with that as well. So yeah, and I have I guess you all say decent genetics, but really it's it's you got you have to move, you have to move and keep working. So hopefully that helps uh, gives you some ideas for staying in good shape. You know, mowing your grass is a good option for a couple of reasons. Makes your grass look nice, and uh, it's good exercise. It's good exercise. All right, next up is Flippin' While You Sippin' to Disney. Says, good evening, Ron, from Cyprus, Texas. What's going on, Flippin' While You Sippin'? Uh, glad to have you in the live stream. Thanks for coming to hang out with us as always, as always. And then next up is Austin B. He says, uh, Ron, uh, Demir, uh, Devin talked a little bit about locking nutrients up when switching from sand leveling to soil uh, sand combo, how big of a concern should that really be? So I have not, I have not experienced that um, in uh, my soil test results, um, Austin B. I, I'm trying to remember about when he said that. I'm trying to make sure that's not what you're saying. You're not taking what he's saying out of context. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't recall him. I don't recall him saying that. I have to go back and watch the video and see exactly what he was like, what the context was around what, around that 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 statement. But I have not, I have not seen that. So the again, the thing with the my soil. Uh, test kit, the one that I use, um, is that it it measures nutrient availability. In other words, the the, the um, ion exchange resin, let me get this out here, like this guy here, the synthetic root that's in there, what that does is it simulates 
um, nutrient uptake, like what's available to your grass. So what your grass, what the plant would actually see is what this is seeing. And in my soil test results, um, I have not, I have not seen um, an issue where nutrients became unavailable. And I have done, I've done a combination. The majority of the time when I've soil, when I've um, top dressed, I'm trying to think. It's primarily been with a soil sand mix. There's been times when I've done like spot top dressing with pure river sand. That's been a thing. But for the most part, I add either um, organic material ahead of time. So I'll either get out there and do like a heavy application of like um, some kind of granular carbon, like like Essential G. Like if you guys saw my uh, my top dressing video, like I went heavy on the Essential G. It was it was I think it's something like six bags, six or seven bags just in the back lawn. So it was like it was really really heavy. Uh, so I, uh, I'll do that in a situation where, um, you know, sand is going to be the primary um, top dressing medium where I'm not doing like a, a blend. Um, and in my testing case, in my results, and then also the results I've seen on Alex's lawn where he has leaned more towards um, primarily sand, uh, it hasn't, we ha I haven't seen it reflected in the soil test results. So, you know, so again, I have to watch the video to see exactly which comment you're, um, you're, you're talking about, but it's, I, I wouldn't worry about it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's a long-winded way of saying, I think you're gonna be just fine. You know what I mean? The fact that you're worrying about it is good, but I think you sh you'll be okay. No, uh, no sweats, no sweats. Uh, thank you, King Con, I appreciate it, man. It's, it's fun intro music. At some point, I gotta change it up, right? At some point, I gotta you know redo the intro or change the music up, because you guys will get bored with it, right? You'll be like, hey, it's the same thing all over and again, so. Has he no, has he no creativity? And you know, so I just gotta make time to, uh, to do that. All right, next up is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, happy Friday. Pumped about the live stream. It should be a good one. It should be, man. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we're in it now. We're almost an hour in, you know, and uh, given that we are an hour in and there's 146 of you fine people on here to talk about turf and to, you know, give me all these hard questions to, to stump me. Um, it'd be really nice if you guys wouldn't mind. Here's my plead, guys. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently. I mean, if you want to hit it hard, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'll even take it if you smack it hard. I prefer gently, but if you want to do hard, that's fine too. And if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, I'd really appreciate it. It's a great way to support the channel, support the live stream, sends good vibes to YouTube and sends more people our way. So if you guys wouldn't mind doing that for me, I'd really, really be most appreciative. All right, next up is Real Rollers. They say, happy Friday. It's going to be cold weekend here in Georgia. Yes, I know. It's horrible. Why, why you got to remind me of this, Lee? I'm not sure. Is it Lee or Andrew? I think it's, it's probably Lee on here. I think Andrew has his other, his own uh, YouTube thing, but yeah, his own YouTube uh, account. But yes, yeah, it's going to be cold. It's not going to be fun. Hopefully it's only going to be for a couple of days. And uh, yeah, and we got to get together soon. Oh, guys, on the topic of real rollers, now that he's on here, reminded me, on 325, um, March 25th, real rollers is going to be on the live stream. That's the plan. That's what we're planning for. Uh, so not this weekend, not next weekend, but the weekend after that. Am I telling you guys the truth? Make sure I'm not lying to you here. Yep, not this, not this weekend. But the weekend after that one, Real Rollers will be on the live stream. So get all your tough, real mowing questions. Make sure you get the questions about like low cutting heights and what type of mower is best and groove versus smooth rollers and all those things. Make sure you rough them up. Make sure you ask some good, some tough questions. I think they're also doing some, they might even be talking about some new products that are coming out. Maybe, I'm not sure he's going to talk about it then, but they've got some cool stuff coming down the pipeline, which I'm sure he's going to show off, which is, uh, I've seen it. It's, it's one of those things where when you see it, you're going to be like, huh. Wish I had thought about that. You know, it's one of those things. So, uh, so yeah, make sure definitely mark your dates, mark your calendars. Uh, to with where Lee uh, from Real Rollers. I'm not sure if anyone else is going to be on, but Lee and or maybe Andrew. We'll see who else wants to jump in on it because I can do multiple people. Will be on the live stream on March 25th. So again, mark your calendars. Should be a great, great time. And again, if you need for a true cut or you just need uh, you know to talk to someone about you know your real mowing decisions, you know around a true cut, <laughs> give the guys at Real Rollers. Uh, a call. All right. Next up is Josh Bronco. He says, ready to rock. Scout this week and put down two bags of humic. He said country max. I think he meant humic max. Um, gotta love 25,000 square feet of tiff tough. This green already in North Carolina. Wow. Um, that's cool. That's cool that your, that your lawn is greening up. Uh, so you're, you're ahead of me, man. You're doing, you know, you're dominating me. You're, you're ahead of me uh, as far as, as far as that goes. I, I've not applied a uh, humic max or um, or any serious amount of, of fertilizer just yet. Um, maybe next weekend. I think next weekend is, is probably going to be the wake up, guys. I think next weekend I'm going to film a piece of content on it and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. I, I mean, I can tell you guys. You guys can keep a secret, right? Don't don't be going out there telling everybody like what the plan is. So just between the you, me, and the 140 other people that are on here, 
Um, I'm gonna go out with the with the normal. I'm gonna go out with Humic Max. It's gonna be lighter though. Um, so a light application of Humic Max, 1608. This is what I'm gonna be rolling with. And then the 901C and Nutrizol. So you guys wanna know, if you don't wanna watch the video, that'll come out here inevit inevit inevitably, um, perhaps next weekend, we'll see, depending on how on um, time, if I get a chance to shoot it. Um, that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be Nutrizol and it's gonna be release 901C and it's gonna be that Humic Max. So you guys already know, you know what Ron's gonna be running the first part of uh, this season. So there you go. But yeah, man, you're ahead of the game for sure, Josh. Hopefully your lawn stays nice and green. Hopefully this, this cold weather doesn't do a number on your lawn. Uh, definitely keep us posted. All right, Macho Man Randy Savage. That takes you back, man. You have to be a real a real old school wrestling fan to know that name. But is it is it the uh, Macho Man Randy Savage? Anyway, he says, we're about to get three inches of snow in East Tennessee. Any chance you could cover the effects on of that on Bermuda is that uh, that is emerging from dormancy? Sure, so... What's going to happen is it's going to slow it down, uh, Randy. It's going to slow the process. So if your lawn were, you know, was greening up, it's going to have a slight setback. It's not going to permanently injure it. It's not going to, you know, not like your lawn's not going to green up, but it is going to slow it down a little bit, right? So three inches of snow, you figure, uh, you know, that's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to have like pretty much ice on it for um, however long it takes for that to melt. And then, you know, when you get to back, when you get back on a warming trend, then the lawn will start um, coming out of dormancy again. So it's not going to do anything permanent, not going to be any permanent damage. It's just going to set back uh, your green up a little bit. That's that's all it's going to be. So if your lawn were gonna, was greening up, it's going to stop or it might even, you know, regress just slightly, come back back off a little bit, but it's going to be fine. I wouldn't, wouldn't sweat it. Don't do anything special to it. Don't apply anything special to the lawn for it. Just, you know, let, let time run its course. It's only going to be for a few days, I imagine. Um, you know, once the snow is on the ground, it melts off and then you'll be good to go, so... Nothing, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Like I always say, grass is uh, has been growing long before we were here, and it'll be growing long after we're gone. So it's uh, it'll be just fine. Okay, next up is King Connie says, but why tease us with that intro mowing when you know we can't mow? Well, I mean, I look at it too, just to kind of for nostalgia, man. I mean, my lawn does not look like that right now. That's not what it looks like right now. I'm um, King Con. Like this is what the back lawn looks like right now. I mean, I mowed it. I mean, it's mowable, but it doesn't look like you know the, the grass in the intro. Plus, it looks cool. I mean, you get a figure. If someone, if you guys know me and you know the channel, you know the content, but think about some random person that's just on YouTube on a Friday night thinking about, eh, I'd like to talk about some, you know, learn about some grass stuff and just, you know, find, find a community on YouTube where we can, I can hang out and just learn and get my, my questions answered and, you know, that type of thing. And they see a video of a really nice lawn being mowed, that's going to be attractive to them versus having like, you know, a lawn, a video showing what my lawn looks like now. Not so much, right? So... There you go. That's why it is It is what it is, uh, King Con. So don't worry. All of our lawns will be looking pretty nice here soon. Don't, uh, don't you worry about it. All right, next up is No Name. It says, hello, Ron. How are you feeling? You know what? I think we should just change this into the, um, hey, Ron, I want to remind you that cold weather is going to be coming in here this weekend and your lawn's not going to green up as fast as it could because cold weather. All right, No Name says, how are you feeling about this weekend's weather? Don't like it. Not happy about it. He says, I suspect I'm going to lose a little green up I had going. Yeah, you, you will. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a mild setback. It's going to be a mild setback. I mean, if you look at the weather forecast, we're looking at a couple of days of freezing temps. So yeah, I mean, well, I'll, I'll do this. I'll relive it again. I'll relive the horror with you, uh, No Name. I'll do it. So we have a little bit. Uh, so tonight, 32 degrees. It's going to get cold. And then tomorrow, 37, 22, super cold. And then Sunday, we're back on the warming trend a little bit, right? 53, 34, 61, 42. So we're going back in the right direction. And then by Wednesday or Thursday, we're back in the 70s, as is prone to happen in Georgia, right? In Georgia, you don't like the weather, wait like two or three days and it'll be completely different. So uh, so yeah, don't sweat it too much, man. It's not gonna be um, it's not gonna be a permanent problem. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, next up is Luis Rodriguez. He says, hey, Ron, uh, glad to be here. Glad to have you here, uh, Luis. Thanks for coming to hang out with us as always. Daniel B is in the house saying, hello, Ron. Happy Friday, everyone. Hey, uh, Daniel, hopefully you're doing okay. And then Lois is in the live stream as well saying, uh, happy Friday, Ron. Greetings to the Friday night crowd. Greetings, greetings, Lois. Actually, let me run down here. I think I had a super chat. I don't want to miss it. 
Let me um, run down here and grab that. We got two here. Well, I got, did I get Eileen's? I don't know if I got Eileen's. I think I did. If not, you know what? I'm going to get it again. Eileen, thank you so much for the super chat. Super chat. I don't want to forget it. anybody. And then Meryl, I, I did get Eileen's. And then we have one from Tyler. Tyler says, Super chat received. Great content. I love all the knowledge. I am now schooling my brother five years in the game about warm season grasses. Warm season grass is a lot of fun, man. Especially, you know what? I always say, you know, Bermuda is a great grass to learn on. If you want to have a grass that you can, you know, you can abuse and just do a lot of like things wrong to, and uh, we'll just take a look and keep on ticking just because we'll keep coming back for more. Bermuda is really tough to beat and it can look amazing when it's when it's uh, well well cared for. I mean, all grass can can look well cared, but I mean, Bermuda especially looks pretty sweet once it's uh, it's cut with the right equipment and cut regularly. And then finally, we got Braden Rubin here with a super chat. Super chat received. Thank you so much, Braden. Thank you for the support. And now, as always, the hard part, finding where I left off. I did good, yay. All right, next up is as uh, the Alexander Lee is in the house. He says, good Friday, folks. Alex, guys, for, if you guys don't know, is the star of the Fix My Ugly Lawn series. It was his lawn that um, showed that it was possible to take a lawn that was normal and turn it into uh, to, like ordinary to extraordinary in the course of three months using a very, very dedicated program and lots and lots of mowing and using the right combination of products and just, you know, a lot of, a lot of hard work that in just a few months you can completely transform a lawn. If you guys are interested in that, if you're not seeing that, um, I will put the link to that playlist in the show notes for you guys to check out. It's actually a really good series. Please do not um, hate me for the cinematography because I, I can't even watch my old content. It always it always bugs me because I don't like the way it looks. But if you guys want to see what the con what um how quickly you can turn it on around, check out uh that video. Again, all that was shot on my iPhone, so you know. I was doing doing the best I could with what I had at the time, man. So hopefully you guys can get a lot of value out of that. Lots of great info, lots of good tips in that. And Alex, as always, sir, thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. All right, next up, we have a question about overseeding. We have Pete uh Kalotis says, how bad of an idea is it to oversee tomorrow? If you're in Georgia, it's a terrible idea. Actually, in most places, it's a terrible idea. It will be 22 degrees, but I reserved the overseeder already. Uh, tiff uh, turf type tall fescue in North Carolina. Should I cut my losses and postpone? I would. I would. Uh, I mean, if you want to put it down, I mean, if you want, if you want to throw it down tomorrow, um, well, here's the thing. I don't know. I don't know, Pete. I mean, is is it what is your, does your weather, does your temperatures in North Carolina look like how the temperature profile is going to look, you know, here in Georgia? Meaning you're going to have a couple of days of, of really, really cold weather uh, and then um, you're going to have a warming trend. If so, you know, you could do it. You could seed. And I mean, the season's not going to start germinating until it warms up quite a bit. Um, but you could seed and just not water it. What I would not do is water. I would not put the seed down with 22 degree weather outside and try and run irrigation. Don't do that. Uh, you know, really, I think even if it even if it weren't um, 22 degrees tomorrow, it's it's probably a bit early for um, for overseeding. It's probably a bit early for overseeding, even without the cold weather. But again, you rented it. If you want to give it a shot, you know, depending on this kind of seed you're using and how expensive it is, if you want to give it a shot, just don't water it. Don't water it after application. Um, you can, I mean, and once it warms up, some of it will, will likely germinate, but I think just in general, you're probably a little bit early on, uh, on seeding, uh, seeding your lawn, even for cool season grass, you're probably a bit early uh, this time of year to do that. So it's kind of, it's your call. If the seed's crazy expensive, then I would just wait, just take, I mean, whatever you, you, um, paid for the, uh, for the slit seeder, it's normally 60, 70 bucks, somewhere around there. Uh, that's going to be cheaper than a whole new bag of seed. If it's not the seed's not that expensive and you want to try it anyway, you can. The only thing I would say is do not water. I would not water um, when the temps, the temperature conditions are, are like that. I would wait for it to warm up before you uh, before you put any water on the lawn. So give it a shot. And let me know what you think, man, and, or, or how it does, and uh, we'll uh, just keep us posted. Keep us posted. All right, next up is uh, Eric B says, Ron, I am a hater with that video of your golf course lawn video prior to the stream beginning. I wish my lawn could get that way again from so many issues from last year till now. Yeah, man, but you have to realize it's a process. It's a process. You know what it is? It's what you are seeing in my lawn. When you look at this lawn, I'll play it for a second here. When you see this lawn that has tons and tons and tons of love. So it gets mowed a lot. It, I mean, it, I've soil tested, I'm using, you know, the right combination of products. Um, um, 
and I'm just, it, it gets modalized. I get to take care of it. You know what I mean? So it gets, and it takes, it takes a while. Like it didn't look like that. Like literally, if you want to see what my lawn used to look like, go look at, uh, if you go to golfcourselawn.com where the course is, where the Golf Course Lawn Academy is, play that video um, that's on there. The big video is on the home screen. The first, I forget exactly where it is, but in the beginning of it, you can see what the lawn used to look like. You can see what the lawn used to look like. I actually, I don't actually know. I think I have a picture on here, I can actually show you guys what it used to look like. Um, I was going through, you know how your iPhone remi reminds you of how, of things that happened years and years and years ago. I think I have, the, I have to find it. I have to find it guys, but I, but there's a, there's a picture of what the lawn used to look like many moons ago. And if I, if I can pull it up really quickly, I will show you guys, which, um, like everything else, the demo guys, I'm trying to do this live and it's not working. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Oh, yep. There we go. Here we go. There's an old one. I mean, this is not, this is the picture. It's not kind of hard to see, but you know, so right now, right guys, and you guys can make fun of, you guys can give you some inspiration. So you guys know now I'm like, you know, I have the earth way and I, I have my Toro greens master and my, and my true cut. You know what I mean? And everyone says, oh, well, you know, I always say, you know, don't use a Scott spreader and I, or don't, I don't recommend one or whatever, but you know what? We all got to start somewhere. And this is a picture of me. This is way back then, me, me with my, uh, you know, saving the data center shirt. You can see the lawn did not look very awesome then. You can see the tree in the back lawn there, back right there, where if you look very carefully in the videos, when you look, when I'm panning the lawn, you can still see where that tree used to be because the grasser doesn't match because the, the, the saw that went in just didn't match properly. Um, but yeah. And there you go. Look at that. For that small little lawn, I got my little, my little Scott spreader, man. I'm out there trying to rock it and get, get it done. You know what I mean? So we all start from somewhere, Eric. Uh, the it's, it's a process. Like anything in life, it's consistency. Just consistently work on your lawn. The one thing I will tell you that most people do not do is they don't mow their lawns enough. So if you can commit to mowing twice a week, then everything else I'm telling you as far as using the biostimulants, using the fertilizers, using the plant growth regulator, doing all those other things, all those things really begin to, 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 to come together and, and produce an awesome result. But you gotta mow, you gotta mow in addition to that. So that's the only piece of advice I'd give you, you know, work on cleaning up your weeds, whatever weed issues you got going on in your lawn, but then don't discount the importance of regular mowing. You know, the reason, there's a reason why golf courses look the way they do. Yes, they use a lot of the same products or the same programs that I do on my lawn. They do things similar but they also mow a lot. That's the thing that's consistent between what I do and what golf courses do. They just, they, they mow a ton, right? So do that, man. And you, you will be back where you, uh, where you were, you have your lawn, it's glory before you know it. So, you know, hopefully that's a little bit of you know, inspiration to show you, Hey, we all start somewhere. Um, all lawns, no lawn is born. Awesome. You have to make them that way with a lot of, um, a lot of time. So hopefully that helps. Appreciate the comment. Uh, thank you, Eileen. I like the music too. It's kind of chill. Nice way to start. And then next up, we have New Edge Lawns LLC. What's going on, New Edge Lawns? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully all is going well with you. And then M. Jordan saying good evening. Going on, M. Jordan. Is it Michael? Or is it, I guess it's probably another M, right? Michael Jordan probably doesn't have time to, he probably doesn't cut his own grass. I, I'm, I'm pretty, I, I imagine he probably doesn't mow his own lawn. He might be a lawn guy though. You never know. Never know. Next up is Luis Rodriguez. He says, so I have an issue with my Bermuda. I believe I have, I either, I have either carpet or centipede grass. Um, a, how do I get rid of it? And B, would you recommend spraying now during the transition period? Um, what will kill centipede? I don't know if Quinclorac will do it. Um, I have to, I have to look on that, Louis. Off the top of my head, I don't know the. Um, there, in other words, there is there are selective herbicides that will do that. Um, I don't know if um, I don't know if Revol I don't think Revolver will do it. I, I'm, I'm leaning I'm leaning towards uh, Quinclorac, but I'd have to. I got to look into it, man. I, I want to give you a good answer. So let me um, make a note about that uh, and uh, and get back to you. The, but yours, that problem, what you're suggesting there, that problem is solvable. Like getting keeping the Bermuda and getting rid of carpet um, or, or getting rid of centipede, that is uh, that is is absolutely doable. And I will. There's there's more than there's more than one option for that. I just got to figure out which one is. Uh, the best one. So I'm just making a note here to get back to you unless someone in the live stream says, hey, I already know the answer to that and the answer for you. And the question is, would you recommend spraying now during the transition period? I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't. Mm. So if the um, if the centipede or the, if the centipede were greening up way ahead of the Bermuda, meaning that, you know, if we, if the, your Bermuda is still dormant, so your Bermuda is completely dormant right now. 
and the centipede is, is looking awesome and it's growing well, then in that case, yes. But if the Bermuda's coming out of dormancy, I really wanna, you really wanna minimize when you put uh, herbicides on it when it's transitioning. You know, whenever the lawn is completely dormant, herbicides, good, no problem, good to go. Whenever the lawn is completely green and, you know, growing well and healthy, herbicides, great, no problem, good to go. When you do it when it's dormant, or when it's, sorry, when it's transitioning out of dormancy, you're not gonna kill the grass, but you are going to give it a little setback. You're gonna give it a little knockback. You know what I mean? So uh, it's one of those things where, uh, I, I would wait if it if your Bermuda and the centipede are coming out of dormancy at the same time. I would wait until the Bermuda is uh, you know give it what are we in like today's April, March eleventh. So give it a month or so and then uh, go after the uh, the centipede with a um, with a selective with a selective herbicide that's safe for Bermuda but will damage or kill the centipede. That's that's what I would I would do um, mainly because you just don't want to you don't want to take the chance of. Um, of negatively impacting the Bermuda coming out of dormancy. That just as a side note, I know you didn't ask this question, is another reason why I'm not a huge fan of overseeding my lawn with uh, with like ryegrass, right? So I know it it looks it looks awesome, like real rollers. <laughs> if you see their turf park, it looks incredible, man. You wanna see, they, they actually overseeded their zoysia and their Bermuda with ryegrass. If you guys wanna see what that looks like, I don't think I have a picture of it. I think I did take a picture, let me see. I'll look here, it's, it's gonna be the only green picture in my lawn right now. Uh, in, my, in my in my photo feed, so you guys can actually, yeah, actually here's a here's a video of it. You can actually see what that looks like. So this is the Real Rollers Turf Park, right there. That's what Zoysia and um, Tiff Top Bermuda look like when they're overseeded with uh, with rye. And again, it's it's greening up really really nicely. But the negative to doing that is now that when you have to try and get rid of it, you're going to be spraying, uh, you know, something like Celsius or Evolve or something like that at the time at the time when the Bermuda is coming out of dormancy. So you're going to, you'll get rid of the, the cool season grass, but you're also gonna slow the transition of the Bermuda coming out of dormancy and just, and, and thriving and doing well. So that's why I don't, I'm just not a huge fan of doing it. Plus I don't like cold weather. I don't have to mow when it's, when it's cold outside. But, uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I would wait. I would wait until the Bermuda is, um, you know, is, is more, is, is healthier and growing, is, is out of, more, it's closer to being out of dormancy than being in dormancy before I, I sprayed a herbicide on it. Only only exception to that would be pre-emergent, but as far as post-emergent herbicides, I would wait. I would wait. All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, good evening. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. I know you did a lot to your lawn. You did your whole, um, your irrigation system. You did a lot of stuff last year. So yeah, you, sh you should have a really good season. All right, next up is, I am going to, I am going to butcher this. I am, it's, it's, I'm going to try. Noel, Noel Jared. I think I got it. He says, I live in Nicaragua and need to know what's better for zoysia on leveling. Okay. It's a good question, uh, um, Noel. Uh, so yeah. So for zoysia, if you can get your hands on some sand, so like not beach sand, like uh, it's going to be like masonry sand or river sand. So it's like a, a sand that's a little bit uh, like thicker or coarser. Something like that is going to be good for doing uh, top dressing. Now, the, the best way to go is to get like a, a river sand or a, again, a coarser sand, not play sand, and uh, get that in a blend with some organic material. So either compost or um, or topsoil, like screen topsoil, and apply that to your to your lawn, to your zoysia, and work that in with a leveling rake. And that's, that's gonna work very, very well. If you'd like to see a video on a process of how to do that, I've got one here from, from last year that you can watch that shows how I top dressed uh, my lawn, how I top dressed my lawn. But the big thing is you, you're going to want to get sand and not play sand. So not the really, really fine grain sand, like, you know, the kind that's on a, on a, on a playground. You want to use um, a coarser, like a river sand uh, type product. I'm trying to find the video here. And that's April. So, okay. So it, it is, it is right here. So yeah, watch this video that I'm going I'm to link in the chat as far as how to, um, on how to level your lawn. A lot of the products in, in there, you're not going to be able to get if you're in Nicaragua, uh, but you, you should be able to find something comparable and that will show you the process. So don't look at the product so much, look at the process of what, of what you see there and go with that and you should be uh, good to go. So we put you in here at Noel. And uh, that is the top dressing video. So watch that, and uh, hopefully that helps out. And awesome, thanks for being a viewer from Nicaragua. I think you're, I think you're the first one. Well, the first one that's that's chimed in anyway. So thanks, kind of cool. Okay, next up is Brett Hill says, looking to thicken up a backyard of 419. Haven't had luck in years past. Is it a good idea to overseed? No, not really. So here's the thing: when it comes to grass, especially Bermuda grass, 
if the grass is not growing well in a particular part of your lawn, you need to figure out why. Because if you go out and you put down sod or if you seed, you're going to, in more like, more than likely, in most cases, you're just going to end up right back where you are now. So is it an issue where you have shade? Is it an issue where, um, you know, a lot of, there's a drainage problem where water either settles or there's an, an erosion problem? Uh, those are the things we'd want to look at and, and work on correcting. Uh, and if you do that, especially 419, if you do that and just start mowing it, um, you know, regularly, it's going to thicken up really nicely. So, the thing with overseeding, and again, again, if I if I knew um, years ago, many many years ago, what I know now, the the better way to get your lawn to thicken up or to to fill in bare areas of your lawn, assuming you've done all these things, right? So like, there's not there's not any debris, there's nothing crazy going on with the soil, there's not like a drainage problem, is to plug it. So get like a plugger um, and transfer transfer plugs from like a, an area of your lawn that's doing well to the area of the lawn that's not doing as well and let that grow in. That is the best way to ensure that when the grass all fills in, it's gonna match perfectly. If you, even though you have 419, right? Even though you have 419, if you go out and you get 419 sod from somewhere else and you put it in that area, it's not necessarily gonna match. Like literally I have two spots in my, well, yeah, two spots in my lawn that um, that got sodded with 419 and it doesn't match. It didn't match the existing 419. So that and so that's when I got into you know seeding and just trying to make it all um, to try and make it all one homogenous lawn. And you know the, the the net result is the long the long short of the matter is you want to avoid if, if if at all possible you want to correct the issue in the area that grass isn't growing and then transfer plugs from your existing lawn to that area. It's going to be a slower process, but it's going to match better. Uh, once you're once you're done. So I need a little bit more context. If you can figure out, if you let me know like what, you know, further in the comments, if there's like a, a shade problem, because again, a lot of times when people have problems with, with Bermuda growing well, it's a lot of times it's shade. So if you have any kind of shade, uh, you know, Bermuda just doesn't, just doesn't like that. Again, look at my YouTube stories. I show you guys something kind of cool there in the front lawn. Just, we have two parts of the lawn where one is angled towards the sun and one isn't. And the difference in how those areas are greening up just based on that slight little, that slight difference. So uh, of all grass types, Bermuda is the one that absolutely has got to have sunlight. It doesn't like the whole thing about, oh, we have like, you know, shade tolerant Bermuda doesn't exist. I mean, there's some that is slightly better. So like, you know, Tiff Tough, they say is a little bit better as far as uh, shade tolerance. But what that means is instead of needing eight hours of direct sunlight, it needs seven hours and 45 minutes of direct sunlight. It still needs a ton of sunlight, you know? So, uh, you know, let's figure out why the grass isn't growing, uh, correct those issues and then uh, what you might find is when the temperatures get hot, the grass might just grow in there and fill in. And also mowing is a great way to help thicken up your lawn as well. So, so if, the, if grass is growing in the spot, it's just a little bit thin, then picking up your mowing is something that's going to help as well with causing helping Bermuda to, uh, to thicken up, especially if you're cutting it at lower heights. So like an inch and a half or lower, that's going to really get the Bermuda to really, really thicken up and get really dense. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if I can help with anything else. All right, next up, No Name is back. He says, my neighbors across the street got some sod installed today. How bad do you think the weather will affect it? Might be the worst timing ever. It's going to be fine. It's not, is it Bermuda sod? It's going to be absolutely fine. You're not going to, it's not going to be a problem. Again, my lawn was sodded in the, in the middle of winter, literally in December. And it was, and you see how it looks. So of all the grass types, Bermuda is just, um, you know, I, all I can say is be sure that you really want it when you put it in. Because once it's in, good luck getting rid of it. So it, they'll be fine, no name. I mean, you are in Georgia, I believe. So what you're talking about really, if they're doing sod today, it was installed today, you're talking about two days, maybe three of you know really cold weather, and then it's gonna start warming up. So I, it, they're not gonna be a problem. It's gonna be just fine. Gonna be just, just fine. All right, next up, Flippin' While You Sippin' is back to Disney. Says, good evening, Ron. Question, should I apply a second dose of pre-emergent? I lay down some a couple of weeks ago, but I feel like I'm getting a little impatient. I would not, I mean, here's the thing, without knowing what rate you used, it's difficult to say whether you even you even can or even should do another application. You know what I mean? Uh, here's the thing to keep in mind, guys, and, you, and this is a good, good point, because I've gotten some email about this already, is the pre-emergence you're putting down in the spring, the one that you did like this week or this weekend, if you've not done your pre-emergent as yet, do your pre-emergent, apply your pre-emergent. Like, you know, if you've done it, you know, whatever, last month or whenever it was, that is not going to do anything for the existing weeds in your lawn. So if you've got poa in your lawn, um, if you've got some other cool, well, yeah, clover, you got some other cool weather, some other cool weeds, 
it's not going to do anything with that. So that the time to take care of those um, weeds with pre-emergent would have been in the fall. What applying pre-emergent now is going to take care of are things like spurge, like crabgrass. It's going to it's going to help prevent or seriously reduce the amount of those weeds that grow in your lawn. So in your case, if you still got a lot of weeds and your lawn is still largely dormant, if you want to go after it with a post-emergent herbicide, you absolutely can. If it's starting to green up, kind of like I was telling the other viewer, I would just wait. I would wait till, you know, April-ish when the lawn is, is you know, more, it's, it's more out of dormancy than it is closer to being in dormancy. It's, it's just doing well. Uh, and then go after those weeds with a post-emergent herbicide to get rid of them. So if you have a cool season weeds, I don't know what you have, something like, uh, like Certainty, um, is a good option. Certainty and Celsius, if you want to mix those two together, that's a great combination that knocks out most weeds in uh, in warm season grass. So that's that's something to, to keep in mind. But adding more pre-emergent now, or even a week from now, is not going to do anything for the weeds that are currently in your lawn. Uh, flipping while you're sipping. Just, just want to make sure you, uh, you know that. All right, next up is Robbie Marie. He's back in the house saying, happy Friday, Ron. I'm excited about the live stream. I'm excited too. It's been a fun one so far. Tons of questions and I got to go faster because I can see that the questions are piling up and I'm going way too slow. I'm talking too much, guys. I'm talking too much. All right, next up is Empowered Solutions 1 says, how often do you cut your lawn after scalping and at what height? Uh, not much. Uh, so I, I don't, I'm not even on a regular mowing schedule at this point. So I, since I've scalped the lawn, I've gotten out there once a week, once every 10 days and cut it just because frankly, I was just bored and I just wanted to cut it and make it look nice. Uh, this last cut, the one that I did a couple of evenings ago is one where I could see the lawn is beginning to turn, right? It's, it's starting, I can see the grass is starting, uh, starting to grow in. I made the, the initial cut again with the, with the true cut. And then I said, you know what? Time to break out the battle cruiser, put the, uh, put the, the greens master on it, gave it the good stuff. And, uh, and it looks great. It looks, looked awesome. So, at this point, I'm still not in on any kind of a regular mowing schedule. I figure that two weeks from now is when I imagine I'll start getting into at least once a week mowing. Then, you know, and and once the grass is really beginning to green up, then we'll be on every uh, every every few days mowing. So at least twice a week and then every other day once it gets really hot. So right now, it's it's somewhat irregular. Once a week, once every 10 days is what you're uh, is what I'm looking at. But that's going to pick up here fairly soon. If the weather cooperates, we don't, you know, get more cold, cold snaps, which is just it's ruining all the fun, right? So hope that helps empowered solutions. And as far as height, uh, let's see, as far as height, I bring it up a, a notch with a true cut. I would bring it up, let me see, I think I scalped it like, I think three. So three from the bottom, which again, doesn't really mean much because depending on how your mower is set up and your roller height and this type of thing, that's going to be different on every mower, but I believe I scalped at three notches from the bottom and I came up one notch from that when I was cutting. So hopefully that helps. Whatever that worth, that's worth, I did raise the height of cut just slightly from my uh, from my scalping height. All right, next up is Rob Shot. He says, hey, Ron, uh, and all, question about top dressing. Is there a rule of thumb on how much material I need for 5,000 square feet? From what I found, depending on depth, it is 1.5 cubic yards per 1,000 square feet. That's a bit heavy for my taste, Rob. I lean more towards the one cubic yard per thousand square feet rate. So I tend to do, uh, you know, I don't tend to go any heavier than um, a quarter of an inch to half an inch of top dressing material in a, in a session that does a couple of things. One, the lawn's gonna recover a lot faster if you do that. And then second, if you're not burying the grass, if you get any kind of a heavy rain uh, subsequent to top dressing, you're not gonna have issues with it running off and making a big mess in the lawn. You know what I mean? So that's, the second one is the, is the big reason. Like with Bermuda, literally I've seen lawns where they do where they top dress Bermuda lawns and you cannot see grass anywhere. Literally the entire thing is just sand. And Bermuda will tolerate that. It will grow through it. It'll, it'll, it'll be just fine and recover from that. But it's not ideal because if it rains, it's gonna make a mess. And even from a recovery standpoint, it's gonna take a, take substantially longer than if you just went to like you know half an inch, let some of those grass blades be exposed, and the lawn's gonna bounce back really quickly uh, if you do that. So for me, I lean more towards one cubic yard per thousand square feet. That is more what I lean towards than uh, 1.5. 1.5 isn't bad, and you might need 1.5 in some areas depending on how bad your you know how bad or uneven your lawn is. But one is what I uh, I tend to roll with in that that has worked out well for me and Alex and you know other people that I advise on 
how to top dress their lawns. All right, got a super chat. Let me run down here and grab that really quick. Got to do better about on getting the super chats. Uh, not letting you guys linger too long. We got one here from Ira Franklin. Super chat. Super chat received. It says, hey Ron, newbie here. I just received my pre-emergent and caravan G today. Yay for that. It says, I'm in Duval and it's been raining for two days nonstop. Is the ground too saturated to put down pre-emergent? I mean, I'm inclined to say no. Um, Ira, but let's, what I would say is this, let's say that, um, I don't know how much, I mean, raining for two days nonstop could be like a monsoon or it could be light, you know, cause it, it depends on how much, how much water you got on the lawn. I don't think I have that one image of the lawn where it was, where it was literally like a, uh, a flood. I don't think I have that video anymore to show you guys that obviously I can find it and bring it back in at some point. But yeah, anyway, um, so if you want, what you can do is you can wait a day. Let's say if it stops raining tonight. Tonight, so that's the last day it stops raining, right? And then tomorrow, um, you know, you want to give it a day. Give it a day to just dry out a little bit. And then say Sunday, you could go out and, and put your pre-emergent down. Not because there's really going to be any problems with it, but if you're using a granular pre-emergent, um, you know, you may not want to put ruts in the lawn with the broadcast spreader. That's something to consider, you know, but it's it's... It, it's really not, I don't really think it matters either way. If you, if you were to go out tomorrow, again, assuming your lawn is in a swamp, you know, just saying it rained, you know, a lot for two days doesn't, doesn't tell me a whole lot. Uh, assume, assuming it's not a swamp to where when you step in the, in the, on the grass, like literally water's coming up and it's just a big muddy mess. If that's not the case, you can apply the pre-emergent. It's not going to hurt anything. Really, uh, remember pre-emergent needs to be watered in to be, to get activated and to begin working. Um, so, you know, ideally it would have been good to do it before all this rain, or if you have rain in the forecast, if you can find a break in all this rain and get the pre-emergent down, that would be good too. You know what I mean? So it, it, I would, um, rain is not going to negatively affect it. It's, it's what it needs. It's what the product needs to get in the soil and begin working. The only time I'd, I'd give it any kind of time is if, again, if your lawn has some kind of flooding issue and you've got tons of water and it's just a big swampy mess where it's one, you know, potentially unsafe to walk on it. Uh, or you don't want to put ruts in it if you're using, you know, granular pre-emergent. I'm not sure which kind you're using. You didn't say, but just, just, uh, those are the only considerations I, I would have. Uh, outside of that, absolutely get it down, get your pre-emergent down. You know, this, this time for that, our, our, uh, our weekly public service announcement about pre-emergent, get your pre-emergent down guys. If you've not done it as yet, if you've, if here we are, you know, coming up on mid March, if you are in Georgia, you know, or Tennessee or anywhere in the Southeast United States and you're not done your pre-emergent yet, you really need to get on that. You need to get on that. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's way, way cheaper. It's way cheaper to prevent weeds in the first place than it is to try and correct them after the fact. So, you know, get, you know, we carry pre-emergent at the golf course lawn store. You know, you go to the weed killer section. We've got pre-emergent. You know, Home Depot has it. You know, low, I, mean, I don't care where you get it. I mean, I'd love it if you bought it for me. I can always use the business. But regardless of where you get it, get pre-emergent and put it on your lawn, please. Otherwise, in a couple of months, is we're going to be taught, we're going to be having the, the, the crabgrass and spurge, you know, live stream. And we want, we can avoid that if we just get pre-emergent on our lawns. So something to think about. All right. Our next comment, let me find out where I left off. Um, thank you for that, for the super chat again, Ira. It's always the worst spot is finding where I was. Okay. I found it. Yep. All right. So, uh, Robert Rainey was saying, getting coffee going. <laughs> getting coffee going just in case this one goes four hours again i don't know man maybe not tonight i don't know it depends on the questions it depends on the questions you guys uh, how many questions do you guys have it was a long one that was a long uh it was a long night but we'll have to see you guys keep asking questions i will keep answering them until i fall asleep here at my desk right i'll do my best all right next up sj is um demir is visiting sj's question on what was his question about i guess it's on on um on pre-emergent and uh the Kentucky bluegrass. And he says, SJ, great question. I'd hold off on your pre-emergent. If you did a fall reno, just go straight into your feeding program. Start with a high fert, uh, start with a fert high in uh, phosphorus to help those young grass seedlings establish. So there you go. Great advice. Uh, uh, Devin, you know, same thing. I keep, I did not read his comment ahead of time when I answered it because I didn't see it because I, I literally don't scroll down too much because I, I, I'll lose where I was. But exactly that. If you just did a uh, your renovation last fall, it's really too early to be to be uh, throwing pre-emergent down, especially on cool season grass. Bermuda, you could get away with it, but with a cool season grass, you really don't want to do that. You want to give it a good a good year. Next up is New Edge Lawns LLC. It says, what are your thoughts on using bifenthrin? 
Our Bifen XTS for outdoor lawns, for grubs and army worms compared to more extensive, expensive products. Will Bifen work and when is the best time to apply? Um, will Bifen work? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it can. It's good for, especially for treating, um, you know, active issues with grubs. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good product. A lot of people use it and have great results with it. Uh, I have just used the products like the, the products from Syngenta. Like I've, I've used Caravan G for several years in the, in many years past. And in, um, you know, recent years I've switched to a cellophane and just haven't looked back. Cause literally what's going to happen is in a couple of weeks from now, like late March, early April, I'm going to do my insecticide application and that's going to be it. Like I'm not going to have issues with grubs or army worms or I mean, we don't have bluegrass weevils here or bill bugs here really or that we have to, per se. But but grubs and army worms are not going to be an issue in my lawn. Like last year, literally when other lawns around here were getting destroyed, like Alex's lawn and my lawn had no issues. And the thing that was consistent about both of our lawns is they both had a cellar print on them. So uh, it's just not um, it's just not worth it to me as far as to just just to switch. The, the only the only benefit to Bifin XTS is that it's a bit cheaper. Also, another thing with a with a, a cellar print is that if you care about uh, pollinators, you care about earthworms. Um, it's uh, the the active ingredient in it, chlorinchalaprol, is better um, you know for the environment than a lot of the the harsher insecticides. So if that part is important to you, that's another reason to go with a, a Celeprin versus even like Caravan. Caravan's a great product, but um, but the active ingredient in it is a, is harsher than what's in a Celeprin. And um, I don't believe the active ingredient that's in Caravan uh, targets army worms. I don't believe so. Whereas a Celeprin does them all. It does it like any of your, um, again, grubs, bluegrass weevils, bill bugs, pretty much any kind of turf caterpillars. So um, army worms, um, cut worms, sod web worms, all of those. It takes care of all of them, and you apply it one time, and you're done. You're done for the for the entire year. So for me, it's just not um, it's just not worth switching to to anything else. You know what I mean? The, the the cost of like and the headache of having to track down and fix problems later on in the season if I don't do that is not worth it to me uh, versus just getting those products. And again, we we carry them. You got you got several options um, on the store. I mean, I can show you here, uh, that is not it, uh, this is it. So if you go to shop and fungicide insecticide, you've got um, a celeprin in a granular. So if you like granular, get my face out of the way. So you've got a celeprin in a granular, which is the easiest to go, easiest um, option. You've got a celeprin as a liquid, the ESC, um, the a suspension concentrate. Should be a video coming out on this one here soon. I just gotta finish editing it uh, on, the, uh, on the SC product. Um, so either one of these are both um, excellent. These are both best in class. Uh, you know, they're I mean, best in class. It's kind of cliche. It's an excellent, excellent product. You don't, you don't take my my word for it. There's tons of research papers that say really good things about chlorinchalaprol. So this is this is what I would I would go with. And then um, another option, if you just want to you know, save a bit of money and also have a insecticide and fungicide in one, that's where Caravan comes in. So Caravan G is a granular that combines an insecticide and a fungicide in one product. But really, for me, these two depending on what you decide to go with, whether you prefer to spray your products or you prefer to use a granular, this is what I would be using. Just, just not, just not worth it to me. Like if I had an issue with, um, with another, with other insects in my lawn where I'm having a spot, spot treat, like I have, um, like white flies or ants or roaches or something like that, I'm not going to use by, by Fenthrin. I'm going to go with something like this, right? I'm going to go with, um, the pest control. This stuff works very, very well, incredibly well. Like, like everyone that I, I that has purchased this has had really, really good results with it. Um, and it's non-toxic. So as far as like something you can put out, you know, like unlike um, bifenthrin, like literally you can put this stuff out and go, like you can, like the kids could be out on the lawn like two minutes after you're done with it, really. I mean, it's, it doesn't, it's non-toxic. It's not going to hurt them, not going to hurt pets. So this is as far as like a, a uh, you know, a spot, um, treatment product or something that you, if you say you have family or friends coming over, right, for a weekend and you want to keep um, mosquitoes away from the patio, you can just spray that. Get a fogger, spray the patio, spray the furniture, spray all of it, and you're not going to have any issues with with um, with bugs. And they can't form a resistance to this like um, like some insects can to some of the other insecticides. So for those reasons, I just like I see that I can see the need to to switch some things up or to try different things at times. But um, with insecticides, I've already got something that works. I just, so I'm just not really a, a fan of it. And the cost difference isn't, when you factor in your time and all the headache that goes into fixing a problem, an insect problem in a lawn, 
the cost difference just isn't enough to me anyway to justify um, going with a different option. So hopefully that helps. Um, New Edge is a great question and hopefully I, help, I helped answer it. All right, next up is uh, Latan, Latanja Moore says, how do you get rid of moss? Okay, so uh, Demir has a really good, Devin has a really good um, uh, treatment for this where you take, I think what he says is a gallon of water, take four ounces of dish soap, mix that with it, and you pour that on the moss and that will knock it back. That will knock back moss and algae. But the thing is, that's a, um, it's a temporary solution, right? The thing with moss is you wanna figure out why it's there in the first place. So in, a, in most cases, it's a situation where there's some kind of a drainage problem. So you take uh, like a, an area of the lawn where water's settling or doesn't drain properly, or and also like inadequate sunlight, so it's an area that's a little bit very shaded, so there's not getting a lot of sunlight, and then you have a great recipe for uh, for moss. Low pH as well, low, low soil pH as well can also um, you know help uh, exaggerate um, moss issues. But in most cases, it's a situation where someone has got it's just way too much moisture. Um, it's in most cases a drainage problem. So I would work on fixing that Latanja. I would look into. Uh, you know, if there's a problem where water is not draining or it's a low spot in the lawn where the moss is forming, I, I would work on correcting that. Yes, you can use some of these products. You can do like the the home fix I was telling you about um, that I got from Devin where it's the water and dish soap, or you can use some of the products like the Moss um, EX products. Like those can work as well too, but they're like a Band-Aid. You really wanna, you wanna correct the problem. You wanna, you wanna change the conditions that are causing the moss to even want to grow there. And then and then when you apply the products to get rid of it, it's a lot less likely to come back. You know what I mean? Kind of like trying to, to seed or put sod in, an, in a bare spot in a Bermuda lawn or a heavily shaded spot in the lawn, like you're going about it the wrong way. You want to correct, you want to fix the environmental conditions first and then, you know, bring in whatever it is that you, you need. In your case, um, you know, a, a product or home remedy to get rid of the moss. So hopefully that helps uh, answer your question. Um, I would I would try and fix the environmental factors first prior to you know really going after it with a bunch of chemicals or even uh, home remedies. So great question. Hopefully that helps. Next up is Adrian Ami says hello from freezing uh, Dallas Worth for Texas. You know we gotta blame Texas on this one on Texas because you guys were the ones that had that really cold snap uh, there a few weeks ago when all you guys were in here in the live stream saying oh man it's really cold it was so good and then it got all cold and now we're having that here in Georgia for the next two days. Yeah I know. It, to do aren't really related, but you gotta blame someone, right? Anyway, he says it's 35 degrees and it feels like 26 right now and I'm waiting for the 70s. It'll be back soon enough, Adrian. I really wouldn't worry about it, man. This this cold weather snap is only gonna be for a few days. Nothing really to, to sweat. Okay, next is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, ready to mow? I did a back lap, uh, replace uh, spark plug, uh, oil filter, air filter, and grease my California trimmer. Uh, Calvary trimmer, McLean and Honda rotary, cutting paper and ready to go. Also did a wash <laughs> and a wax to top it off. You did it all, man. You're good to go. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I, I can't. I, I can add nothing to that. You did everything that you should have done and then some. Okay. Next up is uh, Devin. He says Austin B should be okay. Those type of lockups over a period of time. If you switch from one to the other, as long as you stick to your fertility program, you'll be okay. So this is his response in question in um, his response to the comment about uh, using, I think, only sand, it causing a negative effect as far as top dressing. So there you go. The man has, uh, you know, clarified or clarified the, the misunderstanding around it. Pretty much stick with your fertility program and you will be good to go. Next up is Paco with yet another cold snap question. He says, hey, Ron, what do you think about this cold snap we're going to get in the next couple of days? Sucks, doesn't it? It does. It does suck. And it's only going to be for a few days, man. It's going to be all right. Time will pass. It'll, you know, a couple days, by this time next week, we'll be well back into the 70s and life will be good. So not fun, but it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's par for the course. Mother Nature always wins, right? And then Adrian is here, says, made it to Friday. Yeah, man, woo. Welcome, Adrian. Glad for you that you're hanging out in the live stream. Okay, uh, next, uh, Adam Tarby says, evening, Ron, North Texas area, Bermuda, scalped earlier this week. We had an Arctic blast last night when we were down to 23 degrees in the morning. Well, this set me back weeks for green up again. Weeks, doubtful, doubtful. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to quantify exactly, Adam. If your forecast looks like how mine does, where literally this is only a couple of days, it's like today, today and tomorrow, and then it's gonna begin warming up again it's not gonna materially make a huge difference in uh, in the green up. So I, I really wouldn't sweat it too much. I imagine that Texas, you're in North Texas, you're probably gonna have a little bit cooler temperatures than we are for a while longer. 
but it's it shouldn't be something that's going to cause weeks like weeks and weeks setback. So I, I don't don't worry about it, man. You'll be you'll be good. You'll be good. I'm right there with you on the pain as far as um, as far as this cold weather. Okay, next up is Spencer Bigham says, "Hey Ron, my soil test said I was very low in all three NPK. Do I need to apply a balanced fertilizer all season long?" Thanks. That's a great question, Spencer. So it depends on how low your levels were. Uh, what I've seen and, and I've, I've um, advised some other viewers on, they've done this last season and had good results. Is they used the balanced fert? Um, they used like a like a triple twelve or whatever else they decided to go with for the first two months of the season, and they switched to whatever they wanted to, and the, the lawn looked great. So, can you use um, the balanced fert all season? Sure. There's people that use that do nothing but that. There's people that just run starter fert on their lawn all season. But the thing with me is, I would um, I would prefer to remove a fertilizer that has a phosphorus in it um, as soon as we think the levels might be where they should be, right? So in other words, I'm not a fan of just constantly pounding the lawn with uh, with phosphorus when when it's not necessary. So you could do, you know, whatever fertilizer you're going with, like that balanced fert that you're using, you could use that for the first two months and then switch to something like a 1608, something like Cumic Max or a six, you know, whatever you decide to go with, a six, uh, a, a, a number, zero number, for your for your fert after a few months of uh, of the balance, just so you make just so you're not you know just throwing phosphorus at the lawn um, all season long when it might not need it. Again, this question is difficult to answer without looking at your soil test results. Um, you know, if I had that, I'd be able to give you a a better a better answer. But a, a couple of months and then switching to something else is a is a good way to go. Next up is Dane Chancy. He says. Family dinner, waiting on this coal <laughs> to ride out. Real work sharpened my McLean. Here we go. Yeah, man, Dane, it's only gonna be for a couple of days, man. It's only for a few days. Fair or not. Fair or not. Do not get too uh, too upset about it. I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat it. You know, we're gonna... It's only gonna be for a couple of days and then we'll be warming up again. Okay, next, Robin Marie is here, has a question. She says, please help. Uh, two questions. Uh, scalped last week and greening up slowly but have po poannua and weeds everywhere now. What do I need for that issue? Uh, liquid preferable. Okay, what kind of grass do you have, um, Robbie? What kind of grass do you have? Um, okay, well, but I'll, I'll answer the question as if you have Bermuda. How about that, all right? So if you have poa and you're trying to get rid of it and it's not just a little amount that you can actually just dig it out, like you don't want to physically remove it, then a good option for spot spraying it is a product called Certainty. There's also a product called Negate that works really well. It's a little bit cheaper than Certainty, but I'm not a fan of suggesting that for, for homeowners because the way you're supposed to use it, there's people that don't do this, but the way you're supposed to use it is you're supposed to mix the entire contents. It's like a 1.5 ounce container, I think. You're supposed to mix the entire contents um, all at once. And um, that, that, uh, that suspension mix that you create will last um, only for about four to six weeks according to the manufacturer, and it treats about an acre. So most people don't have uh, you know, 43,000 square foot lawn, so what ends up happening is you go out and you mix up this, this mixture of this really potent herbicide, you spot spray and kill off the, uh, the POA, and then you're left with this stuff that you gotta get rid of somehow, right? So, so a, a way to, to, to avoid that is to use something like Celsius, I mean, that's not Celsius, um, uh, Certainty, it's a um, it's more expensive, but you know one container of this stuff. If you buy a container of it, it's going to last you forever, and um, it's also an excellent product for if you have sedges in your lawn. So you have like sed uh, nut sedge, kalinga, uh, any of the globe sedges, um, any of those dandelions. But I mean, pretty much anything will kill dandelions. But that it'll take care of that too. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If we go for a ride to the golf course lawn store, and we go up to shop and weed killer here, front and center is certainty. This is what I would use. I would not blanket the entire lawn with it. Again, spot spray the areas that have the um, the POA. Uh, you know, your lawn, you didn't say if your lawn's coming out of dormancy as yet. I didn't see that in your comment, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of blanketing the lawn, uh, blanketing um, lawns this time of year if you can really avoid it. So something like that, like certainty is gonna work well. Uh, and that would be, uh, that is what I would go with mainly because it's just uh, it's it's an option that you can you can use in smaller amounts. Uh, it's excellent for other things so again like sedges and um, sedges and kalinga, uh, and it's just a, it's just overall just an excellent product. You can also use it 
uh, all throughout the year. So when temps get high, it, it, you can still use it as well. So it's a good, so it's a good, it's a good product in general, and in, and in my opinion, is a better fit for home lawns, residential lawns. Uh, if you're gonna use Certainty, make sure you pick up a uh, surfactant, like a non-ionic surfactant. If you go to the link, to, no, actually, I'll just send you a link. I'll just give it to you. Why not? I'll just, um, I'll just send you this. And then if you go if you, in here, in the product description, there is a link to the surfactant that I would recommend that you, that you use with the, uh, the product for best results. So at Robbie, there's a lot of R's in here, at Robbie, and I'll say Certainty and there is uh, there's the link to it. And again, in the product description, there's a link to the surfactant that you should use with that to get the best results. Again, great for, for spot spraying and it will, uh, it sh it'll take care of your POA problem. It'll take care of your POA problem. I'm not sure what other weeds you're dealing with. Uh, if you have a lot of broad leaves, then on that same page that Certainty's on, uh, there is Triad. But again, uh, that's like a, that's, think of Triad Select as like a, um, like a, a souped up, version of spectricide, like the orange label spectricide. So you'll see that, let me show you real quick before I go on to the next question, make sure I answered it properly. So if you go, so you've got certainty for the POA, uh, this guy here, where is it? Uh, uh, Triad, this is an excellent product too, not crazy expensive, that has really good coverage for broadleafs. Uh, so if I, you didn't say what weeds you're dealing with, but you mentioned POA, which certainty will take care of, and then this will take care of most other common weeds that you have in your lawn. Uh, this time of year. So between those two, you should be um, should be good to go. So hopefully that helps. Let me know if I uh, can help with anything else. And again, those products are, are uh, assuming you have uh, the, the, the triad will work on both, but uh, certainty is for warm season lawns. So again, Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine is for warm season grass. Do not spray that if you have, do not use that product if you have like uh, any, like, you know, praying over like rye or um, fescues or anything like that. Do not use certainty on those lawns. It's only for warm season grass. Great question. Okay, next up is, I cannot read this, it's long, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I go 60 VR Creations. It says, hello, Ron. I recently used your promo link for the Petrofogger. They upgraded my order to a battery operated model for the same price. Nice, I like that, that's awesome. Uh, just a heads up to your subscribers. Thank you. That's pretty. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet, guys. So, if you guys are in the market for a fogger, um, the Petro Fogger is actually really good. I liked it. The, the one thing that would could have been better is it not needing a power, um, not needing an extension cable, and the fact that it's like they fixed that. So, um, I don't know if I still have the link for that. Let me see if I, I might. I might. I might. Let's see here. Let's see. I think I do. I do. Yep. So, if you are interested in a fogger. And why would you need a fogger? So the big thing is if you're using a product like this, like the pest control, right? So if you apply the pest control with a backpack sprayer, it's something like 3,000 square feet. Let me make sure here, I'm not telling you wrong, yeah. It's like 1,500 to 3,000 square feet of coverage if you use a backpack sprayer. If you use a fogger, it's like 7,000 square feet of coverage. So uh, yes, this is not an inexpensive product, but it's excellent. And if you use it with a fogger, like literally you'll buy this and it's gonna last you years. It'll last you a really long time. So, uh, so what, that's what IGO uh, 60 VR Creations is talking about. So if you're gonna get one of these guys, uh, make sure you use a fogger with it. What I'll do also tonight is once I get out the live stream, I'll update the product description with a link to that fogger. But if any of you guys are interested in that, I will put a um, link there in the chat for you guys to check out. They are the kind of a niche tool, but they are worth having, especially if you're using a product like the Miramichi Green uh, Pest Control. Works very, very well with that. Thanks for the heads up, um, IGO 60 VR Creations. I appreciate it. And I'm glad that uh, that you got you got some new got some new gear, man. You gotta love new gear. Okay, next up is Amato Martinez. He says, um, "Hey, Ron. Actually, wait before I do that, Amato. I gotta go down and get a super chat. I gotta do it first. I'm sorry. I don't want to get in trouble here with Robert from Robert Mahorez. Thank you so much, Robert. Super chat received. Thanks for the support, sir. I do appreciate it. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And now uh, back to Amato Martinez's question. He says, "Hey, Bermuda Lawn." 2,000 square feet. Do you think a pro plugger is best or aerator? I would fill in holes with sand when leveling. Larger holes allow first to get down into the soil. Your thoughts? Okay, so they're kind of different tools. Like a pro plugger is really designed for a situation where you're trying to uh, fill in areas of your lawn. So if you're trying to remove cores, I mean, I guess you can use it to aerate. It's kind of a painful way to do it. You, you're trying to remove cores and then you're trying to tra you want to transfer those cores to another area of your lawn that's a bit thinner or has like a bare spot or something along those lines, right? So pro plugging your entire lawn is um, very much a very manual labor intensive effort. I mean, you have 2000 square feet, so, so you could do it if you wanted, 
Um, but I would go for like an actual aerator, man. If, if you want my opinion, like get, you know, bite the bullet. If you have a way to get an aerator home, because I know that is kind of a hassle. You gotta, you have to have a truck or an SUV or something to rent it and get, get it to the house and someone to take it out and this kind of thing. But you will get a, uh, in my opinion, a better result with an aerator, with a, with a hollow core aerator, because you're also able to make passes in multiple directions. You can make passes lengthwise, make passes the, you know, non-lengthwise, the wide, you know, wide, um, width wise of the lawn. And then, yeah, when you apply your FERT, your essential, do your biostimulants, anything else that you want to put down, it is a way to fast track those nutrients, those products into the soil. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, it's just that um, a pro plugger is not, it's, it's a manual process and isn't necessarily the best tool for uh, for the job um, compared to an aerator. Plus the plugs that you pull out with a pro plugger are going to be a lot larger. Whereas with an aerator, the plugs that come out are like, I don't know, they're like the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit smaller than a quarter. Uh, what comes out of, a, out of a pro plugger are going to be, are going to be quite a bit bigger, right? So I, for those reasons, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that would be my first option if you already have one. And again, you only got 2000 square feet. You just, you just want the workout. Sure. But for me, I would, um, I would be more inclined to rent an aerator than using a pro plugger as a means to aerate my entire lawn. So uh, all that is getting based on assuming you can, you have a way to get one home. Uh, and, and if you do, then that's the way I would go. Great question. That's a good one. Uh, Amato like it. All right. Next up is, um, let's see here. I got a super chat from David Polanco. Let me get down here and grab that really quick and then run back up from David. Super chat received. He says, uh, happy Friday, Ron and chat. Thanks for the live stream from cold San Antonio, Texas. Well, you're very, very welcome from a cold Georgia. Thank you for uh, for hanging out, uh, David. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much for the support. Okay, next up is Jesse M. He says, what's the best pre-emergent for St. Augustine grass? Uh, best is relative. There's a couple of good options that are um, reasonably priced. Uh, you can go with prodiamine, which is the one that most people use, or you can go with dithiapair. Either one of those uh, will work well. Um, here's what I'll, well, I'll show you what I'm talking about here, Jesse. So if you go to the golf course lawn store, you go over to shop and weed killer and down to the bag section, we got a couple options for dithia pair. We got a 0.125, a 0.172. So 50 pound bag, a 45 pound bag of it of dithia pair. And then you also have prodiamine in a 45 pound bag. And uh, those are the granular options. If you want to go liquid or actually more correct would be the water dispersible granule option. Then you've got the smaller container here, which covers up to 6,000-ish uh, square feet thereabouts in on a Bermuda lawn at the higher rate. And uh, if you want, if you have a really large lawn or you just want to make an investment that's really the best value for money, then you can go with the larger prodiamine uh, in water dispersible granule and a five pound jug. But I mean, for granular, if you want something easy, pick one of these guys, you know, either the dithia pairs or the prodiamine, e either of those will work well. Get them down uh, and you'll you'll be good to go as far as as far as keeping weeds uh, out of your lawn. You know, I mean, either of those will work well on, on St. Augustine. The big thing is to get it down, right? Like we're getting the point, uh, I mean, you're St. Augustine, so you're seeing St. Augustine, so I'm assuming you're probably in Florida or or South Texas or something like that. So get it down. You don't want to wait uh, too much longer because pre-emergent works best when it's already in, it has to be in the soil for it to work and prior to the weeds uh, emerging. So if you wait, you know, another three weeks, two, three weeks, it's still going to work, but you're not going to get the effectiveness out of it that you would have should, had you gotten it and put it, applied it here in the next week or so. So get it done sooner than later. And guys, it's time for me to take a sip of my lemonade, get a little dry in, in the throat. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, I'll put some music on here while I, while I sip my lemonade and uh, look for my next uh, comment. So if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, I'd really, really appreciate it. All right. Uh, Robbie Marie is back with a second question and says, second question, I tilled my front lawn, la my front yard last week and found grub worms everywhere and a ton of snail shells uh, and disappearing St. Augustine grass now for two years. Can I start grub control early? Yes. The answer is yes. Absolutely. So I'm assuming that you, one, you got St. Augustine grass so that answers the other question. Uh, and, um, you, you got St. Augustine grass and you already got grubs in your lawn, then yeah, you want to get something down. 
what I would say, uh, Robbie, is to use a celeprin. A celeprin is, a, is you'll, you'll put that down, it's gonna kill the existing grubs and it's going to um, prevent them and other lawn insects, lawn damaging insects anyway, from being a problem for the rest of the season. So you already saw where I showed, get here to the golf course lawn store, go to the fungicide insecticide section. And actually you just go to the, to the, to the store on the main page, if you scroll down, you'll see a celeprin uh, there. So go with that. Um, you know, if you want the liquid, you gotta go to the menu option. I haven't moved the liquid over there as yet to the main page, but yeah, g get that. And um, that will do the trick as far as getting rid of the grubs. If you're already seeing it and you've already got the telltale sign of, of damage, of root damage where you grab the lawn, grab the grass, and you can easily just pull it up. It just kind of peels back like a carpet. That's bad. So you want to you want to get ahead of that um, early, sooner than later. So hopefully that helps. Um, and uh, again, sorry that you're dealing with that, but definitely get ahead of it. Apply apply now since you're already seeing the issues with the uh, with the insects in the lawn. Okay, next up is Timothy Wolf. He says, hey, Ron, I appreciate you answering my email regarding the pest control. I picked up, um, here it is. I picked up uh, the Miramichi Green Pest Control. Is a product okay to use in flower beds? Yes, it is It is fine to use in flower beds. That's the thing with this. Again, what he's talking about, guys, is this guy here. Um, yeah, you could spray this on um, you know, your patio, flower beds, plants. Uh, you know, If you look in the video, that uh, the, the product video for this, um, it's in, this, in the product description, you'll see that, you know, I, I show spraying it on shrubs, on the actual lawn, on, you can spray it on furniture, you can spray it on your patio, you can spray it on actual plants. Like, um, Alex had a tree here. It's like a, I think it's like a weeping, some kind of a weeping tree. And, um, white flies were out there. They were just eating it up. They were, they were, they were having, they, they were living their absolute best life, just crushing that tree. And, um, I sprayed it. I hit it with that, um, with using the fogger and that app that just decimated them. Literally you saw them just, they all, they all just fell, just fell down dead. They were gone. And the residual effect was such that for several weeks, there was no issue, um, at all. So it's a very, very, very safe product, non-toxic. Um, and, uh, yeah. So yeah, as far as using it, putting it on like your flower beds, roses, things like that, you're good to go. No problems at all. Like, again, literally you can spray that you can sp uh, spray the stuff on, your patio furniture, anything like that. And just once it dries, you just don't have like, you know, the stuff getting on your, on your, your, your clothes or whatever, you're good to go to re-enter the area. So very, very safe product, non-toxic, um, good stuff. Really, it would, it would have been labeled as, um, organic. It would have gotten its army certification had it not, if it weren't for some of the soaps, like some of the, one of the, one of the ingredients in it, there's like a, uh, there's like a soap that's in it, like very, uh, and that's, that, that, that would disqualify it from being considered organic. So the terminology, terminology you'll see on the Miramichi Green website and on the store is it's non-toxic, but it's as close to being an organic product as you can get in a, in a, in a pest control product uh, of, its, of its type. So hopefully that helps. All right, next up is Jeff Jones. He says, I think you were gonna try a new pre-emergent. If so, how'd it work for you? I struggle with Poanua every year. Secondly, can you recommend treatment for Poa when it sprouts? Yeah, so what I tried, so technically I didn't try a new pre-emergent. I tried a new product that has pre-emergent in it. So what I what I used last um, last fall, uh, Jeff, was a product called Coastal. It contains uh, prodiamine as the pre-emergent, but it also contains simazine and amazoquin as a as post-emergent herbicides that will target POA. So it worked really really well. I mean, as far as seeing POA in my lawn, I mean. I, Maybe you had like two or three like little clumps in a small, like small areas, practically nothing. So it, the product worked incredibly well. Uh, the negative to it is I believe they discontinued it in the smaller amounts, the smaller volume. So um, I can I can send you the link for it if you want. Uh, but I think now it's only available in uh, like a two and a half pound, uh, two and a half gallon, two and a half pound, <laughs> two and a half gallon jug which for most homeowners is gonna be kind of, is gonna be rather cost prohibitive. Yeah, see, and, the, and the, the price of it's gone up too. So, I mean, I mean, you can see here, I, I'll send you the link to it, but it's just, it's just very, in a, in a two and a half jug, uh, gallon quant, uh, quantity, it's, it's just too expensive for homeowners to, for it to really be worthwhile. But I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that is uh, Coastal. And as far as um, a treatment, for POA when it sprouts, there's a couple of options. If you want to go really slow, you can use something like Image. Image will work. Simazine, uh, Image will work or Amazoquin will work. It's just going to be slower to, to knock the POA back. Uh, if you want to get rid of it quickly, you're going to use something like Negate or, uh, or Certainty. 
Negate I, is a great product. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper than Certainty, but I'm not a, I'm not really a big fan of recommending it because for most people, they don't have a property large enough to where um, they can use up the entire contents within four to six weeks like you're supposed to. So that leads us then to using either something like Image, which is will work, but it's just really, really slow, or something like uh, Certainty, which will target POA, uh, but it's more expensive. So kind of your options. I, I was showing uh, another gentleman in the live stream there earlier. Just go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to the Weed Killer section, and you'll see Certainty there. That's an option for, for POA. But the best way to not have to deal with POA is just to not have it in your lawn in the first place. So in the fall, so not right now you can't do anything about it, but in for next fall, so six months from now, six, six, seven months from now, when you get to the point where you're doing pre-emergent again, uh, get down your prodiamine, get down your uh, your 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 pre-emergent application. That's going to do a ton for keeping POA out of your lawn. I mean, well, you, you may have a few here and there, but it's not going to be anything like what you're probably experiencing without any pre-emergent. So uh, that's that's going to be my best advice for you. Again, you can use some of the products I'm talking about it's like like uh, like certainty to get rid of it. It's gonna be more expensive, or you can wait. You can wait till it gets hotter and it will die off. But it's gonna look kind of ugly, uh, you know. In the meantime, so it's, it's your your call. Your call on which way to go. The best the best way to deal with POA is to just prevent it in the in the first place, especially in warm season grass, because we have so many great options uh, to do that. All right, next year is uh, uh, Robert Rainey. He says burrweed came back after fall and spring. Uh, Pre-emergent apps, predimine and dimension used in altering apps, basically having to post treat each time. Celsius certainty combination has knocked it out. Yeah, that's right, Robert. I remember you were telling me that in December that you used uh, those two. And the big thing is, if you can kill off burrweed when it's young, then it's not gonna really become an issue, I mean, or, or, or not get rid of when it's young, then the bird weeds, the burrs in the burrweed won't become as much of an issue, like if you wait till, uh, you know, late spring when it, they tend to harden and then you walk in the lawn and you, you know, you get a get an ouchie get an ouchie in your foot. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that the Celsius and Certainty combo uh, worked well. Again, that is a, a great combination that I'm a huge fan of because temperature restrictions, practically no real temperature restrictions with it, uh, and kills a very broad range of common weeds in warm season grass. Um, and it's also not gonna ding the lawn. It's not gonna you know yellow the grass or, or, or substantially um, you know just discolor it like some other uh, warm season herbicides will do. So I'm glad you got, that you got good results with that, uh, Robert. Keep me posted if you have any uh, any issues. You sounds like you said the burrweed is hating life at the moment. So you just smacked it again, huh? Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. All right, uh, next up is Paco. Um, Paco Guib says, thanks, Ron. Uh, Paco, the <laughs> Paco the Taco loves you and thinks you're a straight kill in the lawn game. I appreciate it, sir. I really do appreciate that. It's a lot of work, um, but I, I do... I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Um, thanks for all your pimping knowledge. I appreciate I appreciate all the love and support. And you said I received Spectacle Flow to try on future apps. Nice. So you're stepping it up, man. Spectacle Flow is a great product, but it's you know it's high dollar, high dollar stuff. But it is, it is good. Like anything else, you get what you pay for, right? Like people talk about insecticides, and I say you know with with a seller print, you get what you pay for. Come to, comes to pre-emergence, dithiopyr and prodiamine are good, but you know. Um, is it in Dazaflam or what, the, the active ingredient in Spectacle Flow is like another level. It's another it's another step up and the price reflects that as it should because it's a great product. Okay, next is, uh, I already answered that question for you, Timothy, on um, on the Miramir Tricking Pest Control. I think we got that. And the next up is Electric Hambone says, hey Ron, I don't have Bermuda, but I like watching your content. Well, I hope that the content is still somewhat usable even though you don't have Bermuda Electric Hambone. I mean, a lot of what I talk about outside of the herbicide uh, options, obviously, apply to most grass types. So really, the things that are important, like getting a soil test done, you can do that on warm and cool season grass, you know, fertilizing according to soil test results, that applies to both grass types, plant growth regulator, both grass types. Really, the big thing is, um, you know, top dressing, really more of a warm season grass thing, unless you have like rye or um, KBG that you're mowing short. But really, it's mainly herbicides that are the big are the big difference. You know what I mean? So in, in the insecticides, fungicides, those tend to apply between warm and cool season grass. So for the most part, it's really just herbicides that you have to make sure um, that you're using the correct type for your given grass type. You know what I mean? But most of the other products, the, the, the content should be useful. So I appreciate you watching, regard, even though I'm primarily a warm season or I focus on warm season grass. But, you know, I love all grass. 
I love all grass types, you know what I mean? All grass is good grass as long as it's mowed and, and taken care of. All right, so Eric B is back with another question. He says, I really need to get a backpack sprayer and save a ton of money. Just not sure I want to line, uh, just not, not sure I want to line in the yard and go camping. Would save a ton of money. I only have a two uh, gallon pump sprayer to spot treat. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm not sure I want to lie in the yard and go camping with save a ton of money. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so a backpack sprayer is a game changer, I would say, Eric, right? So the, the, the thing with, I'll give you some things to think about. It, you know, you, you're already dealing with some of this with your two gallon sprayer. You know, hopefully you calibrated it and you know like what your flow rates are and how much, you know, how long it takes you to put out a gallon of product. But with a backpack sprayer, the biggest benefit, the biggest, you know, the biggest, you know, perk of switching to liquids or incorporating liquids is the options you get. You get more, you get more options around uh, uh, application rate. You can mix multiple products at the same time, assuming that they're compatible and apply them all at the same time. So a good example, like let's, let's take a look at my, like my fertilization schedule, right? If you took like what I use for what I'm going to be using this year, right? For fertilizer. So I have like 901C and then uh, Nutrizolve. If you just take just those two, right? Forget the fact that, forget the fact that I'm also using the biostimulants. I'm also using like Nutric Help and then also the, um, the, the microbial um, package in Biospectrum, you know, take, 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 Forget those two. Forget that that part of that aspect of it, right? If you just take this the fertilizer, say I had a fertilizer like a granular that's just that is just a straight fertilizer, and then I wanted to apply a micronutrient, that's literally two different products and two different applications. Now there are some granulars that have micronutrient in them as well, but as far as being able to kind of mix and match and you know have it your way, have it the way you want, where you're putting down in one app, one one application pass, you're doing your fur, you're doing your macros, you're doing your micros, you're doing your um, your kelp, you're doing your um, your microdized carbon, you're doing your biostimulants, like your microbial package, all at one time. That is the beauty and the power of liquids of, of going with a backpack sprayer because it gives you the, the ability to, to do that kind of thing. Whereas the granular, literally, it's just it's you're gonna be like putting one product out, then load the, load the spreader up and put another product out because the rates are completely different, right? With uh, because with with a sprayer with the liquids, you can kind of control those rates and you can make sure that everything lines up as long as you're mixing all the products, you're adding all the products to the tank with the idea that you're going to be applying them with at, at a rate of one gallon of product mix per thousand square feet, as long as you're doing that. And again, as long as they all, the, the product can mix nicely together, they don't have any weird interactions, you know, you can, you can, you can save yourself a lot of time and have a lot more control and flexibility over what you do uh, in your lawn by adding, uh, you know, a, a backpack for adding liquids to, to the program. So as far as options, the Yard Mastery Sprayer is a great sprayer. I, I think for value for money, it's one of the best options out there because it comes, it's a great sprayer for one and it comes with all the tips. It literally, it's, it's good to go. You buy it, you don't need anything else. Uh, it's currently sold out. I don't think they're gonna get any more in until April is what I'm hearing. So with that being the case, like the Flow Zone is another one. It's a good other one, a good one. Like the Typhoon 2 is a great option. Um, but you're gonna need to buy some tips after the fact to get it to where the Yard Mastery is then to, where it comes with the tips. So. Uh, so your choice, your call, but I do, you will not regret it. Once you get one and you go through the process of knowing, like learning how to use it and learning what your walking pace needs to be about D for like your, um, like you're calibrating it. You're going to love it. You're going to love the, uh, the options and just the control it gets you. When you, if you want to apply plant growth regulator, if you want to use the happy juice for your lawn, you want to put this stuff on the lawn. You're going to want to, you're going to want a backpack sprayer. I mean, there are granular PGRs, but this, you know, Primo is best applied using it in liquid form. You know, it's going to, it's going to work better. So. Hopefully I've convinced you to, con to consider that, you know, it, it's, there's uh, tons of benefits, not very many negatives. And uh, I, I would grab one and not look back, would not look back. All right, next up is Braden Rubin. He says, haven't gotten into real mowing game yet, keyword yet, I like it. Uh, scout my yard at the lowest setting my mower would go. Is there a downside to, to just keeping that, um, that my mow height, or does it have to be higher than the scout? Not really. So here's what you're gonna run into, Braden. It's a great question. It's a really good one. So the issue you're gonna run into with uh, maintaining the scalp height, again, assuming the scalp height is like there is some grass, like you need to go right down to the dirt, is that the mowing frequency that that's gonna require is gonna be pretty high. So let's say you scalped your lawn below half an inch. So you're at say, I don't know, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, so very low. Um, well, in your case, you need a real mow. But let's, let's say you, in your case, you went down to three quarters of an inch, right? Your mower can go down to three quarters of an inch. 
Uh, if you scalp the lawn that short and you want to maintain it that short in the summer months, that's going to mean mowing every other day. That's like, that's like an every other day type co commitment to keep the lawn looking good in between mowings. Meaning that if you want to wait, you know, three or four days, you're mowing your lawn only once or one, twice a week, you can do that. But what's going to happen is you're going to have some areas that you're going to be cutting off. You're going to be cutting off too much material and it's going to look brown, uh, you know, a couple days later. So you don't want that. So if you really want the lawn to look nice and green, and uh, in between mowings, kind of like how golf courses look, they, they, when they cut them, they still, the grass still remains green. Um, mowing your lawn at that lower height is just going to require a lot more, or maintaining on that lower height is going to require a lot more time commitment as far as mowing goes. So if you've got the time to do it, you can try it, you can give it a go. But during the summer months, um, it's going to be a challenge. And that's where using something like like Plant Growth Regulator, like uh, like uh, like this, like Primo, is going to be is going to be a great option. You know, that's going to reduce how much you have to mow quite a bit in some cases up to half depending on other factors. But uh, but it, it, most people are best served by scalping and then maintaining their height of cut just slightly higher than where they intend to uh to to then where they scalp the lawn. You know what I mean? So in my case, I took it down really, really short. I took it down below half an inch. And right now I'm cutting the lawn at, at a bench height of 0.625, which equates to just over half an inch. We'll say, you know, between half an inch and 0.625. So somewhere in that in that that space. Just over half an inch is what I'm at right now. And what I will end up at, you know, once May-ish hits or so is three quarters of an inch. And that is the height that I'll maintain the lawn at throughout the entire growing season. So hopefully that helps. You can do it. It's just a big time commitment. Um, so you have to decide whether whether that's for you. If your grass type is one that will tolerate that, which it sounds like it is, it sounds like it's Bermuda or something short, or you wouldn't have scalped it, uh, then it's just, it's up to you whether you have the time to, to really pull that off. All right, let me run down here and grab a super chat. We had another one that came in from Mr. Eric Leon. Thank you so much, Eric. Super chat received. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for all the love and support, sir. And you've now forced me to go back and try and do the thing that is most difficult in this live stream, which is find where I was. All right, here we go. Back. We're back. All right. Uh, Eric B says, does anyone still use blind side for fescue grass? I really hear anyone talk about it. It's the only one I have as a post-emergent. Yeah, the thing with blind side, it's a great product, but it's um, there's a lot of places where they don't sell it. I mean, from what I understand, the restrictions on that guy are pretty... Uh, yeah, there's a whole there's a whole lot of states where they don't sell it. So if you want to take a look here, you can see, like, um, like where is like Celsius and certainty. I think there's only like literally two states where that's not for sale. Uh, but I mean, you can't use those on fescue, so they're wrong. That this, that's the wrong curbside anyway. Um, you look at all the states where you cannot where blindside is not for sale. So that's that's a big reason is probably why it's not as popular for your fescue. Something like um, tenacity. It would be good. It depends on what you're uh, what you're dealing with as far as uh, as weeds, which weeds you're trying to target. But that is is uh, is what most people tend to go with for cool season turf. Right? If you're looking for like a, a herbicide, like a general broad herbicide that kills most things, something like Tenacity on your uh, your fescue lawn is gonna is gonna work well. We have like the generic version of that at the golf course lawn store. You'll see it. Uh, it's called uh, this Mezzo something. Um, I can I can show you uh, show you real quick. But yeah, that that is gonna be a better option for you than, or I should say, that's gonna be another option for you that most cool season people tend to go for versus uh, blindside, mainly because it can be sold, it's available in more places. So like this guy right here. So Mesotrion, the Forest Sea Select, that guy, this is um, a great alternative to, uh, to, to to blindside that will work work very, very well in cool season grass. Great question, great question. All right, next is D.W. Davis from Carbondale, Illinois. He says, three inches of snow today, 70s next Wednesday. Love your talks. I appreciate it, sir. Yeah, I was watching uh, Princess Cut Long here. Um, George, he was on, and he was saying, he's talking about, like, you know, he's getting ready to film some content or whatever. He's getting close. I think he's just chomping at the bit to get out there and start filming, right? And uh, you guys all got hit with snow. He was uh, he was, he was uh, letting us know that earlier. So, sorry, but hopefully it's maybe the last major snow of this winter, early spring season, maybe. I mean, one can hope. One can hope, but I appreciate you chiming in and hanging out in the live stream with us anyway, even though you're not going to be out mowing uh, your your lawn right now. Okay, next up uh, is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, why is it that a lot of higher quality fertilizers have lower end? For example, Humic Max 1608 versus Scott's Turf Builder 3204 
Why not use Scott since it's less expensive with higher end? Your thoughts? Uh, great question. So there's a couple of reasons for that. So the Scott's product, the 3204, I haven't even looked at it, I haven't seen it, but it's more than likely a slow release uh, fertilizer. It's good. So it's gonna feed the lawn for extended periods of time. So you'll put that down and it'll work for, you know, some, I've, I've seen some where they say you apply it once and it'll last for three months. So that is, that's their thing is you apply it once and you're, it'll feed it slowly over the season. But what you, what you tend to find with that is the color consistency isn't as good as giving the lawn small amounts of, of food as it needs it throughout like month to month, or in some cases, you know, a couple times a month. So you look at something like Humic Max, which is a quicker release uh, fertilizer. It's uh, it's like 35% slow release and and 65% quick release. So it's gonna it's gonna give up most of its nitrogen within the first you know three to four weeks. It's gonna feed. It's gonna give up most of what it has to offer as far as nitrogen and um, and potassium in in three to four weeks, which is good for what I like to do, which is a spoon feeding program. I like I like to put um, I like to to to, to slowly give the lawn, um, you know, food, it allows me to run lower amounts of nitrogen. So when you use this, the Scott's product, it's difficult to know, you know, on month one, is it getting like a higher amount? And then as you, as it tails off, is it getting a lower amount? And in some cases, especially when you're not dealing with like the more expensive first, because these are here's what you're paying for with, with some of the more, more expensive birds, right? I can get humic max. So the blue prills in here that you see, one, they're really tiny, right? But that is their, methylene urea and it's a homogenous prill. So what does that mean? Why is that important? When you look at some of the products like what um, with Scott's and some of the other cheaper fertilizers, they tend to put like a coating around the nitrogen that slowly wears away with time, with um, heat, with rain. Uh, it just slowly wears away and slowly releases the fertilizer, the nitrogen. The problem is with someone like me who's out cutting their grass all the time, and if, if I run over um, one of the prills like that's in like a lot of the cheaper fertilizers, that slow release fertilizer is no longer slow release because I've, I've broken that, I've cut the, I've, I've basically broken that barrier and it's gonna release a lot faster. So for someone like me that is cutting their lawn very, very short, one, like the, compared to like this, compared to this, which is like an SGN of like 150, like the Scott's fertilizer, frankly, is like, it's like throwing bowling balls, throwing marbles on the lawn. It's, the, the prill is way too big given how tight um, and short my, my, and how dense my turf gets once I finish, once I really start cutting it. So for that reason, it's just not a, a great fit. Um, and, you know, in the event, in the event that some of this doesn't get past the canopy, which it's not, this is, again, this is like, it's, it's very, very fine. If you look at that, like, I mean, this is, so I can, I can show you how small this is to kind of show it on camera. That is the tip of a pen. And that is, uh, yeah, can get to focus. And that is Humic Max. So you see how much bigger the tip of the pen is than that than that prill. So this stuff is going to get past the canopy, get down to the soil where it can begin working, and just it's just you're you're comparing really, you're comparing two different things. You're comparing you're comparing a, a Volkswagen to a Porsche. That's the best way I can say it. They're just they're just they're not only from a standpoint of how the nitrogen is is released, and from the prill size, just overall the formulation and the product is just is just better in every way. The um. Uh, like again, like an example about humic max, this also contains uh, humic acid. So it's got like 8.9%, almost 9% um, humic acid in this, in addition to, um, you know, to, to the fertilizer, to the nitrogen and potassium. So it's just, you're just getting into a different, a different level of product when you go from something like a Scott's product, which again, is, is a, it's fine. It, for people that are just doing, that have like normal lawns and are not really, they're not real mowing. Um, they're not trying to do like shortcut turf. Uh, and they're not particularly picky about the consistency and color, then it's a good product. It, it's going to be just fine for that. But if you are really, really, it's really, you know, if you're just really picky about how you want your lawn to look and you want to have more control month to month, week to week over how the grass grows, and you actually want to end up putting less nitrogen in the lawn and still getting uh, like a great result, that's where the, the higher end fertilizers really shine versus the products that have a lot of nitrogen, like I have that big number, but really it just releases over time if you're lucky, if you're lucky. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. We'll, we'll, we can revisit it. But that's a good question. That's a, that's a, that's actually a good one. I don't know if I've had that one on the live stream, not recently anyway, but uh, that's, that's a good, good one. Great question, Dwayne. Okay. Next is Jay Johnson. It says, 
Hey, at Ron Henry, I ordered Turfplex and it arrived yesterday. However, the bottle was cut in transit and most of the fur leaked out. How can I get another bottle or do I need to buy another one? Sorry to hear that, Jay Johnson. That is not good. What you need to do is send me an email to um, uh, ron at golfcourselawn.com or shop at golfcourselawn.store. I'm going to get you a replacement. So email me here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. What I need for in that is I need uh, your order number. I need your name. I need your order number. Um, which I'll have. So actually, if I, once, once you email me with the pictures, I'll, I'll be able, I should be able to find it based on the email address you email me with. As long as the email that you're using to email me is the same one that you use to buy the product, I should be able to find you. Okay. So send me a picture of it showing me like, you know, Hey, yeah, look, this thing showed up. It's leaked out. It's made a big mess. The box is all like, you know, it's all covered in fertilizer. Um, sorry that, sorry to hear that it happens. The USPS is not necessarily always the best when it comes to handling products, but I will get you taken care of. We'll get it. We'll get another one out to you. Um, you don't need to buy another one. You absolutely don't need to buy another one. If it's, I mean, you paid for a gallon of fertilizer of, uh, and it, you need to get a gallon of fertilizer, right? So if it gets damaged in transit, uh, we'll make sure you get taken care of. So again, just email me and uh, send me a picture of it and we'll get another one out to you uh, early next week. Appreciate the feedback, man. Sorry, and again, sorry to, that you're dealing with that and it, it happens, but again, I'll, I'll do my best to, uh, to make it right for you. Next up is Jeremy White, Mr. Jiu Jitsu. He says, good day, big bro. Hope all is well. Just got back from rolling. Oh, he says, real, real mower is in the shop getting ready for the season. Looking forward to another lawn year award. Let's go. That's right. You did win. That's right. I forgot about that, Jeremy. So Jeremy, what he's talking about is he got, um, he, in his neighborhood, he got like lawn of the year. So he's like, you know, trying to, trying to like make it two years running. I, I you know, confidence is high, Jeremy. If you keep the same program you did, you did last year as you do this year, and you know, you've, you've learned more, you know, you've gotten better in the process, kind of like you're rolling with your jujitsu, right? The more you roll, the more, you know, you kind of become cerebral. You know, before when you first started rolling, you had to think, okay, I got to move here. Oh, he's trying to arm bar me. Oh, I'm getting guillot guillotine. Like before that just used to happen when you're a white belt, when you're just the Mookie getting tapped all the time. And now you can kind of feel it and recognize when it's going to happen. And you just kind of instinctively move away from that kind of danger. Same thing with your grass. Like you've you got an entire season under your belt where you've created an awesome looking lawn. So it's only going to get better this year. It's only going to get better. I uh, I completely expect nothing less but lawn of the year, two years running. So keep keep it up, man. Keep going. Okay, next up is Dwizzle. He says, Ron, just bought a used reel mower last season. We'll clap it up. And he says, but I'm in the market for a rotary mower, mainly for scalping. Any recommendations for one with a low height of cut uh, settings? Um, yeah, so, so you bought a, a, a used reel mower, market for a rotary mower, mainly for scalping. Uh, that's a good question. I don't, I don't actually own a rotary mower, so I, I can't tell you. The Hondas, the, I, I would say anything from Honda or Toro are, is going to go is going to go fairly low. Uh, just check the, the brochures, like the Honda... Like, uh, what's their nice mower? The HRX, like their HR series, the HRX mower um, will get lower. Um, but if again, man, if you're going to buy a mower just for scalping, I don't know if I'd spend a ton of money on it. You know what I mean? Like the, like the, a good rotary mower will set you back, you know, $600, five, $600, like a, a qual, a really nice one. And if you're only going to use it for a scalping, it's kind of, you know, I don't know if I want to have that much money tied up in a mower that's only going to get used, you know, a couple times per season. So um, maybe look for a cheaper one, go to, um, you know, big box store and see what they've got on sale that you can just look on the brochure and see what the cutting heights are and just roll with that. Since you, again, I'm assuming you said all you're using it for is scalping. And if you can actually cut with it, then get a good mower, get like a good high quality, uh, rotary. But, uh, but if your thing is just for scalping, just get something cheap. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend, um, uh, a ton of money on that. You know, on the subject of real mowers, I don't think heartfelt fashion is in the house yet, but I want to show you guys a video. I promise I might show them on the live stream. So you have to watch it after the fact. He went out and got uh, an Alet. He picked up an Alet today. And I promised him I would show his video on the live stream. So I want to show you guys a little 15 second video. You want to talk about somebody that just got a mower and is absolutely beside themselves with joy on, uh, on getting a new piece of equipment. So I think we've all been here at some point, but this is his short video uh, letting me know that he just got his, uh, his real mower. So check this out. Hopefully this plays, maybe it'll work. Uh, I apologize at the very beginning of the video, there's a dog barking, which you can see hit the excitement uh, of his new Alet. Hey everybody, this is Granger, and I am here at, at Alet USA in Aiken, South Carolina. I'm picking up my very first real mower. It is a Alet Kensington 20 inch. And I'm standing here with Alet's USA representative, Mr. Rowland. 
Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks very much for the business. Thank I'm really you. hoping you're going to enjoy the machine, especially the scarified cartridge. That's going to be the important one to get started with, but I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love the machine. I love your products. Thank you for coming out. I'm glad to be here. And I'm looking forward to working on this machine, y'all. Wait for this year with my grass. <laughs> See, so that's you guys. Yeah, so he's uh, he, so Granger is super happy, super excited about getting a new mower. I, I promised I would show his video of him getting his new mower on the live stream. The only thing that I'm, I'm not gonna be like picky, the only thing that would have made it better if you'd actually had shown us a picture of the mower. Now, I grant, I grant, what I imagine happened is it's probably still in the crate, so you don't want to get it out just to film it. But at some point, we're gonna have to, you can, you have to show us a picture, man. You know, we gotta, you know, I know you went up there. You saw Roland, so I mean, that was, yeah, we believe you, but we want to see the equipment. You got to see the hardware. So at some point, you owe us a picture of the new mower. Congrats again, sir. I told you I would uh, I would show it on the on the live stream, man of my words. So if you watch later, you get to see it. Very cool. All right, next up is No Name. He says, hey, Ron, what rate did you throw down Carbon Pro G in the past? The soil difference uh, is amazing from that screen grab. I am just trying to do the math on how much you put down in a year. A lot, <laughs> a lot. Like uh, now, I am. I'm on with essential with the Carbon Pro G. I was going super heavy, just like I was doing with 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 Essential G. Now I'm doing three. I'm doing four bags, four sometimes five bags um, per month in an application. So I'll do it like one time a month, four to five bags, and that's that's it for my lawn. Uh, there was a time though, man, when I was literally I would do like four bags on just the back lawn. So the thing with with um, granular carbon. Um, and Carbon Pro G and also Essential G is that you just really, you can't go too heavy with it. I mean, you're, most people are limited by their budget as far as how much they put down. And again, looking at, if you don't, you don't believe me, I say, hey, it makes, it makes the soil healthier. It produces healthier grass. Like you guys look at my lawn, I say, hey, you know, healthy, yeah, like my mantra, I'm like, test your, test your soil, like, you know, get a soil test because that's going to tell you what to put in the, in the lawn because healthy soil equals healthy grass. Like healthy grass is just a byproduct. And if you look here, again, at the, um, this this is out of a video that was from last year where when I was having a sprinkler head replaced, uh, if I can find it, there it is. Yep, I was having a sprinkler head replaced. And this is Austin. So if you guys watch my video on getting a sprinkler heads replaced, this is actually the gentleman that was out here doing it. And he, he dug up a section of the lawn or a small cone, like a donut to pull out. And I, I said, you know, this is a great opportunity to take a picture and, and shoot some video of showing the difference between of that, that carbon can make in your lawn. So you can see here, that's like that light area. That's the original lawn, um, the original soil, you know, what, what it looked like. And you can see how the soil profile, how much darker and richer that is. Also, look at that root action. I mean, you can see his hands, the size of his hands and the root, there's roots coming out all the way down here. So that's a good... I don't know, eight, 10 inches, 10 inches, maybe a little more of roots, you know? So, so it's no, you know, it's no, um, it's no surprise that the lawn looks the way it does. And it, and it, it does, it just, it just, you know, it, it's resistant to disease and just overall it performs very, very well um, due to the, all the treatments and, and all the investments I've made over the years in improving the soil quality. So you know, carbon is one of those things. It's not like fertilizer. Like you put essential G down on your lawn um, it's not going to make it turn like it's not going to make it turn magically green like fertilizer will. But as far as something you can do over time regularly, that is going to make a big difference in the lawn. Like in other words, your normal for your lawn for for the for the quality of your soil, and then by extension, your grass is going to go higher. Like your new, your baseline is going to get higher. You see what I mean? So it's you know I can't pictures is a thousand words. You guys saw what my soil looks like. That's not photoshopped. I didn't make that up. That's literally what the soil looks like. I mean, if you watch the video of him um, replacing a sprinkler head, you can see when he actually pulls it out and flips it over, you can you can see even near the patio, it all looks that way because the entire lawns had, uh, you know, plenty and plenty of uh, of carbon and compost over the over the years. So yeah, man, great stuff. Uh, as much as your budget will permit, that is, that is the answer to that question, no name. All right, next up is Jim, he says, Love spending Friday evenings watching the show, waiting for better weather here in Massachusetts. Yeah, man, I guess I shouldn't complain, right? We're complaining about two days of cold weather here in Georgia. In Mass, I'm sure it's way colder. So I, I need to, you know, I need to behave and just, you know, be happy that we're only getting two days of, um, of cold weather smackdown. Cold weather smackdown. All right, next up is Amado Martinez. He says, I have two female dogs and when they urinate, the grass burns. Do you have any products to help break the enzymes down and help keep the grass green and healthy? 
Yeah, um, no, not really, um, Amato. So here's the thing, you know, a lot of people blame female dogs saying, oh, you know, female dogs burn grass and, you know, male dogs don't. That's actually really not true. It's really because female dogs, like the, they, when they urinate, it tends to be concentrated in one spot, like in a, in a centralized, in a small area. That's why it tends to burn the grass more than when, if you have a, a boy dog, when he's peeing, you know, when he, most of the time they'll like, they pee a piece of fence or a tree. They tend, they don't, they don't tend to squat down and pee like all their pee in like one spot in the lawn, which tends to cause the, uh, the, the burning problem. So it's not really a female dog thing. It's really a, it's a dog, it's a dog thing. It's an excess nitrogen thing. As far as enzymes to help break it down or things to help recover from it, I don't have anything for you on that. I've heard there are, you can do some things to help you know, change the dog's diet that can that can help the problem some. The best thing I could tell you, and this is what Alex has done, is simply train your dog to pee in one area. Like like, and that might might be hard at this point because they they may have already you know marked the entire lawn. The entire lawn is their domain. But if you can can train them to have like one sacrificial area, like a corner of the lawn where they go, that's going to be your best bet for overall maintaining a nice looking lawn and not always having burn spots. You can fix them. I mean, you can you can apply. Um, you know, you can you can rake out the dead grass. You can apply something like carbonized PM, which is a very very rich um, or, organic soil. It's like a, it's like half compost, half um, biochar. Very very rich stuff. It's actually like you actually show you guys. I'm not sure if I can show you pictures of, of the difference in color. Can I do that? I think so. Um, I'm not sure if it'll show up in here. Yeah. So all my lawn. If you look at this video, you see the dark spot there right now, and over the two dark spots to your left, and the dark spot that's in the lawn right there. Um, uh, I don't know, right now it's the left part of the lawn right there. Like that is carbonized PN. So that shows you how much darker the product is. It's, it's incredibly dark. So that, as far as something you can use to help the lawn recover, the grass recover a little bit faster, that's something you can do. But the best way to avoid the damage is just to not have the dog urinate in all over the place. Like find a, a certain spot, train them to use that spot. And then that's, uh, that's gonna be your best bet for keeping the lawn, most of the lawn looking nice. So sorry to have a better answer for you. Um, you might do some research and to see if there's some things you can do as far as changing their diet, but I've not, I've not seen any of that stuff really work. The best thing is just to keep them, like give them a sacrificial a spot, an area that's their area to, uh, to go do their business. So sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but that is uh, what I have seen tends to work well uh, for most people. Okay, next is Eric B says, Ron, on the POA comment, I'm already on a split pre-emergent. I'm already on a split pre-emergent until fall to prevent the POA next year. I have to endure it, uh, let it die until the summer or just stay hot from this schizophrenic weather. It will die out during the summer months, man. So, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat it too much. POA looks ugly uh, because it's, especially a Bermuda grass, it looks ugly because it's the only thing that's green in the lawn, right? If you have cool season grass, not so much. It doesn't really matter because it's all, most of it tends to be green somewhat or different shades of green. Um, but um, but yeah, at this point, if you already have it, just, just uh, we could either, you can take care of it using some of the products I, I mentioned to you. That's a more expensive route to go. Um, or you can just wait and until summertime. Or you can, if it's not too much, you can get out there and just physically remove it. That's, that's another option as well too. But it depends on how much, uh, how much POA you've got in your lawn. Okay, Troy Ridley is here. He says, uh, 25, Ron, it's 26 degrees tonight, 30 degrees in Central Texas. When is the best time to start irrigation schedules? Currently waiting to receive soil test results. Uh, no, not right now. <laughs> not right now. Uh, irrigation, really, uh, Troy, you know, if Texas weather is anything like Georgia weather, even when it stops being super cold, you're going to get more rain in the springtime. So really, you know, you really shouldn't have to run irrigation unless you're watering something in until... April, mid-April, mid to late April, you know, depends on what the weather does. But mo in most parts of um, the Southeast United States, uh, you know, the springtime, you tend to get enough rain, enough moisture just from, from rainfall that you don't need to run re irrigation regularly. Again, if you're putting a FERT down, yes. A granular fertilizer, absolutely. Run your irrigation to water it in. But as far as like getting on a regular schedule where, you know, here we are in like early March and twice a week you're out like watering the lawn, uh, that's, that would be premature. I really wouldn't do that. And it more than likely would, could cause more problems, uh, than it helps. Great question. And good job of getting the soil test done. Let me know when you, once you get your results in. Next up is Lois H. She says, I helped a neighbor with his weeds this last weekend with certainty and Celsius combination. I have some of the solution left over. How soon should it be used up? I got him to put the pre-emergent out. I would use it up sooner than later. I, you know, that's a good question. I haven't looked at the label to see how long you can leave that laying around Lois. 
I tend to to mix up and use what I tend to mix as much as I intend to use. I don't tend to leave like uh, stuff in the sprayer, especially uh, herbicides. Um, I haven't checked the label to see, but I, I would I would say sooner than later. Do not let it. Don't let a bunch of time go by. You know, I wouldn't let several weeks go by with it just sitting in the in the sprayer. I would I would try and use it up and get rid of it uh, sooner than uh, uh, than later. Mainly also too because you don't want to, to take any chance of it also forming. Um, if it getting hard and forming deposits, you know, within the tank and, you know, you just don't want to take a chance with that as well too. That's another issue with leaving uh, those types of chemicals in the sprayer and the pump and lines and that kind of thing. So just, it's best to you to mix what you're going to use, use it. And then uh, I'm a, I'm a big believer in rinsing out the sprayer after you're done. Some people don't do that. Uh, they just think you can just cycle through, which is true. If you're using your sprayer often enough, you can just continually just put the new product in and cycle through it. But I'm just, you know, I'm a nerd and I just, I just want it to be clean. So I, uh, I clean it out after every use. Hope that helps. Good job in helping your neighbor out with their weeds in their lawn though. Next up is Todd's Real Lawn. He says, I was talking to golf course guys in my area and not only do they speak highly of getting a soil test once, at least once every three years, they also said to do a water test. Have you ever had to do that? I've never tested water, um, Todd. That's a good, that's a good point. I've never actually done that. Um, uh, you know, I've, it's a, it's something I, I guess I could look into doing. But I've never actually tested uh, the water um, that's coming out of my irrigation system to see, if, you know, if, if there's anything up with it. I mean, I don't. I'm trying to think, what would I do if it were, you know, I mean, it's it's city water, so it's treated, so it's like um, I don't know that it, it's it's. I'm sure the pH is going to be within within parameters that are are obviously safe for human consumption and also um, probably also fine for uh, for grass. So. I don't even know what you would really be able to do to easily adjust it if it weren't. I guess you could put some kind of system in place in line between the city water and your irrigation system, but I've never heard of anyone anyone really doing that. I appreciate you hitting the like button, man. Thank you, Todd. That's a good point. On this point, we are like, you know, we're, what are we, two and a half hours in, guys? So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button ever so gently, it doesn't cost you guys anything. It's a, it's a, it's a small thing to do to touch that like button. Free way to support the channel. You don't have to buy anything to do it, and I'd really appreciate it. Okay, next, uh, Tyler is also, this is a good point, this is another uh, good good thing as well. Tyler says, um, Tyler M says, Amato, I've noticed that more watering, as long as healthy levels, will do a lot to dilute the urine. Yeah, so that's a good point as well too, what Tyler was raising. If you see where they just urinated, so when they went out in the lawn, if you saw where they went, if you can get out there with a hose or a you know, bucket of water and like and literally douse that area with water so you've, you've, um, you've diluted it, that will help prevent burning. But I mean, I don't know how often you are. I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to get out there and do that, like you're going to watch where the dog goes and then follow it up with either a garden hose or a bucket of water, then it's just as easy to like follow them or make them go over to one spot and have them just pee in that one area versus going through the trouble of like, you know, waiting there with a garden hose till they're done and watering the area that they just, uh, just urinated in. So either way it can work, but I would lean more towards the sacrificial part of the lawn to, uh, to go with. Yeah, Dwayne is like, hey, Ron, sorry to hear about the bad weather. Going to be 70s and low 80s here in Southern California. Yeah, 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 whatever, <laughs> whatever. But um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll be there soon, man. We'll be there soon. But hey, you know what? In Georgia, we only have like four, four and a half dollar gasoline, almost five dollar gasoline. How much is gasoline in California right now? I'm just going to let that one, just let that one sink in for a little bit, a little bit longer while I find the next comment. All right. Uh, next up is Froggy Friday. He says, hey, Ron, have you uh, have a new home with a dirt backyard and plan on seeding Arden 15? What fertilizer do you recommend for new seed? Great question, Froggy. Uh, something with um, something with uh, with uh, uh, phosphorus, with a, like a higher, not a high phosphorus, but with, with, with a with a higher phosphorus amount than um, than what is used for normal feeding. So what um, I did, a good option is a product like Bloomplex. If you like if you like liquids, if you want to go the liquid route, we can go over here back to the golf course lawn store. We can go for a ride and go to the search. And in here, just type bloom. Like you want your grass to bloom, right? To grow. And what's going to come up is bloomplex. And what you're going to find is the formulation is a 16, is an 8165. That middle number, the 16, is for phosphorus, which is very good for promoting root growth, right? You know, nitrogen is on top. Um, um, uh, 
uh, phosphorus is down, and then potassium that stays all around. So up, down, all around. That's why you can remember um, what each of those numbers do um, does. So something like this, you know, you could apply this, uh, you know, you know, a few days, a week prior to your you doing your seeding project, um, and that that extra little kick of of, uh, of phosphorus is going to do well for helping the lawn to uh, helping the seeds to to establish and and the roots you know, roots to, to grow in nicely. So just, you know, something like that was what I would, would go with. You can also use something like that similar in a, uh, in a granular. So if you want to go granular, like a, like a, another one is like a, a simple starter for so something like this, right? We can go back over here. We can go to, uh, just fertilizers, lawn fert, and go to the very top one there, this triple 12, that's a good option too. So if you prefer, uh, you know, just a, a granular product. This is a good option in the sense that you've got a balanced fertilizer. It's got equal amounts of, of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And this also has a little bit of ni uh, micronutrient as well. So it's a complete, literally a complete uh, fertilizer product. So that's either that or the Bloomplex is what I would use for, um, you know, preparing a lawn for seeding, for establishing uh, new seed with R15. Congrats, man. Now let me know how that works out. The one thing I'd say is anything you can do to minimize shade in the area. You said it's a dirt backyard. If you, anything you do to minimize shade in the area, uh, that is gonna be good. Also, if you can, uh, not how big the area is, but if you can also get yourselves, you know, a, you know, two, three, four bags of Essential G and put that down as part of your seeding process, that's also gonna help the, the grass establish as well. So those are some options as well. A good fertilizer, some type of rich organic material. Um, I'm, I prefer to go with something like, again, like Essential G. You can use carbonized PN if it's a smaller area, but that you have to manually spread, right? It's more for top dressing uh, than, um, than like broadcast applications over the entire lawn, you know? So if you want something that you, that's easy to put down over the entire lawn, something like Essential G is a great option to use in conjunction with a seeding project. And then again, Bloomplex or the Triple 12 Starter Fert, Either of those will work well for what you're trying to do. All right. Uh, next up, and send me a picture, man. Once you get the R15 to grow in, send me a picture of how it looks. Next is Dalvin Larry. He says, hey, Ron, uh, with this storm coming across the southeast, will that play a part in your Liquid Fruit app next week from the, jo uh, go um, the Golf Course Lawn Academy calendar? Yeah, so um, the plan is still next weekend to start, assuming things, <laughs> assuming the weather holds, uh, Dalvin. Uh, I tell you what, you guys will know, because you're in the academy, you guys will know when I do it. Because I'll post to the Facebook group, I'll say, hey guys, it's go time, I'm going out with it. Um, so it'll be next, it'll be either this upcoming weekend, or worst case, the following weekend is when I will start. But more likely, it's going to be next weekend. So uh, so yeah, because really, this cold snap is only for today and tomorrow, and then we're going to start warming right back up. So... And the grass is beginning to green up. Again, you saw the front lawn, like this is the front lawn today. So it's starting to green up. You got that green fuzz coming in. You know, it's hungry. It wants it wants some of that goodness. And the back lawn, same thing. You know, green fuzz is coming through. And, uh, you know, if we in, in another week or so here, it should be looking really nice. I'll see how it looks, you know, closer to the end of next week. And based on that, we shall decide. But it'll be either next weekend or worst case scenario, the following weekend when I'll, I'll start based on what you guys are seeing in the uh, calendar. Next is Tom V. He says, I have a few areas that don't that receive a decent amount of shade. That's bad. Uh, the grass in these area looks dead and pulls up easily. Should I try to seed this in the spring or wait till the fall? Kentucky bluegrass in Chi Town. So Chi Town, so here's the thing. So um Kentucky bluegrass, kind of like Bermuda, needs sunlight. Now it's not as bad as Bermuda in the sense that you know Bermuda is like, you know, gimme more all the time. Like literally Bermuda, in my opinion, is is the most uh sunlight demanding of all of, of at least the grass types we have here in the US. Um, but KBG isn't too far behind. So the sh the issue you're seeing with the, with the Kentucky bluegrass not growing in nicely is due to more than likely the shade problem that you're dealing with and putting seed down, kind of like what I always, what I, I always say, right? If the existing grass is not growing well there, we need to fix that prior to doing like doing any like serious work, like doing sod or seed or anything along those lines. Now is the shade, you didn't say where the shade is from, but if the shade is from trees to where you can trim them back or thin out the canopy a bit, that will, and to get more sunlight down, you could do that and then try seeding if you wanted. Uh, but but I would not just, you know, blindly throw seed at that area in the springtime and without changing the conditions or trying to, you know, reduce the conditions that are negatively causing the, the 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 grass to be thin and expect a good result because it's just not going to happen. What will happen is the grass may germinate, 
it'll grow for a little while and then it's gonna go back to, it's gonna match exactly with what you're dealing with uh, right now. So you're gonna wanna do something about that shade problem, assuming you can. You know, if it's like the house that's causing it, then you know, you may have to, you know, extend, make a little flower bed there, or put like some mulch in that, in that section. But if it's a tree and you can thin it out, that's an, something to consider that will help the Kentucky bluegrass do a bit better. Cause it, it kind of like, much like Bermuda, it needs a fair amount of sunlight. It, you can't, you can't um, run KBG in a ton of shade and, and have it, have it perform well. Next is Gary Kellett Jr. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday, sneaking in <laughs> from my wife and family trip to Mexico, saying hello from Puerto Mo Mo uh, Morelos. Morelos. Uh, we gotta go, LOL, worried about my grass. No, I, I hear you, man. That, well, here's the thing. You're doing it at the right time of the year, Gary, because the grass is not growing super aggressively right now. Now, if you're doing this trip like in the middle of summer, eh, when you come back, you're gonna have a problem on your hands. You're gonna have, a, you're gonna have, a, you're gonna have some, something to deal with, but right now, if there's any time to neglect the ne neglect the lawn as far as mowing and just other practices, now is the time of year to do it. So enjoy your time there. I'm glad that you stuck away. Uh, don't get in trouble with wifey, you know, to where she won't let you come hang out with us anymore or anything like that. And uh, you know, you'll, there'll be plenty of time for the lawn once you get back. Travel safe, travel safe getting back and uh, hope you guys have a fabu time. All right, next up is uh, Tyler. He says, Poa, our annual and Triv will leave a bare spot in the lawn if the, the spot is in is dense with poa. Uh, there's a chemical you can use at Target's poa specifically to stop the new seeds from being able to germinate. So there you go. And I know Tyler mainly works on cool season lawns. So you know, kind of like like what I what I said earlier. If the area is not um, some type of a creeping grass like a, like a KBG or Bermuda, then yeah, you could end up with a bare spot in the lawn that you have to come back and uh, and fill later or do something about addressing later. So thanks for that, Tyler. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, Braden says, I'm in Birmingham, in Birmingham, Alabama. Thanks for, uh, for that, uh, Braden. And let's see what else we, uh, we have here as far as questions. All right, Shelby Amos says, what's up, Ron? I have a bunch of poa and crabgrass put blindside down last week, but didn't phase the stuff. <laughs> what else should I try? In Fort Worth, Texas, 68 degrees yesterday, 33 degrees today, and then back up to the 70s and 80s. Okay, so for uh, crabgrass, um, quinclorac, some kind of quinclorac is gonna be your best bet. That's gonna be a, that's gonna, that's a good option for getting rid of crabgrass. Now, have you put down, um, have you put down pre-emergences yet, Shelby? I mean, I know you can't just answer me right back now, but I'm just, I mean, I'm answer, I mean, the, if you've not done pre-emergences yet, you need to do that. And if you've not done it at all, you haven't, you have, you don't have a preference, uh, given that you're dealing with um, baby crabgrass or young crabgrass, consider using uh, dithiapyr. So there's there's two commonly used pre-emergence on home lawns. There's prodiamine and dithiapyr. Uh, dithiapyr has a bit of reach back action as far as being able to kill young crabgrass. So given that you're dealing with that in your lawn, uh, that is the one that I, I would um, I would opt for. We have that in a granular version at the golf course lawn store. So go check that out. Just go to the weed killer section. You'll see it in just actually two bags. You have a yellow bag or a purple bag. So you get two different options for that. But uh, but check that out, and um, and I would get that down. And then for crabgrass, uh, something like if you want to go heavy, like a heavy hitter, something like quinclorac will will do the trick. That will that will knock. That's very very effective against crabgrass, especially when, again, like anything else, when it's younger. If you let it get really big, which is, it, it shouldn't be because it's too early in the season, uh, that will um, that will take care of it. As far as poa, which I'm surprised you have crabgrass already. It seems a little bit early for crabgrass. Um, but as far, as far as poa, you can do a couple of things. You can wait until, just give it time, just wait for it to get warmer and just wait for it to die off when it gets hot, which is the cheapest option. Uh, or you could use something like uh, like certainty, uh, you could use negate, which although I'm not really a fan of that really for homeowners. Um, and those are the faster options. So certainty or negate are going to be faster for getting rid of POA. Uh, and then if you have more time, you could do something like image, but again, as slow acting as image is, and that we're already in mid March, you may as well just wait and just either dig it out or wait for it just to die off whenever temps get higher. But if you want to get rid of it quicker, uh, negate or something like certainty is what, um, I would go with use a surfactant with either of those. If you decide to use, um, uh, go with certainty or, or image, uh, or um, not image, certainty or negate. Use a uh, non-ionic surfactant along with it for the best for the best results. But you're so close to springtime, you may just wait. 
Okay, next up um, is, oh, I do, I remember you. Uh, next up is um, Azu, I'm, I'm guessing this, Azuka, so sugar. Azuka Ren 2, Azuka Ren 2. It says, when I met you at Home Depot the other day, I didn't you know you were the, the, the master at grass. Thanks for the advices. Love the channel and all your work. Okay, so this was, this was fun. This was fun. So here's um, what, what the story behind this. So I was at Home Depot. Um, I had a viewer that had a question about a Scott spreader as far as a setting uh, for it. Um, as far as a, a setting for, I think it was one, for one of the fungicides. Um, they're, uh, they're asking me about, about a setting that to, to use for it. So I went there to go look at it and just, and compare like the setting and look at the size of it compared to what my, um, my earthway is. So then I, I was, and that was in the fertilizer section. As you know, this is the fertilizer section. That's where they have the spreaders in Home Depot. And I saw this, this guy and he was there. He was first with him by himself, but also his wife and, and daughter were with him. And they were doing the fertilizer walk. They were doing the fertilizer puzzled walk. You know the walk I'm talking about where someone's walking down the aisle and they're kind of looking at the different products and they're kind of thinking like, there's like a sea of stuff here. Some of half of it's liquid, half of it's like comes in a bag and I have no idea. And I'm like, and he asked me, he's, he's, and he looked at me cause I was sitting there like, you know, taking a picture of something of the, of the, um, of the spreader setting. And he, he said, he actually just asked me a question. He said, what do you recommend for, for a, a, like a really good liquid fertilizer? I'm like, well, you could use this stuff here, but really I wouldn't recommend any of this stuff. I would use, <laughs> I gave him a link to, um, to, uh, to Turfplex. And I said, for something that's slow release, something like a, like the greens plus something like, like, like a, like a really good fertilizer option. So this is like a really, like really good fertilizer. These are okay. They'll work, but this is a better option. And, uh, it was cool. And I gave him, I told him about the channel and everything else. It's cool. It's cool to see that we went from that to now you're here in the live stream. So yeah, man, if I can help with anything, let me know. You know, I, I don't, we're not, I'm not that far away. So just, uh, you know, on any of the videos, uh, just leave a comment, or if you want to email me here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. That's my email address. If you have any questions, I will do my best to help out. So I appreciate you. It's always always cool to put a face with like a live stream person now. So it's kind of cool. All right. Next up uh, with, um, yeah, so Tyler's talking about POA question. So he's going to have to DM someone. And the next up is UC Bedoy at 25. Says, is liquid aeration a good option for poor draining ground. I keep hearing slash reading mixed opinions. Is it a good idea? Should I do that before applying pre-emergent? Uh, in my opinion, the best way to fix a poor draining area of your lawn is a couple of things you can do. Two things you can do. Thing one is you can, if it's a serious problem, you're gonna have to install some kind of actual drainage, like a French drain, or a catch basin or something to get the water away from the surface. That's thing one, that's option one. The second option is to do a, a core aeration, so hollow tine aeration. So if your soil is compacted where water just kind of sits on the surface for a while, it, just, it takes a long time to drain, you, using a core aerator, like one of those machines that look like you're riding a rodeo when you're on it, you know, you're on, like riding the bull when you're on a, on a, on a core aerator, uh, that is a good option for um, that can also help improve drainage as well. Really a baller option is to do a core aeration along with top dressing and that really helps drainage. But um, as far as just using a liquid aeration product and that's substantially improving drain drainage, um, in my opinion, no. In my opinion, no. Like core aeration is, or the liquid aeration products are good for a few things. Like they're great for, um, like a lot of them have like um, sugars in them and and, uh, and molasses and other, and other um, stimulants, biostimulants that help improve um, microbial activity that helps to break down thatch layers. There is a lot of, there's a lot of um, evidence that that does work. That is a thing. So I would not say liquid aeration or, or core aeration. It's not an either or thing. The two of them work together. They work in concert together. So if I had a, a lawn that was highly compacted, I would absolutely, and I couldn't fix it, um, or I should say this, it wasn't the point where I needed to do any kind of major drainage, like install like a French drain or a catch basin. In that situation, I would start with, with a, a core aerator, like do a really good core aeration of the, of the lawn. And then if you also want to follow up with a liquid aeration product as well, that is not really going to materially improve the drainage, but it is going to help. Um, it's going to help if there's any thatch there. It's going to help break that down over time. It's going to just put some good food into the soil to help the, the, um, the microbes to do their thing. Um, but the two are the two are different. The two, I always say it this way, right? If liquid aeration was that effective, was was, and again, I'm not throwing shade at it because like I like I use a liquid aeration product. I mean, technically, if you look at something like NutriKelp, right, or, or even like the um, the BioSpectrum, which is like a, a microbial package, and this which contains like a kelp um, a kelp product, uh, 
you know, there's a ton of value in these, a ton of value in the health of the soil, ton of value in what it does for the for the turf. But it's but it's but to say that it is this, it is equivalent to hollow tine aeration that's just simply, in my opinion, not true. If it were true, you'd see golf courses doing it. You'd see professional turf fields doing it. Like if they could get away from not having to use all this heavy equipment and running core aerators, heavy aerators over like greens and uh, tee boxes and things like that to help break up compaction and just promote healthier turf, and they could just spray a liquid and it would get do exactly the same thing, they absolutely would do it. They'd absolutely do it because it'd be way easier, right? They don't have no, there's no maintenance costs associated with it. It's just it's way, way simpler. So I would not look at this in either or. They, the two work in concert together, do your core aeration. And then if you want to follow up with a liquid aeration product, that's going to be fine too. But I would not, I would not look at core at liquid aeration as, as a way to uh, replace hollow tine aeration. I mean, people are going to disagree with me on that. Um, but I, 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 um, I, I do not believe I am wrong on this one. I am wrong on, on some things, but this was, this is one that I, I feel fairly strongly about. All right, next up is uh, Timothy Smith. He says, hey, Ron and everyone joined a bit late. Yeah, we noticed, man, we were, we were holding up the show. Everyone was about to leave, but at least you came in now. So we, we can, the show can continue, Timothy. He says, uh, I'm in Georgia and my lawn Bermuda front and zoysia back are greener than any lawn I've seen in my area. Will the coal impact the color and growth significantly? Will it impact it a little bit over the next week or so? Probably a little bit, but not, not substantially. I mean, I'll put it to you this way you are already ahead of the game. So if all the lawns in your neighborhood are here, your lawn is already here as far as as far as progression in greening up, right? Whenever the cold hits, like it doesn't just affect your lawn, it affects all the lawns. So everybody's lawn is gonna go down a notch. So your lawn is still gonna be greener than the other lawns in the neighborhood. So if, if that's what you're after, I guess if you're worried about your ability to dominate the neighborhood, Timothy, I think you're safe, you're gonna be good. But you know, given that we're only having a couple of days of, of cold weather, you might not see a difference. And if you do, it's going to be relatively mild. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it too much. You're, you're still going to be ahead of the game given uh, that you're, you know, you've already got a head start on the rest of the neighborhood. So nothing, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then um, uh, Tyler M says, as long as we, as long as the grass is green and tillering, you can apply pre-emergent depending on where you live. A lot of spring ceilings won't take with cool season grasses. And he says, that you strike me more as a uh, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy and not a karate guy. No, well, I mean, I, I do roll a little bit. Um, we used, used to, I used to roll more. Like our school used to have a uh, jiu-jitsu program, uh, but you know they 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 stopped that with um, with COVID and everything. And you know one day they might start it up again. But um, but yeah. So no, I'm, I am very much a karate guy. Like we for us for us like you know the instructor always say that, and we also also tell students. If a fight ends up on the ground and you and you stay there for any period of time, you've already messed up, right? Like you shouldn't, like you know, because here's the thing, and I'm not going to go into a big thing about you know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like and and you know martial arts, different styles, which is better, and what this kind of thing, like um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or, or any kind of wrestling um, martial art has a lot of benefits. Like when you're on the ground, you're able to control someone. You're also able to control someone without like um, like getting an assault charge. Like if I fight somebody, if we get in a fight. Like something's gonna get broken, or someone's gonna, or an eye's gonna get gouged. Like either way, I'm walking away probably out of in handcuffs, right? With with um jujitsu, you're able to submit or to control a person without necessarily doing um uh, you know injury to them in that case. The 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 problem where it falls apart is when you're on the ground, like when you're rolling at the studio, you're rolling at your you know your wherever you are, like it's just you and another person. But whenever you're on the ground in a real fight, like if their buddy, it has buddies around, like they're going to be curb stomping you or throwing things at you. So you don't like fighting on the ground is only good in um, in controlled scenarios. Like you don't want to be on the ground fighting any longer than you have to, if that makes sense. So I, I think you should learn a bit of both, like have definitely some stand up, be a good striker and have uh, definitely a ground game as well. So you can you can get back up sooner and give you some other tools for for neutralizing a threat that doesn't involve like, you know, like, more substantial injury, but as far as saying that you know I'm going to roll around on the ground and and in a real scenario, um, it's it would not work that way in real life. But really, for the most part, as a martial artist, if you if you're getting into a fight um, with out in public, you probably messed up. You probably you probably you know you, you were somewhere where you probably shouldn't have been, or you're in a scenario where you sh you really shouldn't have been. So you know, sort of you know something crazy happening. For the most part, martial artists shouldn't should be out shouldn't be out getting into fights with people um, at all. All right, next up is Botros Marzuk. He says, uh, hey, Ron, hope all is well. How do I know what type of Bermuda I have? 
Uh, it's a tough question, um, Botro. So if your lawn was was sodded in the last couple of years, so like in the last say five years or probably the last ten years, five to ten years, more than and you're in Georgia, more than likely it's a Tiffway. It's a Tiffway 419. Uh, that is the most common sod that is installed uh, by builders whenever they do uh, new properties. Um, and what you can do is if you um, if you were the first person in your house and you have access to the builder. You can also ask them, hey, you know, who are you, whoever you guys contracted um, to, uh, out to do the sod work, because they don't do it themselves. They always contract that out to someone else. If you can find out who that is and ask them, they can tell you exactly what kind of sod they installed. Or you can ask another grass professional, like, like someone in the area, if they know that you can compare your grass to someone else's grass, if you know what their grass is. But more than likely, it's a it's a it's it's more than likely going to be Tiffway um, or Tiff Tough. Like anything outside of those you more than likely had to pay to have it install. Like you have Celebration or any of the other, the little more, the more exotic Bermudas, like you, you would have had to, you know, there would have been money in, involved in doing uh, doing one of those. So it's more than likely a, a either Tiffway 419 or a Tiff Tough, if I had to guess. Let me get down here and grab some Super Chats. I am lacking. Let me get in here. So we got one from... I got David, but I think I saw another one here. One from Tra well, one one from Eric again. Leon, thank you again, uh, Eric. He says, "Hey, uh, Ron, just came home to a bunch of brown patches in celebration sod in December. Had webworm uh, fungus uh, in the fall. That's not good. Applying um, amida, amida uh, bifenthrin and heritage G to no avail. Yeah, that stinks, man." I'm sorry to, sorry to hear that you're dealing, dealing with that. Um, so here's the thing. How, how about this? I, I know it's going to cost more, but just but just try it my way just this one time this season. I know you want to use like your the combination of like these different um, insecticides like bifen and other and other other products. Try a Celeprin this season. Like get it, go out and get a bag, get a bag or a liquid. We have it in both options. Go to the Gulf Force Lawn Store, get one of them, buy a get a bag of it and 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 just try it, just see. And I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that, you know, webworms, because especially a celeprin, like any kind of um, any kind of turf caterpillars, anything, those, those types of, um, of, of lawn damaging insects, it, it'll take care of those. There's not gonna be an issue in your lawn. The only thing I might say as far as fungus, I'm not sure what kind of fungus you had. So consider perhaps, um, Consider perhaps like something like like Headway, or if you're a person that sprays your fungicides, uh, in you know Heritage is uh, Zoxia strobin. So get yourself some propiconazole as well, and and add that into whenever you do your fungicides. You know most people tend to do them in uh, in the May time frame, unless they've had you know previous issues. So if you you've already got a bunch of fungicides, or you tend to spray them, or you want to you know you have your system, you know get your hands on some on some uh, propiconazole. Uh, to to complement the azoxystrobin that's in headway and see if that helps as far as keeping uh, keeping the the fungus issues at bay. Again, you can also just go with something like headway, which has both of them has both the azoxystrobin and propiconazole. That's that's an option as well too. But it sounds like you're someone that has you know some options or has some ideas around what you like to use. The only thing I would say is you know just try it my way just this one time this year and get a celeprin. And I, I, again, I think you can be pleasantly surprised as far as, far as uh, lack of issues with insect damage in your lawn. Next up is Travis, his super chat. Let me get that one really quick. Super chat for CF. He says, is PGF complete good to put down before you lay new Bermuda grass in a new construction home? Homeowner doesn't want fresh uh, sod, fresh, uh, wait, that's not, that's not Travis. Hang on. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not Travis. I'm looking at G business. Hang on. I I'll come back to that. I'll come back to your question on uh, PGF. Um, he says, uh, uh, thanks for the for the great content, sir. Did you decide to level this year? If so, what month are you plan to level? I probably will, Travis. It's probably going to be Aprilish some time frame, late April, early May, depending on weather, something like that. Mm -hmm. I probably will level. I'm trying to talk Alex into it too. We'll see. Uh, and thanks for the super chat. Appreciate the support, sir. And then the question from G Business while I roll back up and find where I was is PGF complete a good one to put down before you lay new Bermuda sod? I've never used it, so I can't really say. I have no reason to think that it would not work well. Um, one thing I can say outside of fertilizer, uh, a product that will um, help with new sod as far as helping the, the, the sod to root in and establish faster is some kind of carbon product. So 
in if you know you're talking to me, I'm gonna tell you get essential G. Like that's what I would go with. But if you can get your hands on any kind of granular carbon product, that's gonna do a lot for that's gonna do a lot for helping the the, the new sod establish faster for the lawn to, to to come in to come in faster. So uh, with P, well, uh, with a PGF product, you're talking about work as far as a fertilizer, sure. But if you're especially if you're dealing with a brand new construction where um, so they don't want, uh, they don't, they don't want any fresh soil or anything put down. He just wants to lay the side. Yeah. Well, okay. And that, in that case, uh, whatever fertilizer of choice you want to go with is what you should go with. So, um, I've never used it to know for sure, but I have no reason to think that it would not work well, uh, G business. Okay. Uh, next up is, uh, where did I find it? Yep. Next up is, um, no name. Actually, no. Next up is um, Timothy Smith again. He says, based on my lawn already greening up, would it be safe to throw down some triple 12 in a week or so? Phosphorate, phosphorus levels are low. Any other options I should consider? Uh, sure. So if you want to go with a granular, the triple 12 is a good option, assuming your lawn's already greening up, uh, Timothy. So you've got like the green fuzz, like it's there's, you know, there's more green than brown coming in. You want to go with that? Sure. Another option is something like Bloomplex. Like if you want to go with the liquid route, that's uh, that's got some phos uh, phosphorus in it. So like if that's an eight, what is it? An eight sixteen five? You know, I keep looking here, but I've actually got it right here. I got a bottle of it right here. So like that, this product, eight sixteen five. You can get that at the golf course lawn store. We have that as well. So if you want a liquid Bloomplex, if you want a granular, the triple twelve, uh, either of those should work well for what you are uh, what you're trying to do. Okay, next up, no name is saying, any recommendations on boots while applying liquid applications? I've noticed your footwear, especially in the pre-emergent videos, I want to get that PPE right. Yeah, man, just go to, I just went to Home Depot. Just go to Home Depot and get yourself a set of uh, inexpensive boots or not that expensive. You know, like, I think if you spent, you spent 25 or 30 bucks, you probably spent too much. So like 30 bucks is you can get like a, you know, decent set of rubber boots. And uh, I wear those mainly because I don't want to get the stuff on my shoes. It's not because it's particularly toxic, especially the fertilizers and the biostimulants, they're not, they're not toxic. They're not going to like, you know, I don't worry about them getting on my skin, but it's just a matter of fact that I don't want my shoes to get stained. You know what I mean? So that's why for liquids, I've just gone to use using those rubber boots because I can spray those. I can spray all over the place. They can get all over the product can get all over those. I can rinse them off and then my shoes stay clean. So that's the reasoning uh, for that. You can also get them on Amazon if you want to, but look, some of the big box stores will, will, uh, will likely have them as well. No name. So hopefully uh, that uh, that helps. That helps. Let's see. Next up is Alan. He says I had a severe case of moles digging around my lawn last year. That <laughs> that counts as aerating my lawn, right? Uh, yeah, I guess it's one way of looking at it. That definitely counts as an aeration. I mean, it's probably an uneven aeration, and the results are a bit uglier than you want. But yeah, I'll go with that. It counts as an aeration. It counts as an aeration. And then next up, and then Tyler says, give me a link and I'll link the boots I use every day at work for spraying chemicals. So there you go. Tyler's coming to the rescue as far as an option for uh, for boots. So uh, check that out. Uh, no name. Next up is Zach uh, Salinger, I think is correct. He says, hey, Ron, I'm in, oh, nice fish, man. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they are forecasting lows the next couple of nights in uh, 21 and 30. I scout my lawn a week ago. Will this cold air damage my lawn? Already some green showing. Highly unlikely, uh, Zach. It's only gonna be for a couple of days. Uh, your lawn's gonna be just fine. If it was greening up, it might slow down for a little while, but then it will pick right back up as soon as temperatures get warmer again. Nothing to worry about. No worries at all. I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat it. I'm right there with you, man. I'm, I'm ready for spring to, to be here, but uh, you know, Mother Nature always wins. Mother Nature always wins. All right, next up is Michael uh, Kuhn. He says, hey man, I think you're awesome and appreciate all your hard work and dedication. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate that. He says, I was going to order some Essential G. Is this product still worth it in a lawn that's already thriving? Yes, yes, yes it is. It is. It's um, it's gonna allow, in addition to a lawn that's already doing well, it's still gonna allow you, it's gonna allow you to make better use or get more out of your fertilizer apps. Now, if your lawn's already looking great and you're happy with it, and you don't want to put any down, that's fine too, but it's it's not gonna, there's not gonna be any negative to applying it to lawn, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I would. I mean, my lawn looks, my lawn looks, I think, I think pretty good, and I still use it monthly. You know what I mean? I mean, Carbon Pro G, I mean, you gotta remember, Carbon Pro G, you guys saw how much of that stuff I used, and I, I mean, I wasn't selling it. I wasn't, I didn't make a penny off of it. I was paying for it the same way you guys were, and I still use tons of it. 
because I believe in it because it makes a it makes a, a big difference in the lawn. It makes a big difference in the way the lawn looks, you know? So uh, you don't have to, but it's one of those things that if you're happy with the way your lawn's looking and the program you're using is producing the result that you want, stick with it. Stick with it. But yes, I would incorporate some kind of granular carbon. I like Essential G, uh, but uh, you can decide on which uh, which one you want to go with, Michael. But I, I definitely appreciate the kind words and then, and let me know what you decide to what you decide to do either way. Next up is P. Lee. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Happy Friday, P. Lee. It's a little bit less happy because of all this cold weather, but hey, we're here. He says, do you ship all your products to the Northeast? Yeah, yeah. If they are labeled for that state, so like a, a good example, like a Celeprin cannot be sold in New York. I think only you have to be a licensed applicator to get a Celeprin in um, in New York. Actually, it says it all over the label right here. Let me see. It says, uh, yeah, not for sale or distribution in Nassau, Suffolk, Kings, New York, so pretty much not the entire state of New York. Can't can't use this. Can't a seller print is not for sale in um uh, in in New York. But if the product is labeled for use, meaning it's it, we can actually sell it there, yeah, we ship everywhere in the um, continental United States. Do not ship to Hawaii or Alaska. Pretty much no, nowhere outside the continental United States. There's, there's that. Um, for some of the granular products, if you are in California, if you're in Arizona, California, Washington, or Oregon, because of the because of how far you are from where we are, um, there is a small surcharge for shipping granular uh, shipping products out there. Um, it's purely shipping. Like I'm not making any more money off of that. It's literally just to pay for the shipping. Like a lot of what you, what you guys are paying online is the cost of uh, of shipping these products. So if you're in the Northeast, you're not going to pay extra for anything. Literally everything. If you can put it in your cart and check out with it. We ship it there. So if you're in the Northeast United States, yeah, shouldn't be shouldn't be any issue other than certain um, in certain um, um, of the sides, so certain insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides. There might be some limitations around that, but all the other products, they all they all go everywhere. All right, next is Erna Joe says, "How often should the lawn be treated for Bermuda grass?" Uh, I'm located in Arkansas. Is it reasonable to pay two hundred fifty dollars for treatments each month for almost two acres at two locations? Ah. Uh, how often should lawn be treated for Bermuda grass? It depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're doing and 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 like how how uh, I guess how hardcore you are and what you want to get out of it. Uh, two fifty uh, for a month for two acres. Yeah, I mean that's that's I mean that's about right. I mean I'd say because you figure two. I mean if you're you're paying a service for that Erna, I mean two acres is approximately ninety thousand square feet thereabouts. It's a little bit less than ninety thousand. Well, a little bit less. Yeah, closer to eighty. Closer to 88,000 square feet, but thereabouts. It's, we'll call it 90,000 square feet. So you're talking about almost 90,000 square feet, which takes uh, you know more product than you use on your home lawn for sure. And then it's two different locations. So the service has to travel to those two different sites um, and use their product and their time and put the stuff out. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a big lawn. It's a big property that you're dealing with. And it's two different sites. Like if it were two, if the two were together, if it were two acres all like, you know, adjoining, it might be a bit less, but it's, but yeah, I mean, just in products alone, you know, I mean, depending on what you're, depending on, again, what you're doing, it could be, it could be expensive. Like if you're doing everything that's in the carbon kit, like, like, like my program, if you're doing like liquid furts, um, let me think. So a bag of ascent of a uh, humic max covers 15,000 square feet. So you're going to need one, two, three, you're going to need f three of those. You need six of those for two acres. So that's, so that's that right there. You're going to need, if you decide to get the carbon kit, you know, it's, um, we have one that's for 10,000 square feet for three applications. So really, you know, if you're stretching it out, you could do one carbon kit per property. So one per acre, if you're really trying to thin it out, it's a little bit low, but you could do that. So yeah, 250, depending on what they're doing is actually not that much money. Like if you're doing everything that I do, it would cost you more than that for two, especially for two acres. So yeah, I mean, they're probably, just, imagine they're just probably fertilizing and uh, maybe, maybe I imagine the fertilizer fertilization is all they're doing. I would imagine for that probably just a granular. I can't imagine they're spraying or doing a whole lot else for, for that, that amount of money. Uh, so yeah, it sounds reasonable to me given the size of what you're, uh, what you're dealing with. Okay. Next up, um, uh, is Todd. He's, he's being, being ugly. He says, come on, Bermuda is a weed. Just kidding. But I do love the striping of Rye and KBG. I, I will hand it to you. Listen, I will be the first to admit Nothing stripes like ryegrass. Like rye, I mean, if 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 the ultimate like like crazy stripes are like what your definition of an awesome lawn, it's really hard to beat ryegrass, rye or or KBG. But rye, like the the stripe action is insane on ryegrass. Uh, but you know, it's not Bermuda. 
But you know, I, I just I have to admit, if, you, if sharp action is your only your only criteria, then ryegrass is is better. But if you want something that is can take a ton of abuse, uh, can, you can mow it really short, looks awesome, is is not prone to a lot of diseases. You know, it's tough to be Bermuda. It really, the big thing is as long as you got the sunlight to power it, uh, Bermuda is really, really tough to beat. Okay, next up is uh, Roderick says, what brand of scarifier did you use to verticut? Uh, okay, so I didn't, so I used, a, I had a verticutter. So it's just two different two different um, processes. So the, for the verticutter, it was a billy goat. So it's like a slit seeder uh, that, um, that I just didn't use to seed, obviously. And I used that to verticut the lawn and, did, and it did a, a really good job. So it was a billy goat. That's what I, I went with. And I liked it so much. I would actually wouldn't mind getting my hand on one of those. It's a really, really nice piece of equipment. Did a great job. And uh, it's, uh, it made me a believer in verticutting it. Uh, you know, cause I've had it done before in the past and it really has made a huge mess, but that machine did a very, very nice job of uh, verticutting the lawn. So I'd, I'd like to get my hands on one if, if at all possible. And uh, last year, last season, I did scarify and we used the um, the nice guys, the nice folks at Real Rollers rent, uh, allowed me to allow me to borrow one of their swordsmen and I used I used it to scarify and it I was not a fan of the results like it, it it does that works better on longer grass like on on grass like a creeping grass like Bermuda it just made a really big mess it pulled up all the all the stones and just made a it just didn't look very very good whereas with verticutting. Literally, advert you vertically cut the lawn and you rake up you rake up the dead clippings, but it didn't cause the, the lawn to look like it had been hit with like an afro pick. You know what I mean? Where scarifying uh, caused that. So scarifying is probably more for more for longer grass than um, than Bermuda. All right, next up is um, is uh, Cooter Jenkins it says Texas is the same day is the same way. Uh, wait a couple days, it'll change. Great show, Ron. I appreciate it, Cooter. Uh, yeah, so Georgia, just wait. If, if a week goes by, you know, give it you know three few days, and and the weather will be completely different. And then Tyler is out here throwing shade, saying uh, Bermuda is a hundred percent a weed. Not nice, but I know you're joking, so we will tolerate it. Still, not nice, not nice. All right, next up is Patrick from Texas. He says, "Evening, uh, Mr. Henry. Being all official, you know, official tonight, uh, Patrick. He says, enjoy the live stream tonight uh, while sifting my dirt." For my soil test. <laughs> All right, man. That's that's dedication. I like it. I like it, Patrick. Very, very cool, sir. Very cool. I'm glad you're enjoying uh, the show. Travis, thanks for coming to hang out. I'm glad to see you're here. Thin Cut, see you as well. I am doing well. Thank you for asking. And uh, let's see. Um, uh, Eric Leon is back with a question, I think. No, I think we already answered this. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Just came home to a bunch of brown patches on my lawn. And a bunch of uh, uh, golf course, golf course, stunt, golf, uh, I guess GSL. I think you mean golf course lawn store, maybe. I don't know. Um, products uh, had previous fungus and web worms and leaf hoppers. Can't get rid of this celebration. So, uh, so Southern Florida. Uh, we already had this conversation, but let's, I'm not sure what you got, Eric, but let's, let's try a celebrant this year. Let's try a celebrant on the lawn. Let me know what kind of results you get with it. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised when it comes to insect damage in the lawn. As far as fungus, like I was telling you, uh, you, you used azoxystrobin. Let's try also incorporating um, propoconazole into whatever you're doing for your fungicide program as well and see if that helps. Celebration should not be very, it, it's not like most Bermuda is not really disease, is not prone to a lot of different diseases. Outside of like, uh, like summer patch and large patch, those are the big ones. You can see like light dollar spot, but dollar spot in Bermuda really is normally a symptom of not enough nitrogen. You would, I wouldn't even like, I've never rec really recommended it to anybody. Or I don't typically recommend to people to treat dollar spot in Bermuda with propiconazole. Like in most cases, the lawn doesn't have enough nitrogen. You can just, you can just give it a, uh, you know, give it a hit of nitrogen and it'll grow right through it. So really it's large patch and summer patch. And if you get crazy with watering, which is true for any grass type, you can cause uh, issues with pythium in your lawn. So it just depends on, uh, on that now, pythium root rot. You can cause those kinds of problems from excess watering, but that's not something that is um, that is particular to Bermuda. Like that can happen with any grass type where you, you put too much water on it. So for you really it should only be large patch and summer patch. I'm, I'm, it's interesting that you're having a bunch of pro fun fungus problems. Oh, and spring, that's another thing too. And spring dead spot. You will get that in Bermuda if you do not do a fungicide in the fall and you couple that with too much fertilization, too much nitrogen late into the fall, that will cause 
uh, dead spot will cause spring dead spot in your lawn. So something to just uh, keep in mind as well. So there's only, you know, a handful of, of uh, fungi you really need to worry about for Bermuda lawns. Um, so again, but as far as the insects, go with the Celeprin. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with uh, how the lawn looks at the end of the season uh, if you go that route. All right, next up, Ira Franklin says, Hey, Ron, just ordered pre-emergent and Caravan G. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much. She says, I'm in Duval, and it's been raining for two days. Now, stop. I think I already answered this one. I think I already answered this one. Um, is it, can, the, can the ground be too saturated to put down pre-emergent this weekend? I already answered this one, Irma. Uh, the answer is, is no. Worst case, if it's super, super, super like a slopping mess, wait a day or so and then do it. But the long short of the matter is you need rainfall. You need w water of some sort to work the air, to work the uh, pre-emergent down into the soil. So um, I'm inclined to say no, that you, sh that you should still go ahead and, and get your pre-emergent down. Next is Kevin D. Jones. He says, I need Mr. Lee to train me on getting and finding a used reel mower in Georgia. Yes, Ron, still looking. Infl inflation is real, pun intended. Hook me up with Alex. Uh, hook me up, Alex. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, look up Alex on Facebook. You can find him. Like Alex, I mean, he's probably get mad at me for doing this, but look him up. It means Alexander Lee. Look him up, Alexander Lee on Facebook, and just message him because he's right. He is the man on finding real mowers. He has got. I mean, as far as like finding a true cut, he's he's found a, a few of them. Um, he's, I think he's. Let me see. He's on his. He's on a second true cut, and he had one that he gave to his um, brother-in-law. So yeah, I mean, I know he does offer up and Facebook Marketplace. I believe that's where he's gotten his. Craigslist, you can check as well too, but I believe it's between OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace is where he's gotten his his mowers. But ask him, man. He's the man on that thing, on that kind of thing. And you're right. I mean, inflation is real. Everything costs more. And here's the thing. Everything is likely to cost more as the season goes on. So if you already have your program, you already, you already got your soil test done, which I know most of you guys in here have done that, um, get your products, be, make sure you're good to go and stocked up because if, you know, if and when stuff, stuff begins costing more, you're not gonna have to, you know, you're not gonna be one of these people, you know, caught out paying more for something that you could have bought, you know, now for less. So something to keep in mind. Oh, and on the subject of soil tests, for any of you guys that are new in the live stream, um, make sure you take advantage of the discount that is still running. It's gonna end on the 15th. So you can save 10% on the MySoil test kits by using the discount code start spring right at checkout on the golf course lawn store. So you use that discount code, saves 10% on all the soil test kits that are on the store, but it ends in four days. So uh, make sure you guys take advantage of that. You know, get at least, you know, if you wanna get this one soil test kit, that's fine, but get two, get one for now, get one for the for the, for the the fall. So you're good to go. Save save some money while you can. Next is um, Livendi. He says, um, can you tell us again what earphones you're using or recommend? Thanks. Uh, the earphones I am using are from Shure. They're the SE846s. I would not recommend them because they are incredible. They're very expensive. I bought I bought these like, oh, almost 10 years ago at this point. I bought them in 2013. I bought them right when they came out. I, was, I think it was like late 2012, early 2013. So they're coming up on, these are coming up on almost, um, almost 10 years old. As far as a headphone or, or an in-ear monitor, that is not fitted. Like you can get the ones that are you can spend crazy money on um, that are completely fitted. You gotta get like a mold of your ear done and, and this kind of thing. Uh, this the base in these is incredible. Like the sub base and just just the the, the way they reproduce sound um, is really really good. I mean it's it's uh it's got it's four drivers four four individual um, four individual um, drivers in each in each um, monitor. And uh, as far as just listening to music, it's just great. Like if you listen to, I don't know. Um, I don't know, like Hotel California, or you pick any any tick, any classic that you think you've heard before, like you've heard all the music in it before. You listen to them with these, and you're gonna hear instruments. You're gonna hear things in the sound, in the in the instruments, and also in the vocals that you just you didn't hear before. So if you're if you're an audiophile, if you're someone that really likes audio, um, they're worth it. I mean, you know. Uh, almost like nine hundred dollars for a set of Aaron monitors um, for a person that's seriously into 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 um, into audio is not that much money. But for uh, the av for an average person just saying, "Hey, I just want a, a good pair of headphones," um, they're they're kind of they're kind of overkill. But yeah, I mean, uh, kind of along the lines of what I say about for like insecticides and fungicides in my mowers, like buy once, cry once. I've had these for ten years. So, you know what I mean? I've, I've gotten my money's worth and then some out of them. So, you know, it's kind of like one of those buy once, cry once things. If you want another good of set, another good headphone from Shure, 
um, the SE535s, that's like a one, like a step down. And those are really good as well too. They sound really, really good. Um, I mean, they're not like, they're not like the, the SE846s, but they're nice as well. So uh, this, for a person that wants to spend a, a bit of money on, on, on monitors and get like a bet, you know, a, a cut above um, what you would, what you're gonna get, like like your Apple in-air buds or whatever, um, the SE840, the SE, the 535s are a good option. The 846s, if you're an audiophile, um, then yeah, go for them. But I mean, most, anyone that's gonna buy an, uh, the 846s more than likely already knows about them. Like you're, you're someone that's already into sound, but I'll, um, I'll give you a link, Lavendi, to the 535s. Those are, that's like, that's like the like really good, in my opinion, value for money. Like the sound you get out of them versus what you, you spend is good. These, you get to the point of diminishing returns, but they are better. They're better, they're like literally, the, these are the last set of earphones or I, I've, I purchased. I haven't, I haven't bought anything else uh, since these because I, I like them that much. All right, back to grass stuff. Next is Bama's number one. It says, happy Friday, Ron. Ever thought about some new challenges and material and putting and doing a putting green with all that yard you have? You are the golf course lawn, would love to see it. It's just time, man. Like, here's the thing, a green, a golf green sounds good until you realize that with everything I'm doing, which already to most people, to most people that see everything I do on my lawn, they think I'm already think I'm crazy. If I add a green out there, that's that's like another level of commitment. That's like mowing every day. Definitely got to mow that every day. Because if I have a green, I got to have it looking nice. So it's going to be mowing it every day. It's going to be, I'm going to have to be talking to Devin and like get on his fungicide program and, you know, everything that goes into making sure that the green stays nice and you don't have disease problems and be out there aerating it all the time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need more equipment. It's going to take more time. And if I ever decide I don't want to do it anymore, now I've got to fix that part of the lawn to make it look like the existing lawn. So I, I'm not there yet. I'm not saying it, it might, it could never happen, but I'm just not there yet as far as doing the whole uh, putting green in the lawn thing just yet. Bama's number one. But I appreciate the kind words. Appreciate the uh, the comments. Hey, Jerry Ward. Jerry's in the in the house saying, "Hey, Ron Henry, what's going on, uh, Jerry? Hopefully you're doing you're doing well." And then the lawn sensei says, "Hey, Ron, just passing by. Hello, lawn sensei. Thanks for coming to stop in." And then Brooklyn Boy says, "Your opinion on coop poop? Never used it, so I can't really say. I believe that's that that organic chicken poop or chicken manure product. I mean, people that use it seem to like it." I've never used it on my lawn to know how well it performs and if it's worth um, worth going with. I mean, I would like to introduce another, I would go back to an organic fertilizer in the lawn. That might be a thing coming here soon. We'll have to see. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I will, we'll, you know, we'll see. I, I can't really give an opinion on poop coop, on coop poop, <laughs> because I've never, I've never used it. But anything, it's got a cool name, right? It's a funny name to say. All right. Uh, next up is Demir91. He says, you were just talking about the lawn you inherited, Ron. Just sent you a message of mine when I moved in on Instagram. Feel free to share if you can. Can I do that? Can I find your Instagram post? Let's see, you sent me a picture on Instagram. Are you gonna send me an email, man? I, gotta, I think you should have my email address. I know you have it, but let me see if I can share the picture. He says, the lawn that you had when you moved in. Let's see what we got, what Demir is sending us. Okay, here. Ooh, goodness gracious. Ooh, Lord. I don't. I don't know. This is. This isn't even. This isn't. It's not even PG thirteen. I don't know if we can show this on on uh, on on the air. I don't know about this. Oh, okay. Now, guys, listen. I, I mean, make sure you're sitting down. Don't don't get too close. Wow. Okay. So this. Okay. So this is his lawn. Look, I'm going to show you the after. I think. I think I still have his lawn. The after. Do I still have it? No. I, I don't have his, I don't have his after anymore. Dang it. Yeah, actually I could find it. Anyway, this is his lawn. Let me show you his lawn now. Let's do, let's start with that. So this, this will be inspiration for all you guys. So this is Devin's lawn as it sits now. I think we would all, probably good if I get on the right camera. <laughs> right, that would be helpful. This is Devin's lawn as it sits now. I think we would all agree that even though it's not a warm season lawn, that looks okay. That's a good looking, that's a good looking stand on grass right there. But the, the stripe action is clean, it's on point. You know, he is, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd say that's that's clean. We would all, we'd all approve and, and endorse that lawn. You wanna see what his lawn used to look like when he moved in? I mean, this is painful. I mean, look at that, that's that's nasty guys. I mean, that's, that's. I mean, I don't even know if, you, you'd have to burn that twice if you were gonna, if you're gonna go, you know, do something with that lawn. So that's picture one. And uh, and there's the front lawn. Oy, I think that's a front lawn. I can't even tell. It's like the desert. So and there's the front lawn. 
I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, had some challenges. Well, it's safe to say that it had some challenges. And if you look at where we are now, you know, again, it didn't just happen overnight. The front line went from that to that. So it's possible. So any of you guys that have lawns and you're saying it's, it's garbage, I can never make it better. There's no chance. This is the one plot on planet Earth that cannot be made to look good. I say not true. I mean, look at Devin. Devin's lawn. His lawn was is uh is pretty nasty. I mean, it my I mean, it's it's it was it's, that's worse than mine. Mine was mine was pretty bad. But that's um that's uh that's rough. I that I, I might have needed counseling for that for a lawn like that. And uh, he turned it around. So with the right program, diligent, consistent effort, and uh, any anything is possible. I mean, his lawn looks incredible now, uh, even even if it is uh, cool season grass. And, uh, you know, it didn't start that way. So hopefully that helps a lot of you guys that are watching this. Um, if you watch it after the fact, you know, it shows you that even some of the best lawns that you look at, they all started somewhere. So just keep, keep going. Keep going. Next up is Michael A. Chafin. He says, what's up, Ron? How's it going? Going well, sir. Cannot complain. Hanging out with all you fine folks and uh, talking about grass. There are worse things we could be doing. All right. Next up is uh, Dantra... 114 says my 16 year old son Javier Grass Whisper plays football, takes time out of his schedule to watch your live stream, has a mild case of BP. Um, he suggested to spot spray now and apply headway in April to spot spray um, weeds, to spot, well, spot spray what weeds now and then headway in April. I like that. I like, I think, I think uh, Javier's on to something. I mean, if you got, if you have a, a few weed problems here and there and you want to spot spray them, uh, sure, sure, why not? And then headway uh, in April, sure. If, you, if you've had fungus issues in the past, um, headway in April can work. If you can hold out until late April or early May, even better, especially if you're using it as a preventative. But yeah, man, my, he's on point. He's been he's been watching the live stream. I uh, I, I endorse that that advice. It's good stuff, man. Uh, it's it's cool to see you know cool to see a teenager someone that's into into lawn care at a young age, which is really really cool. So yes, he's on he's on point. I think you should follow his advice. He's he's not leading you wrong. All right, next up is uh, Terrell Young. He says, "I I hey, I believe you live near me. I'm in McDonough, uh, Henry County. No, I not really. I'm in Hall County. I'm in Hall County. I'm in Northeast Georgia. I'm in uh, Gainesville area. So no, yeah, no, I'm in um mm -mm, not. I mean, you're not that far from me, but we're not like we're not close enough for that. Unless you're around here, that we would have run into each other." Okay, uh, Andrew Phillips is now here in the in the chat with a comment question that says, "Good evening, all. Looking forward to getting my lawn program going once this Texas cold spell passes." Punks of Tony Phil is still hanging on. I wish they would get rid of that whole groundhog thing. It's nonsense, man. I don't like the fact because he never gives good forecasts. Why doesn't he give like a good one? Like like spring's going to be here soon. It's always like, oh no, like six more weeks of winter. Never a good one. I don't I don't like him as a. I, I don't. Mm -mm. He's no good. I think we need to get rid of our uh, our our lawn our weather forecaster. He's not friendly to lawn care folks. Uh, next is Wind Cherry. He says, happy Friday, guys. Just walked to the door and looked out and the ground is covered in snow in Memphis. It's it's headed your way, Ron. Why, listen, why are you wishing that evil on me? Listen, you already, you're dealing with it. You have your snow. And I didn't, I didn't say, you know, who look at you with snow. Sucks to be you. I didn't say anything like that. I wasn't like that. I just said, man, snow, that's that, that's terrible. It's I was, it's a setback. But I didn't I didn't throw shade. Why are you got to try and send it this way? That's not nice, Wind Chariot. You're going to have me calling your uh, your Harley something else. You're going to have me doing that, man. Don't think I won't. Don't think I won't do it. It'll it'll happen. And actually, yours isn't a Harley. That is a Harley. It's a Honda or a Harley. I don't know. Is it is it a, is it a Honda? <laughs> Snow coming to Georgia. I'm going to get in trouble for that. All right. Next up is Robert Mahorez. He says, good evening, Ron. And all came in from repairing a neighbor's John Deere rotary rider that hasn't been maintained. Hopefully everyone um, at the golf course lawn land is giving their equipment some love. Uh, that's good of you, Robert. Nice of you to, to help out your neighbor to work on their equipment, get them going. And um, and that's, guys, you know, that's a good message. That's a good message that Robert is passing. Like this is a, this is the time of year to work on your equipment if at all possible. You know what I mean? This is the time of year to get your stuff all freshened up. You don't wanna be out there mid season having something break down on you. Um, that could have been caught and fixed now, um, because again, with um, you know, with supply chain, who knows? If you need a part, it might be a hard time. It might be hard getting 
getting getting parts. I mean, good example, look at like True Cut. Like if you if you try to get a True Cut real mower now, one, if you want a C25, the one that I have, good luck. You can't find them. Like they're just, they're really, really hard to come by. Um, and then, so what you're stuck with now is a 27. I hate stuck with, you're not stuck with, but your options now are a 27 or a 20. And from what I understand, the new ones aren't even coming with Honda engines. They're coming with a different engine that's not the Honda GX. So, you know, the supply chain is, is hitting like all areas, even things that you don't even, you don't really consider are um, are being affected by it. So yeah, maintain your stuff, get it, get your stuff taken care of early in the season than later. That way you know, or you have a better chance that, you know, you're not gonna run into a situation where you're not able to get stuff fixed because parts and that kind of thing. All right, Will Dog Hail State is up. He says, good evening, Ron. Now that you have a verticutter, I don't actually have a verticutter, I rented one, but yes, we'll continue. He says, how often do you plan to use it during the growing season? And have you noticed any change in green up in your lawn since you've used it already? Uh, the lawn is greening up. It's greening up this year about like last year. Uh, you know, it's about like last year. So I wouldn't say it's helped green up a ton. Um, what I'm interested in seeing happen with the verticutter on um, Will Dog is because I really thinned the lawn out, really cleaned it out, got a lot of, you know, and I hate, and I hate to use the word thatch because thatch is kind of an overused term. I don't really get rid of a thatch, but a lot of the, a lot of the like dead clippings and just some of the material that I just wanted to get out of it. Now that's gone. It's gonna be interesting to see whenever I mow the lawn throughout the season, um, assuming I don't do regular verticutting, like how uh, how long it takes before um, I might getting any start getting any kind of scalping issues. You know, as long as, long as I keep up with my mowing frequency, um, if removing all that material to where it literally it's just like like you know, soil and grass, and there's not a bunch of extra extra stuff there, um, how that just helps with just how the lawn looks when it gets cut. You know what I mean? That's what I'm really interested in, in seeing. I, I, the jury's out on whether I'm going to be able to find a verticutter um, at a reasonable price that I can I can use on the lawn, but I, I would like to get one and incorporate that into my uh, my lawn care program this year. I just got to find um, so I can get my hands on one that's not going to be cost prohibitive. But stay tuned. You're going to see how the lawn does throughout the season. You guys know I'm going to film content. It'll be the YouTube stories. You know when I'm out mowing you know, early in the morning or in the evening, you'll be able to see all that and uh, see how the lawn does. All right, next up is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, I've always wanted to purchase Celsius, but I can't bring myself to buy based on price. I want something stronger than Spectracides. Can you talk about a weed killer you offer on the golf course lawn store that is similar? Okay, so the big thing with Celsius, again, kind of, you get what you pay for, is um, it is a, it's a, it's a very, very good uh, selective herbicide that is relatively mild on your grass. And it does something that most herbicides, uh, selective warm season herbicides, you can't do, which is spray it over a broad range of temperatures. Meaning if you take like something like Spectracide, right? And you and it's 90 degrees out, you can't spray that or you're not supposed to spray that on your lawn because uh, it's gonna yellow it, it's gonna damage it. Whereas Celsius, you can. So that's a huge, that's a huge benefit of it. Also, even if you spray it outside of extreme conditions, it's just a lot less likely to yellow your lawn than, um, than some of the other like 2,4-D or like Dismiss or the Speed Zones or any of those types of uh, products, it's a lot less sensitive to temperature. So also keep in mind, if you're doing it right, uh, Dwayne, like if you're, if you're following the program, if you buy a container of Celsius, like you really shouldn't be buying one again for years because you shouldn't have that many weeds in your lawn. You're not, you know, if you're, if you're, um, you've got a good fertilization program, you're mowing regularly, you're doing your pre-emergent, weeds in your lawn really should not be a huge deal to where that, that container, that single container of Celsius is going to last years and years and years and years. You're just not going to go through it very quickly because you're just not going to need to use it that much. On to your question about uh, an option for a weed killer that is similar to Spectracide, um, but is less expensive, a little more economical. So I'll show you an option from, um, it's called a Triad Select. This is kind of like um, Spectracide on steroids. So again, you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to Shop and Weed Killer. Under there, you will see an option. You see you got your, your, your boutique, your Cadillac uh, herbicides here, and we'll scroll down, and then you have Triad Select, which is also an excellent pr product. So this is basically, you can think of it as a, a souped up version or a commercial grade version of, of a lot of what's in Spectracide. You're gonna apply this at a rate of, I think it's one and a half ounces per gallon. So you're gonna go with, with on this and it's safe for uh, warm season and, and most cool season grasses as well. So this is a good option that's not gonna break the bank. Uh, that's gonna, that's really, really good against broad leaves. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a good option. I mean, it's not quite, it's not Celsius good, obviously, but it's a good, it's a good product. Um, and if you want something, again, that's, that's a step above, like a, a good step above what you're getting with Spectracide, I would look into this, the, uh, the Triad Select 3-Way. This is what I, that's what I would roll with. I would give that um, a hard look uh, um, for your for your lawn, and then again, if you uh, but really Celsius and Certainty that combination, buy once, cry once. Like literally, if you do have weeds in your lawn, there's not many weeds at that that those two will not take care of. I mean, out of like the really nasty ones like Dallas grass and goose grass, and the ones are just that are pain to get rid of, where you really almost have to spot with spot treat with with glyphosate. Um, you know, for the most common weeds in most lawns. Those two don't have temperature restrictions and will work over, um, will take care of most of the weeds that most people have in their warm season grass. But again, try it select, great option as well. And it meets what you're asking, which is a step up from Spectracide. Okay, next is Robert Rufin. He says, hey, Ron, good evening, sir. Uh, soil test question. If we apply all the good soil amenities to the top of the soil, then why do we send in clay at the bottom of the soil to be tested? I send the entire core in. So whenever I take my probe tool, I, I mean, I, I push this guy down to about like here. I mean, so not everyone can get that far, get it that far down in their soil, but I go a good, you know, four or five inches. I'm, 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 and I send the entire profile. Like some of you guys will go and you'll, you'll do it. You'll do a, take a core and you may pick out the area you're going to send in. I don't do that. I, I literally, I, I, I pull, you know, four inch cores, four or five inch cores, I put all of them in the bucket, like all of the little clip, grass clippings and everything, and I mix it all up. And then I'll remove a, a little bit, if there's really big chunks of grass clippings, I might remove some of those. And then I'll take the scoop of that, throw it in and send that out. So I don't, I don't cherry pick the area of the, um, of the core that I pick, that, that I use. I, I use the entire, I use the entire thing and then I mix it all up. So even though, it, so let's say that, you know, this is the, um, the 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 top of the you know the, the core's got like um you know really really rich soil and then some some clay some clay in it right so it actually it would be what would it be yeah so it'd be, so it'd be very very uh like dark rich soil here and then the, and, and more clay as we go along right um it's all gonna get mixed together so when I dump this in the bucket it's all gonna get broken up it's all gonna get mixed to into a like a homogeneous mixture that represents like you know four four to five inches of soil in my lawn which is what you really want. Um, and then send that in and and the results are the results. You know what I mean? So yeah, I would I would not just pick just the top, the top um inch or so. That's I think you're kind of cheating yourself if you do that. Make sure you, you get a good core, send, mix the entire core up and send that in uh for your for your sample. Hopefully uh that helps. Luis Rodriguez says, have a good one, Ron. I gotta go. Thanks, Luis. Take care, travel safe, have fun, sir. And then Rad Pitt is saying, I have snow on my lawn. Sorry to hear that, Rad. Please keep the snow wherever you it is you may be. And then he says a question. He says, have you ever met Doc? I have not met Doc. I've not met Doc. I know he's in Georgia. I know he's in Georgia. I think he's, I actually believe Doc's not that far from me. I think he's in Northeast Georgia somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where he is, but I've not, I've not met him. I've not met him. No, I have not. I've not. We both got Bermuda grass, you know, but I, I've not met, I've not met Doc. Okay, Scott R is here, says, any idea when Lebanon Max will go back on, on that deep discount sale? I held out and wish I would have gotten several bags. Unlikely to happen anytime soon, man. If anything, the price is only gonna go up. It's only gonna go up. So the price that it's at now is the price that um, we're able to sell it at. I mean, your best bet, of your only, your, your only chance of it going on sale again would be maybe Black Friday, like, you know, like November. Like when the season's, when the season's long over, that is when you could, um, you know, we could consider doing a discount on it again. But right now, um, you know, it's not, there's, there's, there's just no way that it can be, it can be discounted. Also, since, um, you know, getting more of it, it's more than, it's likely, we don't know yet, likely to be um, potentially more expensive um, than it has been in the past. So again, if, if, if I have, if we're a betting, if we're a betting man, I would, I would guess the price is either going to stay the same. That would be a win. That would be a win. I'd consider that a win if the price could stay the same or it's going to get more expensive. So hopefully that helps, Scott R. Uh, best I can tell you is maybe Black Friday, but again, even that's not really a guarantee. I would just get what you, I mean, you know, one bag covers 15,000 square feet. So get, I'd say get, um, you know, get what you need and just, and just roll with it. All right, next up is, um, is, Let's see here is, uh, yeah, Rad Pitt is suggesting to use a very delicate application of Roundup on POA. I would not do that. I would not do that. I absolutely would not do, um, I would not spray Roundup or use Roundup on 
grass or on lawn that you want to keep. You have grass you want to keep. Um, I just I just wouldn't do it. Uh, next up is um, Andrew Phillips. He's saying, Ron, I'm looking at your calendar. Uh, my first year in your program is Humic Max. The first treatment I should is uh, is is the Humic Max uh, the first treatment I should use, uh, or should I start a, fer a starter fertilizer before using her, uh, Humic Max based on my soil test results? Thanks. You should fertilize your lawn based on soil test results. So if your soil test results say that you need um, phosphorus in your lawn and your soil, right? In that case, you should start out with a starter for it. You should start out with like a triple 12 or something along those lines, uh, get your phosphorus levels up. What you can do is apply the triple 12 for a couple of months and then switch to Humic Max. And then use that, run that throughout the rest of the season. In the fall, test your soil again and see where the phosphorus levels went to and then that gives you an idea of what to do for the for the following season. So, so yeah, you the answer is to fertilize based on your soil test results. Humic Max is an excellent product, but if your soil needs phosphorus, it doesn't have any phosphorus in it. So you really shouldn't use it. You should use something that has that has phosphorus in your in your lawn, right? So again, triple 12 is a good option to help bring those levels up. And then you can always switch it out once uh once you you know you do a couple of months of applications in in your lawn. All right, uh, next is uh, Robbie Marie. Nope, that's another, it's a question that's as a side question. All right, um, so run next is Ronald Covert. Says, can pre-emergent impede uh, PGR from spreading my Bermuda? Uh, no, not, not, I've never heard of that, Ronald. Not really. Um, because, and again, and again, plant growth regulator, as far as it's spreading or causing it, like, you know, you put PGR on your lawn and it causes the lawn to spread a lot more. Um, not really a thing. The big thing is, is that, you know, PGR suppresses growth up. It suppresses top growth. It suppresses, I mean, Trinexapac ethyl, which is the active ingredient in uh, in Primo, um, if you want to get really geek out, it it suppresses gibrilic acid synthesis, which is which is the, the, the acid that the grass uses to grow tall. It causes stalk growth, right? So by, by suppressing that, the grass doesn't grow as quickly, um, which promotes, and if you're mowing it, regularly like you should be with like if you're real mowing or even using a rotary mower what that does is it promotes the grass to grow laterally it causes it to grow across the lawn that's what causes the lawn to to thicken up it's not like you throw pgr on a spot of the lawn like in a bare spot and that that lawn that area that's a bare spot is now going to get thick because you put pgr on it that's just not this is not the case um and as far as um pre-emergent impeding pgr the two um they work completely differently uh like pgr at least Primo is a foliar product. Most pre or pre-emergents are a soil-based product, um, and they like PGR is designed to like to prevent is to, to it's a herbicide. It's designed to prevent um, the a, a plant's ability to develop roots, uh, and PGR suppresses gibrilic acid synthesis. So the two are completely different. They don't they don't really have anything in common um, other than you put them on grass. That's that's the only thing they have in common. The two are not going to interact or do anything or anything where they're completely completely separate completely separate products. Good question. All right, next is Edwin O. Edwin has a question about a backyard loosening up. He says, hey, R, uh, redoing part of the backyard, about 1,800 square feet. I tilled it to loosen it up a bit and clean. Mm. Found a few grubs, not good. I mean, a couple or how many? Are we talking about here? A bunch or like a, well, he said a few, so I don't know how many a few is. It says, should I put down something before sandy loam? Should I put anything else down before sod? Uh, yes. So you said a few grubs. I don't know what that really means. It could mean like two. And if it's two and like, you know, over the entire lawn, then yeah, probably not that big of a deal. If it's a bunch in an area, um, then yeah, you could use something like a celeprin. It's something you should use anyway. I mean, regardless of whether you're going to have, you have like, you have one or you have 100. Uh, you know, using a celeprin on your lawn um, early in the season, so like later this month or early April, is a good is something good to do because it's not it doesn't only prevent lawn damage from grubs. It prevents lawn damage from um, cutworms, uh, like the army worms, which which destroyed every destroyed like a lot of lawns in the southeast United States and really all over the country uh, last year. It prevents those. If you are in a rare case where you have annual bluegrass weevils, it'll prevent those. It'll you know bill um, bill, um, uh, bill bugs, spittle bugs. Uh, it's just, it's a very, it's an excellent product that just literally you apply it once and you've got coverage for the entire season. So I would absolutely do that, especially if you're already seeing grubs in your lawn. As far as anything else to do before applying sod, 
Uh, you can use uh, Essential G, which is a combination of compost, biochar, uh, some humate. Uh, it's it's it, I, essentially it's a it's a very very um, uh, potent biostimulant that is going to help the sod that you put in, the grass that you put in, root faster. It's going to help the lawn establish faster. So that is something I would do. The two things I would say are a celeprin because you already got grubs and grubs are bad, and and then um, uh, essential G. That is what I would I would say. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, I think you've already you may not have seen it, but you go here to the golf course lawn store. We can go for a road trip. And on the front page, you should find both of those. Essential G is right here. Again, that's the, the, the product I was telling you that needs to go down um, prior to the sod. I mean, you can use it after the sod as well too, but really if you're doing a, a brand new lawn and you can get this down before you put the sod, so it's like a sand it gets sandwiched between the soil and the sod, even better. So something like this, and then your choice, and then uh, something like a Celeprin G. This is a good, this is a great option for your insecticide. That's gonna get rid of your issues with grubs uh, as well as um, turf caterpillars and again, a host of other um, insect problems. We've got it here in a granular. If you are you know, looking for a liquid option, there's also gonna be a liquid option here, but you gotta go to the fungicide link and it's gonna be uh, right there. So if you want liquid, if you like, if you're a liquid kind of person, you can choose that. And if you want the granular, you can choose that. They're both the same. They both work equally well, um, but that is what I would do. That is what I would do based on what you are, uh, are you're, you're telling me. Congrats on the new lawn, man. Uh, it sounds like a fun project. 1,800 square feet, not terribly big, which is nice. Meaning you can, it's not gonna take a ton of work to get it looking really, really awesome. So uh, keep me posted on how, the, uh, on how the project goes. You're very, very welcome. I enjoy it. I enjoy it, man. Next up is uh, Clyde Bigsby. He says, you're awesome, man. I appreciate your humble attitude and knowledge. Thanks so much, Clyde. Um, yeah, you know, you know, you know, it's funny. In life, you can either be humble or eventually you're gonna be humbled. You know, and and oftentimes it's by someone that you don't that you that you think is um, that you might think is beneath you that you think is you know I'm better than this person. How can they how can they help tell me anything or have anything to teach me? And uh, so yeah, the the general you know general life advice, good life advice is don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Just be, just be nice to people as much as you can. You know, we're we're not we're not around on Earth that long. We're not around that long. So just be nice. Just be just be decent to people. There's no reason to uh, to not be. Okay, next is uh, Greg Lyon. He says, what do, you, uh, what do you do to keep gnats and bugs away as you mow your yard? They are horrible already in this area uh, and constantly in my face. I don't have an issue with gnats or bugs um, in my lawn, Greg. It's just never been, never been a thing. Uh, what can I tell you? I don't know, man. That's a, that's a tough one. I mean, the, the pet, if you want to use the pest control over your entire lawn, that will help with, with gnats, but you're going to be doing that every... Mm, three weeks or so. So if you're going to do that, I would get like a fogger and spray the lawn with it because that's going to allow you to get better coverage. It's going to be faster as well too. Like that will definitely knock back uh, gnats, mosquitoes, like other like irritating bug, white flies, little those little bugs that fly around just irritate you while you're mowing your lawn. Uh, this is a, a great option for that, the Miramichi Green Pest Control. Um, but it's like another thing you got to do now on your lawn, right? So in addition to mowing and your fertilizer and everything else, now you're going to be putting down that. But it's a... It's, it's a safe product. It's not going to damage your grass. Safe for your kids or if you have kids or pets or, you know, anything else. Uh, that's the only thing that really comes to mind that I can think of that is going to help. Um, but it's just one more thing you have to do now, right? So consider that if you want, if it's really that big of an issue for you. I mean, you can use the product for other things, obviously. It's good against mosquitoes and those types of, uh, those types of insects. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything else for you other than some kind of product to remove the um that which is bugging you when you're out there mowing so hopefully that helps um let me know what you decide to go with okay kelby ruiz is here says hey buddy thoughts on scalping less than a year old sod it's rooted good just curious uh happy friday sure yeah i mean if, if it's is it bermuda I'm, I'm assuming bermuda if it's bermuda then sure go for it go for it have fun knock yourself out you know, I would not, if you want to be nice, you want to kind of split the difference, don't take it all the way down to the dirt. Don't stress it any more than it needs to be. But if it's Bermuda, you could, honestly, you could do that. And it's it's going to be fine. Uh, you say it's a year old. So yeah, if you want to, you can. If you want to, you absolutely can. No worries. Okay. Uh, Greg is back. He says, someone drove into my yard. Um, so uh, someone drove into my yard. Uh, so should I get a mixture of sand and dirt to fill the ruts? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, Greg. I'm not sure how big the ruts are. 
If you wanna see a cool video that's also kind of entertaining to watch, I think it's entertaining anyway, uh, that will covers how to fill ruts in your lawn, or leveling a bumpy lawn, you can look at my video, this one right here, which I will put in the chat for you. Don't watch it now, stay in the live stream, you can watch it afterwards. But watch this video in uh, the live stream at Greg, um, and it will show you like my process for filling in ruts or low spots in the lawn. Long short of the answer, if you don't wanna watch the video, but you should watch it because it's a good video, is to, uh, you know, yeah, a sand soil mixer will work. Um, um, put it down and then step on it, like like pack it in, like pack it in, try and compress it. Because here's the thing, regardless of what you do, it's going to settle some a little bit. It's gonna, you're gonna have some settling. So if you're trying to fill in a rut where you're trying to build up a low spot, uh, when you put it down, pack it in, put more down, pack it in, work it in with your leveling rake, and then have like a bucket or two laying around so that once it does settle, because it's still gonna settle even after doing all that, uh, just to, to bring it up just a little bit more to, to even it out to where it matches the rest of the lawn. But I would still recommend watching the video because it's a good video and you'll get a laugh out of it. Next is Off The X saying, thank you for all the information you give. First, you're taking care of my own lawn. That's awesome, Off The X. I'm glad that you appreciate it and you're you're taking care of your lawn your, yourself this year. Uh, just realize that it's a process. Like, you know, as you saw, you know, Devin showed you his lawn. I've shown you my lawn and how it used to look and just stick with the process, be consistent and you're gonna get there. You're gonna get uh, where you want to uh, to be in your lawn. Next is Ryan Pounds says, I put pre-emergent down twice in the fall and twice in the spring, but I still get POA every spring. Every suge Any suggestions, thanks. Yeah, so if you, what you can try uh, next year, or this fall, uh, Ryan, because it's too late now for the POA, what you can try this fall is when you do your, your uh, pre-emergent, say you're doing something like um, prodiamine, you can, what you can do is use, uh, you can add a post emergent, a couple post emergent herbicides in with it. So this is gonna be a bit more expensive to put this together because you're gonna have to buy uh, pretty much three products, but you're gonna get prodiamine, you're gonna get some simazine, and you're also gonna get imazequin or image. Just get like a, you can get uh, like a bottle of image concentrate. So simazine, a bottle of image and prodiamine. Uh, you know, it's, you're gonna mix those together. So make sure you read the label, use the, the proper application rate where you're putting down whatever rate you decide to go with one gallon of that product mixture over a thousand square feet. And that should help with, uh, with, with the POA. What you can do is you can do that mixture. Uh, you said you're doing it twice in the fall. So do that twice, do it like whenever you normally do it. I imagine like mm, late September, early October. And then again, you know, late October, early no or late November, or maybe, maybe January, depending on where you are. I'm not sure where in the country you are, but try that. Try adding a bit of, um, of post-emergent in with it. So like, again, simazine and amazequin are the two um, herbicides you can want to mix with with the prodiamine. That's basically what coastal is, and it's a and I got really good results with that. So that's like that's a an alternative to going with something like uh, Spectacle Flow, which will keep POA away, but it's also pretty expensive. So that that's going to be you're gonna you know open your pocketbook to get that product. That's going to work really really well, but it's going to be expensive. So simazine, amazequin, pr prodiamine. If you can create a blend of those. That is that should help uh, quite a bit with the uh, with the poa in your lawn. But again, you're not going to be able to do it until this fall. So, hopefully that helps. Next is uh, J P uh, Sra uh, Saransky says, "What's the number one challenge, the number one opportunity you've experienced getting your la your lawn store on the road to growth? Thanks for getting us through the winter doldrums with your consistent live streams and challenges, challenges and opportunities. Uh, challenges." Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a good I've never been asked that one. I'm trying to think about what's, what, are the, what are the biggest challenges. Um, just ma making sure that it's fun to watch, what, what fun, a fun place to hang out and navigate. You know, like anything else, making sure that the, that the, the store is efficient, that it's it, like finding what you need is is easy, that I carry the products that you guys want, um, that the checkout process is easy, kind of like anything else. Like if you if you want to know what the gold standard for e-commerce is, look at Amazon. Like like go to Amazon.com, look at their page, and do everything that they're doing and try and replicate that in your store. Because literally you've got to figure, like I'm a one man, you know, it's, it's me and I have, I, have a, I have a bit of help, but it's but it's mainly me doing a lot of this. And um, you have to figure that the, the the people that are the best at this, right? Like the, that are giants in e-commerce, like, um, I don't know, Amazon, Gymshark, uh, some of these, pick any, pick any of the big online e-commerce people. Like they have entire teams, entire departments that do nothing but this stuff, that figure out how to optimize 
conversion rate, how to optimize the, the customer experience, how to make sure that everything runs quickly, like all that kind of stuff. And you can just, I mean, that's, you have a lesson of what to do by just following them. You know what I mean? So if you, if you just pay attention to what they're doing and try and implement that, you can, you can create, um, you know, a, a, an experience that your, that's your, your customers, that your customers, uh, you like. And as far as opportunities for growth, it's still new. The store is really only oof, just like year old, a little over a year old at this point. So just growing, uh, getting more traffic to it is big, you know, getting away, getting more traffic to it is, uh, is always huge. And just take, it's gonna take time. It's just gonna take time. That's the, that's the big thing. So like anyone else, <laughs> more traffic and better, better, more traffic and higher conversion rate. Those are the two challenges and opportunities. All right, next is Heartfelt Fashion. And he says, hey, Ron, thanks for, uh, thank you to, and, and Princess Cuts for all your guidance. I purchased my first real mower today, Alette Kensington. I only have 4,000 square feet, so it's perfect. Lots of other great mowers around. And I showed your video, Heartfelt Fashion. I thought you were gonna come to the live stream. That's why I showed it earlier. But if you if you go back now, you have to go back and, and watch it. I showed everyone with you and Roland getting your mower uh, in South Carolina, picking it up. So, I mean, we didn't actually see the mower, but we saw you and Roland, you know, talking about you getting your mower. So it's already been aired. It's on the live stream. So just go, go back in time and you'll be able to find it. Uh, cause I didn't, I didn't see you earlier. So I figured, eh, I want to make sure I get this done. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, mess it up and not, and not do it. Okay. And then next, um, is, uh, Michael A. Chafin. He says, I fight with the up with UPS all the time about chemicals being thrown around and leaking half of the product out. It happens, man, especially with liquids. I mean, they just don't, it's hard to pack the stuff to where, you know, that it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to pack it. it you, you can pack it as well as you, 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 as you can and um, hope that they're not going to throw it. But if there's a thing, even if you pack it properly, a proper pack it adequately and they set it down, they put something heavy on top of it it's going to damage it, right? It's going to damage the, the, the bottle or the container and it's going to cause it to leak. You know, the way, the way you'd have to package liquids such that there were no chance that of any damage whenever it's being shipped would make shipping more expensive because you have to make the box bigger. You have to use more packaging. In the end, it would make more costs. It would, it would increase the cost to the customer. So you, you pack it as well as you can. That's, that's reasonable and hope that, 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 that the majority of it makes it without getting uh damage but yeah i'm with you on that they just um you know they they play soccer with with the packages sometimes i think next is julian b he says hey ron on the live chat what is the ultimate post emergent uh post emergent of for most weeds for warm season lawn bermuda to be exact um i think you'll get different answers on that one uh julian I'll give you what my opinion is my my option or my my combination of the ultimate post emergent is to use Celsius and certainty and mix those two together, combine those two. The reason why is because between those two products, you're gonna have, you're gonna cover a broad range of weeds. So your grassy weeds, your um, your broadleaf weeds, it's gonna cover, you're gonna take care of your sedges, it's gonna take care of POA, if you have POA in your lawn, and by the time you're spraying this stuff. Uh, and the big thing, the big advantage of those is as far as temperature restrictions, you can spray both Celsius and certainty at higher temperatures than you can other herbicides without it negatively impacting your grass. So that's, that's a big reason to do it. Uh, so I can show you what I'm talking about here. If we go to golf course lawn store and then go to shop and weed killer on the top shelf, again, got it here, top shelf, you've got certainty and you've got Celsius. These two these two products are what I would use. That those two form a combination of what I consider to be um, a, an excellent option for for um, for warm season grass for Bermuda, uh, really for all warm season grass other than Bahia, uh, because you can use Certainty on Bahia, but you can't use Celsius on Bahia. So other than Bahia grass, those two put together are 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 magic on um, on taking care of lawn weeds, and because I want to make sure you guys are covered. In both the description of both of those products, if you go there, you'll see that I have a video showing you how to mix, how to combine um, both of those. So it gives you an option. You don't have to necessarily do it the way I'm doing it, but that gives you one option that does work uh, very well. Um, there's been viewers that have done that concoction and they had really, really good results with it as far as, I think Robert Rainey used it for uh, for treating like burrweed in his lawn. So Celsius and Certainty, that is what I would go with. You're, you're gonna buy them and you're not gonna have to use a whole lot. Like, you, like buying a container of Certainty and a container of Celsius is gonna last you for years. So it's like buy once, cry once. And it's um, it's literally one of the best options you're gonna have for, man, for keeping, um, for a post-emergent herbicide um, in warm season grass, you know? So 
Hopefully that helps. Again, we have them at the Golf Course Lawn Store and along with a video showing you how to, uh, to use them. So hope that helps, sir. Let me run down here and grab a super chat. Look, we got one here from Mitchell Parsons. I got to speed up, man. I got, I got like more questions and we're coming up on, on, on the 11th, on the fourth hour. All right, Mitchell Parsons says, Super chat received. Hey, Ron, I'm in Woodstock, Georgia here. Going to see some rough temps the next few days. Should I be worried about the Bermuda that has already come up in my yard? Nope, you're going to be absolutely fine. It's going to, it's going to, slow down a little bit, but it's going to bounce right back as soon as we get warm temps here uh, again. So do not worry about it, uh, Mitchell. No, no problems at all. Because it's only supposed to be cold for t tonight, tomorrow. Starting Sunday, it's going to start the warming trend again, and you'll be just fine. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it, man. Don't worry about it too much. You'll be, uh, you'll be okay. We're all in it together. We're all in it together. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for other questions. Um, Dwizzle. I'm looking for other points here. So I'm trying to speed up and get to the end of the live stream. Parker's Aquatic says, I'm late, but I'm glad I made it. You did, uh, Parker's. Thanks for coming to hang out. And then the next is Scott R. He says, isn't the idea of adding carbon being um, being able to back down for a race, given the amount of carbon you put down, have you tried backing down your race to see if the carbon load up is worth the money? Yeah, yeah, so I have backed it down, um, Scott. I did back it down last season. The plan is to just is to play with it this year and see as well too, to try and reduce it a little bit um, this year as well. So my the, the common rate, you know, the common number for Bermuda is Bermuda needs a, a pound of, one pound of nitrogen um, per month during the growing season. My lawn never saw that the entire time last year. Uh, I ran it closer to 0 0.7, 0 0.8 pounds of nitrogen during the growing season. And this year, I, I'll, I'll play with really maybe maybe going 0 0.65, 0 0.7, see how it does. Just back it off a little bit and see and seeing how the how the grass looks. So I'm already seeing the benefits of it. I'm not running at a, a pound of nitrogen per month like most people are doing or what conventional guidance uh, tells you to do on um, on Bermuda when it's actively when during during the growing season. I'm not I'm not anywhere near that. All of last year, I was what 30 percent less than that. So I'm already doing that, Scott. So uh, so yeah, it's it's been worth it to me. And it's uh, it's it's this year we're gonna play with it even more. Try and uh, you know jockey the rates down a little bit more and see where it breaks, see where it falls apart, see where the the, the, the color starts to go away and the lawn starts looking not so great. But I can tell you that the 0.8 rate, the 0.8 um, end rate uh, works well uh, if you are doing what I do to my lawn. So in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, the rates that I that I teach and that I have in the calendar um, and that I recommend, uh, if you're doing the 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 carbon and the the biostimulant packages, like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, you're gonna that's gonna be just fine if you're doing those things. If you're not doing those things, is you 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 may have to go up on the uh, on the amount of N that you're using in the lawn. So hopefully that, that helps and keep, I'll keep you posted, man. Definitely I, as I go throughout this season. Um, again, I'm already switching it up. Like Turfplex is a good example. Turfplex is a 22-3, right? So I'll show you one thing I'm doing different. And you, I think you may have already, you may or may not have already seen this, but Turfplex, um, the fur that I was running all of last year, is a 22-3 formulation, right? And it's fairly quick release nitrogen. So this guy is a 22-3. This year I'm starting out with uh, release zero, which is a nine is a 901, which is a 901 formulation. So uh, you know, less than half the amount of of nitrogen per app than what I'm getting and what I was putting in with the uh, with the Turfplex. So we're gonna see. We'll see how it how it works. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that for the first um, you know first couple of months and see how it how the lawn looks. I, I imagine it's gonna do just fine, but we'll we'll see how it uh, how it looks. Again, to your point, uh, a big benefit of introducing carbon and biochar to the soil is it nutrient retention and the ability to back off on having to put so much fertilizer into the into the lawn. So we're going to find out this year. Appreciate the comment, sir. Appreciate it. All right, next up is Parker's Aquatics. He says, I just got my soil test back and I'm extremely high in zinc. Any ideas on what would cause it and how to fix it? Not sure what would cause it, but how to fix it is a couple of things. One, just make sure you don't put any products that have zinc in them into the lawn. That's thing one. I really wouldn't worry about it. Zinc is a micronutrient. Like it's a, it's a, it's it's like a you know, uh, in some cases a part, a fraction of a part per million. So it's a very small amount that that the uh, that ne it's needed in the soil. 
Um, so just don't put any more into the soil is what I would say, uh, Parker's Aquatics. And if you want to back it, if you want to try and get rid of some of it, which again, I don't really recommend doing, you can just start bagging your clippings. Like that is going to remove nutrient from the soil, but it's going to remove everything. It's not going to remove only zinc. It's going to be like all your macros and all the other nutrient levels. It's going to, it's going to reduce those as well. I would just take the route of um, you are where you are. Don't add any more and just, uh, and just let it ride. Let it, let, let the, you know, See, see where, how, how the lawn does. It's not, I've not really run into issues or seen anyone where a soil test that had high or elevated zinc levels was causing an issue with, um, with the way the grass looks. So I really wouldn't worry about it. Okay, next is, okay, we got questions. Kevin is giving some options on taking care of dog uh, urine spots. And I'm looking for the next comment, next question. So I know we got to speed up. Next is slipping while you're sipping. It says, so besides pre-emergent, what else can I put on my Bermuda lawn to get healthy and jumpstart it? What else can you do to it to help to get it healthy and jumpstart it? Um, essential G. Essential G, and then assuming you've done a soil test, once you're done with that, uh, fertilize according to your soil test results. But something you can do year round, assuming the lawn isn't fro frozen, is a granular carbon product. So essential G is something you can absolutely do now. I'll flip in while you're sipping, um, while you're waiting for the grass to, to, green, to green up. Uh, Fairway Bermuda says, Ron, do you worry about those trees on the vanity strip getting huge or affecting the front lawn? Unfortunately, the trees, um, uh, uh, Daryl, they had an accident. Uh, there's an accident last year and the trees, they're, they're gone. They got, um, they got in an accident. So there's not really trees on the vanity strip um, that are going to cause a problem uh, anymore. So, you know, it kind of stinks, but at least the grass on the vanity strip is always going to look nice, right? So yay for that. All right, uh, next is uh, uh, for Bermuda Lawn, or, or Daryl's back again. He says, what fertilizer program does your uh, neighbor Alex use? The same thing that I do. Uh, Alex is, uh, right now, his levels, his phosphorus levels are a little bit low. So we're starting out with the uh, triple 12. So he's got triple 12. He's going to be rolling with that. And then he's going to transition to Humic Max just like me. Because literally, here's the thing. Most of the time when I spray my lawn, I'll go over and spray his lawn too. So there, there are, the lawns get the same, the same love, the same treatment. Uh, his, um, his, his phosphorus levels are a little bit lower. So he's starting out with a triple 12 and then again, we'll move to something else, uh, later on, probably in May, uh, we'll switch, we'll transition back to Humic Max in his lawn. Next is get it done. He says, I'm in Georgia and the lawn is starting to green up. Um, really nice. What are you doing about this cold weather coming in? Complaining about it. That's all I can do. <laughs> There's not much else I can do other than complain and and hope that it's not as bad as uh, you know everyone's is, is saying it's going to be. Some people are saying it's going to get, it's going to be snow, and this is going to be it, and this is the end of it, and we're not going to have green up this year, and all this stuff. And I just think they're just they're just being party poopers. It's going to be a couple of days, and then we're going to be back to uh, the lawn moving in the right direction. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. Get it done. You know, it'll be a slight setback, but nothing too nothing too serious. I appreciate that, Maurice. Thank you so much for watching, sir. Appreciate you uh, being in the live stream. Next is uh, Justin Mitchell says, hey, new construction with dirt. Looking at Bermuda. Hancock Seed Rep told me Arden 15 is going to be discontinued soon. Uh, recommended a Highland Turf. Thoughts? How quick to fill in two acres from seed? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Highland Turf. That's a, that's a fun one to go research now. I have to go look into it. Highland Highland Turf. Um, yeah, I have, to, I have to look into that one, um, Justin Mitchell. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, two acres. I was about to tell you just go sod it, but then you, I saw the end. You said two acres, so that's not happening, right? That's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be cost prohibitive. But um, but yeah, if Arden is about to be discontinued, uh, here's the thing: if it's being discontinued, it's more than likely they're going to have a successor to it, kind of like so Princess Seventy Seven was was it was there first, and then Arden Fifteen superseded it. So I imagine if Arden Fifteen is being discontinued, there's going to be a successor to it. I would imagine that's going to be the case. So. Just hang out and see, uh, you know what what that's going to be, or just try one of the other one of the other um, Bermuda varieties that you could establish establish from seed. I'm not familiar with the Highland Turf uh, variety. I'll have to look at it after the live stream as well. All right, next is um, Aaron Mizzle says the same as Justin at uh, Justin Mitch, uh, same as at Justin. Um, we are thinking about hydro mulching tiff. Uh, any any tips? We have uh, wedding in November. Will it be fully green by then? Uh, so you're asking if you if you are so you have a brand new lawn, if you begin seeding it or or sodding it, will it grow in by will it be ready by November? It can be. 
It can be depending on, yeah, I mean, Bermuda, especially Bermuda is spreads as it's incredibly aggressive grass. So assuming that the soil is in decent shape, assuming that uh, you do a good job with seeding it. So you, uh, you know, you use like a slit seeder uh, to make sure you have good uh, soil seed contact, you're fertilizing properly. And then once it starts growing, you mow it, you just mow it a ton, like you mow it a lot. That's going to really promote the grass to thicken up faster. So could it be nice by November? Yeah, I mean, it could be, I mean, forget November. It could be looking nice by September if you, uh, you know, if you, if you do all those things I'm, I'm telling you, uh, right, because figure November, the lawn's already fallen off. By November, it's going to be, it's going to be starting to go dormant. So, uh, so yeah, you know, if you're doing, if you're starting here in May, late April, early May with your seeding project, and you're just, you really go, you know, hardcore as far as mainly keeping up with your mowing and your fertility and making sure, you know, the, the grass is getting everything it needs. It should look, be looking really solid by the end of, uh, and the end of the growing season by September, October should be looking really good. Should be looking really good, especially Bermuda. If you told me zoysia, there's no chance. If you told me that, you know some other grass type, um, unlikely, but Bermuda, especially if especially if the conditions are right. So you have plenty of sunlight, it's going to uh, it's going to do it's going to do well. All right, Hallfield Fashion says, my man Ron, I appreciate you sharing my video. My wife was just as excited as I was that you would share on the live stream. I'm gonna do the unboxing video, so we'll do that in the morning. Nice man, yeah, send me that. I want to see I want to see the new harbor once you get it and you break it out. Uh, very cool stuff. Again, congrats on the mower. We didn't clap it up for you, but we're going to do it again anyway. Congrats, congrats on the new hardware. And I've already answered that question from G Business. And uh, let's see. Um, and he says that, yeah, Roland wants me to wants me to follow his program, uh, maximum striping and scarifying for a few times and cutting before the year. Already have grass height right, so no scalping and mulching. Just bag. Cool. Yeah, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Let me know how it... Uh, <clears throat> how that works out for you. Okay, uh, next up is Tombo55201 says, Hey Ron, I'm watching my son's dog and I'm getting a few brown spots from pee. I take the hose and spray them, but is wondering if you have any ideas. Yeah, that what you're doing is about the best you can do. Uh, really, the um, outside of that, if you can train the dog to pee in one area, to, to get like a designated area of the lawn, like a corner somewhere, that's likely you're not going to see it ideally get training them to urinate there that's going to be your best bet uh that's what i would recommend for you know minimizing brown spots in your lawn due to urine um that is what i would i would i would go with uh very good um and then next we have a uh, heartfelt says uh, roland believes that mulching stops the sun from getting to the crown and causes stats buildup encourages fungus and disease that's one way of looking at it i guess i mean you figure that in overseas they don't use a lot of the products that we use and they have pretty good looking lawn grass but um i mulch my lawn literally religiously like it's like you know all the time like literally like for for literally my, my lawn gets bagged twice in the year for the most part that is going to be when it's um my scalp and then right before the 4th of July. I guess I could do try bagging all the clippings, but the problem is is that with all the square footage that I have, like it's it would be too much. Like I literally would have I'd have a huge problem getting rid of all the uh all the grass clippings. And I'm also throwing away a lot of fertilizer. You know what I mean? So I mow so often that the the clippings break down really quickly anyway, and then for me, the disposal of all those clippings is going to be a problem. You know, it's going to be it be an issue. Like my the, the trash people aren't going to take, you know, 10 bags of grass clippings every every week because that's what it would be for me mowing every other day you know what i mean so i i get it that works for some lawns for smaller lawns but for a larger lawn it just wouldn't it just wouldn't work well i mean you think about it, if you tell a golf course that they have to bag all their clippings they're gonna look at you like you're going like a you know a, a 17th eye or something like that right so it's the i i get it there are benefits to that that methodology but it is not like by doing that that's not the only way to get good looking grass Kind of like what I do is not the only way to get good looking grass. All right. Next is uh, Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, stupid question. No such thing. He says, um, uh, but I know I'm in the safe zone. Um, LOL. When mixing liquid products, is the mix amount in addition to the gallon of water or part of the gallon? For example, six ounces per gallon equals one gallon total. Yes. Yes. So... If you have a four, a good example, if you, have a, if you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, right? And that four gallon backpack sprayer is gonna cover if you spray the way I spray, 
you're gonna put down one gallon of product mixture over a thousand square feet. So that four gallons of product mix is gonna cover 4,000 square feet. That four gallon product mixture is water and and product. So a good example, if I'm spraying liquid fertilizer, liquid fert, and I'm also using, let's say the carbon kit, um, and what else? And maybe some PGR, like all those things do consume some of the volume in the, the tank of the backpack sprayer. I mean, it's a small amount, but they do consume some of it. But the total volume of what's in that sprayer stays the same. It's still four gallons. And again, that, that mixture, which consists of water as a carrier for the most part, and then whatever else I have in there goes down at one gallon over a thousand square feet. Does that make sense? So when you're, if, you're, if you're doing it the way, if you're mixing the way I, I recommend and I show, like in pretty much all my videos, you're gonna fill the sprayer halfway full with water. You're gonna add your products, agitate that, mix it up, get everything suspended, add more water to fill it up and then give it another quick mix just to make sure everything is, you know, is incorporated nicely and then go out and start spraying. So with that, you're gonna end up with, again, four gallons of product mixture. I would not, in other words, I would not put four gallons of water in the sprayer and then add your products on top of that. One, you're probably gonna run out of space. And then two, it's not, you're not, you're not doing, um, using a method that's gonna allow it to mix as well as it would if you did halfway full, add products, and then add, uh, add products, mix, and then finish filling it and then give it another shake there and then go out and, and apply it. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. And yeah, you're right. No name says, yeah, part of the gallon is so that you spray one gallon per thousand square feet. That's exactly right. Thank you for the super chat, Froggy Friday. Appreciate you. Super chat received. I really do appreciate it. And let's say Eric Leon says, meant to say headway. No problem at all, um, Eric. Next is Deb Tosh Mizra says, hey, Ron, thanks for the amazing content. Been very helpful. A solar print, granular, or liquid. Which one would you recommend more? They're both equally effective. Uh, either one will work well. The liquid gives you more options over application rates. So a good example, like you say you're treating, um, let's say all you care about is armyworms, right? It's kind of unlikely, but if let's say all you care about is that. If you, all you care about is armyworms with a celeprin, the liquid, you could run a much lower rate than if you're also trying to do an application that covers armyworms and, um, uh, grubs and annual bluegrass weevils and um, bill bugs, like some of the more difficult to kill insects that, that require higher application rates. Like with a liquid, you're able to easily like jockey those rates or play, decide, decide, decide which way, how heavy you want to put the product down, right? For most people with a liquid, I recommend a rate of like 0.2 um, ounces. So on the, let me show you here. So on the Acelloprin, bottle, I'll pull this off. On the Acelloprin bottle, they've incorporated a very nice, get my eyes out of here so focus. They've incorporated a very nice mixture or uh, measuring cup. Um, what you're gonna use is 0.2, use that mixture, that rate, with one gallon of water over um, a thousand square feet. So let's say you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, we're gonna take that rate, 0.2, and we're gonna multiply it by four. So we're gonna end up with a total of 0.8 of a Acelloprin. Um, mixed with four gallons of water. But the problem is now you're looking at this, you're gonna say, hey, Ron, well, the measuring container only goes up to 0.5, so what do we do? Um, what we do is you're just gonna, again, you're gonna follow the same process, take your backpack sprayer, fill it halfway full with water, and you're gonna take this up to the 0.4, right? So we're halfway there, pour that in this in the tank, and then do another, no, another, and add another 0.4. So now we're at 0.8, a total of 0.8. Add that to the tank, mix it up, add some more water, fill it up, and then go spray it to your lawn. And now that, that mixture that contains approximately a gallon of water and 0.8 fluid ounces of a Acelloprin is gonna cover 4,000 square feet. So that's that's the rate. That is, if you want like a single rate to rule them all, that is um, what I'd recommend. You can, there are heavier rates you can use uh, for a Acelloprin, but you really, you really don't need to go much heavier than 0.2 to have like the, have broad coverage. And that 0.2 rate, uh, if memory serves me, is going to be something like 21 to 22,000 square feet of coverage. So it's so at the rate that I recommend applying it, you you get a bit more coverage out of the liquid than you do out of the granular. But you know, it's there's also it's more work with the granular. Literally, it's like you throw it in the sprayer, set the I mean, sorry, in, in your broadcast spreader, in your Earthway, and set the spreader and go to town, and you're done and water it in. With the liquid, you got to measure it you know, and you gotta you know, make sure you shake it up and, you know, and apply it and make sure, and you need to make sure that you're using a calibrated backpack sprayer, meaning that you are putting out a gallon of that mixture 
over a thousand square feet. So there's, if you if, if you meet all those, that criteria, which again, is not really hard, it's not hard. I'm making it sound like it's hard, but it's really not that hard. If you are, can do those things, then liquid is the, is a good way to go. You get a, you get a bit more coverage out of it. Um, I think the liquid actually costs a bit less than the, um, than the granular, but it's also more headache. It's more headache for most people. Then, you know, considering you're only gonna be doing this once in a season, uh, it it's your preference. It's your preference. I guess another thing you could say is that if you were gonna apply something else, right? Like so gonna, another thing, another um, feather in the liquid's hat is if you were going to apply some soil-based products. So say you want to apply some, you know, uh, a nutrient for the soil or a, or some kind of a biostimulant. Um, you know, with a, being a liquid, you could mix that in with it and then apply them both at the same time. So that's one advantage that the, the Celeprin liquid has over the over the granular. But again, we're just really splitting hairs here. Either one is going to work well. Either one is going to get a great result with. Whichever you are more comfortable with, that's the one you should go with. Neither neither is particularly difficult. And I'm going to have a video on the Acelaprin liquid coming out here soon. Um, I just need to edit it and, and and get it released. I'm trying for Sunday. We'll see. Maybe it may not be Sunday. It might be um, worst case. It will be uh, by next week. By next week, it will be released. But I'm trying for Sunday. We'll have to we'll have to see. But either way, either way works. Um, I'm Deb Tosh. Next is um, Deke Regan. He says, hey, Ron, I put down granular pre-emergent Lescoprodiamine lows three weeks ago. I can still see the yellow specks of product laying on the ground. How long does it take for it to dissolve in the soil? Well, if it gets watered, it should begin to break down and get down into the soil. Um, the prodiamine that we carry breaks down or doesn't, or the, the whatever, the, the coating or the product that the, the prodiamine is coating breaks down faster. Like I've not seen people that, that I've not heard any complaints about the prodiamine that, that we covered, uh, that we that we sell in the golf course lawn store, doing that. So I don't I don't know for that particular product. It should be fine though, because they sell a ton of the Lesco stuff. So I don't you know I can't see why it should um, be misbehaving like that. But just make sure it's watered in. Like you got you have to apply it and then make sure it's watered in to, for it to begin breaking down. Uh, three weeks seems like a long time. Three weeks seems like a long time. It should I would imagine it would be integrated um, by now at this point. So it would be, be breaking down at this point. So, all right. Obama says, Deke, I use the same. The prodiamine is actually coated and dissolves after the after watering. The rock you see is the carrier. Yeah, so make sure you're watering it. If you water it, it should, should break down. It says, how, it says uh, Tony Valdez says, how much will you be selling your Primo Max for? It's going to be listed at $39.99. That's what it's going to, that's what it's going to be so, uh, selling for. I literally already have the product description built. I can't show it to you guys because it's not live, but yeah, that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be selling for. $39.99. That's what it's going to sell for, Tony. So again, if you if you are if you can find it in your heart to be patient and give me uh, you know, until like this time next week, till next Friday, it will be on the store then. I'll also announce it on the um via YouTube. I'll have like a I'll do like a YouTube uh, um what do you call it, a community post about it letting you guys know that, hey, yeah, it's available, so you can go get it now. So yeah, it's gonna, it's only gonna be, uh, it's gonna be less than a week from this point. Uh, it's already on its way, it's just gotta get here. So just, that's, just bear with me, it's gonna be here soon. It's too early for PGR anyway, so waiting a few more days is not gonna, is not gonna kill you. So I'll, I'll let you guys know, both via a community post, um, and also definitely on the live stream next weekend, I'll, I'll let you guys know that it's there. But $39.99, that's what it's going to, uh, what it's gonna be. All right, um, uh, Lois H is saying, I have um, I have a sitting area under trees with shrubs and plants that require watering. I use shredded leaves as weed control. It can stay moist. How um, how would I use the Miramichi green to take to keep back the mosquitoes? Yeah, so you're talking about the pest control, Lois, so like this, something like this. So what you can do is uh, you can use a sprayer. If you already have a backpack sprayer, you can simply use this in a backpack sprayer and spray the entire area. So if you have like a, a bench there, you got like a sitting area, you got a tree, you got much of like the entire area, so you can just simply spray it with this. That is gonna do a ton for keeping mosquitoes and other just insects, gnats, those kinds of things, away for around three weeks, thereabouts. Uh, if you have a fogger, uh, you know, it's gonna go, it's gonna last even, um, you're gonna have a lot more options as far as um, the coverage going further, but it sounds like you're just using it for like a to spot spray just a particular area. So in that case, you know, 1500 square feet, with um with the application rate, I think it's like eight ounces or so with a gallon of water. Like that's gonna be enough for what you're trying to do. And again, the stuff smells good. It smells like um 
it smells, it has like a lemony scent to it. So it doesn't smell bad at all. It's really good, really, it's a great product. So for what you're trying to do, it's, it is absolutely perfect. You could spray the area, you could spray even the furniture, the lawn furniture out there. And then once it dries, you can, you know, start using it and you should see a, a huge reduction in um, insects uh, that are bugging you. Really should. All right, uh, Scott saying we should need some end-up trials for Bermuda grass striping. They should breed one that stripes like rye. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Very, uh, very cool. Uh, let's see. Hershey's Don says, what's the simplest method recommended to get rid of Bermuda, to rid a Bermuda lawn of wild onion grass? Uh, I mean, if you're using pre-emergence, that should prevent a lot of that. I think I want to say, I want to say that, that um, Prodiamine is rated to, um, to prevent uh, wild onion. Uh, what else can you use? Image. So Amazequin will do wild onion. And I'm trying to think if Celsius will. I do not know. That's a good question. That's a good one. I can check the product label real for you really quick here, Hershey's. Let us see. Will Celsius do the wild onion? Let's look at the product label and see if that is listed there. Uh, onion. I do. Yep, it is. It is. So Celsius will do wild onion. It's on the label at, um, yeah, it gives you the rate to use for it too. So if you want an option to get rid of wild onion in your lawn, you can go again here, go to golf course lawn store, go to shop, go to weed killer and choose this guy, Celsius. That will, that will get rid of wild onion in addition to a host of other weeds in your, in your uh, Bermuda lawn. This is like literally one of the best uh, herbicides you can use on warm season grass other than Bahia, which you don't have. So you're good to go. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. You're very, very welcome, Bill. He says, thanks for all you do. I'm learning so much. Wondering if, if the talk you gave on annual uh, ryegrass also applies to perennial. Uh, yeah, I just wouldn't. I'm. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know how quickly annual, um, how, wait, hang on. You said that annual ryegrass applies to perennial. Most people that oversee, do you, a lot of them use perennial ryegrass. I mean, some of them use annual, but most people use perennial. So you have to spray it to get rid of it. So, uh, yeah, so I, again, it's, it's be the same thing. You have to, you have to spray to get to, to, to knock it out of your, uh, out of your, your lawn. Um, let's see here. Uh, Eric Leon says, I joined the Academy and noticed their calendar. There are two aerations about a week apart. Is, is that correct? I will check that, um, in the calendar, um, Eric. And if it's not correct, I'll, I'll fix it. Um, no. So aeration, you really should only have to do that once per season, uh, unless you're, you're doing it also part of your top dressing process. So I'll check the calendar tonight and, uh, and, and correct that if that's, uh, if that's an error, uh, in the, in the calendar. Okay. Uh, Adam Carter is there says, hello, Ron, wondering if a person lives in Georgia, do you just go to their house if they're having problems with their turf? No, I don't do that because mainly just time. I don't have the time. Um, because here's the thing, really everything you need to know, everything you need to know as far as getting a great lawn is, um, you, you can already find it on my YouTube channel, but if you really want to go like super hardcore, like what I do on my lawn and what I do on Alex's lawn, it's all in the golf course lawn Academy. It's all in the course that I put together. So really, if you follow that, if you follow what's in there, you do everything that's in, that's in here at golfcourselawn.com, um, and you keep up with your mowing, you're going to have a great lawn. It's going to cut, you know, you're going to be able to get rid of weeds and you're going to have uh, an amazing lawn. So um, so no, I don't, I don't go, um, to individuals lawns because really, even if I went there, I look at it and I'd be able to say, yeah, you can use this herbicide to get rid of this, 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 and this, uh, get a soil test done. Let's fertilize according to the soil test and mow, mow a whole lot. That's, that's it. That's, that's, that's what the consult would, would sound like. All right. And then uh, Lance upset. I, I just bought another bag of ESG with that said, I will be using humic max essential G this year. Yeah, buddy. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Um, and then Ripmaster says, do you ever watch how to with doc? Not recently. I, I mean, I've seen his content in the past, but I haven't watched any of his stuff. Um, um, recently I should check it out. It's always good to see what other, other YouTubers are doing, especially because he has the same kind of grass that I do, uh, just to see what his, what his, what, you know, what he's doing for his program and that kind of thing. But no, not, not recently, but I have seen his content, um, in the past. Okay. We are winding down, guys. Jeffrey saying, I got a, a, a Yard Mastery backpack spray this week. You're one of the lucky few that got one. They, they came in stock and they sold out super quick. It says, I'll be calibrating when it arrives next week. I also put 
I also um, got an Earth 50, uh, the Earthway 2050P. Is it too early to put out some Caravan G? Uh, yeah, unless unless you have a fungus problem that, that just happens to be manifesting itself in your lawn this early in the year, I kind of doubt it. Uh, Caravan, I would wait. I'd wait on that. I'd wait till a little bit later in the year uh, on that, Jeffrey. Uh, so hopefully that uh, that helps. That helps. Okay, let me see what else we have. Um, Large Picture says, how do you get rid of moles in your yard? Um, so a couple of things you can do, Large Picture. So you can get rid of, you want to eliminate their food source. That's, that's thing one. So uh, one of the things that moles tend to go after or target are grubs. So if you can eliminate grubs from your yard, you're taking away their food source. So that's going to that's gonna reduce how many moles are in your yard. And then second, you can use like a, um, like a poison um, to get rid of those. That's not so nice. But that between those two things, you should see a big reduction. There's a mold um, poison called Talprid that you can use. Like that's uh, that's pretty effective. I'm not sure if I still have a link for that. Maybe let's see. Mole, 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 mole. Nope, not. Uh, I think. But look, look it up. It's called Talprid. Yeah, here we go. I found it. Uh, yeah. So this will help as far as um as far as getting rid of the moles and um, at large picture, you're still here. Um, that will get take, get rid of the moles. Um, and as far as uh, food source, something like a celeprin is a good option. Like that's gonna, that's gonna get rid of grubs in your lawn or white grubs in your lawn. And then you're not gonna have, you're gonna, you're gonna eliminate one of their food sources to where they wanna go somewhere else. So between um, uh, a celeprin and then a good poison for the for the moles that should uh, should do the trick. Uh, Corey Binion says, "What's a good uh, pre-emergent that will target dove weed in Bermuda?" Uh, I have to look at the label for a cel for a celeprin. <laughs> Everything's a celeprin. I have to look at the label for prodiamine or dithiap here. I would imagine that both of those would work. One or one or both of those should work. Corey, check the labels for either of those. They sh I would think that that should be the uh, that should do the trick. As far as uh, as far as dove weed, and uh, let's see what else. Um, hey, Frank Huang says, "Hey Ron, do you have Celsius WG in stock?" Thanks. I do, Frank. I do. I will uh, just go to the golf course lawn store, go to the weed killer section. But if that's too much work, if if like I'm, you know, I'm making you do too much work to have to go up there and click around and find it, what I'll do is I'll give you a link directly to it. It'll save you that much time. So if you're still around, Frank, I know I got, it's taken me a while to get down here to the, to the last part of the question. So at Frank, uh, Frank Huang, there is uh, Celsius right there. And if you want, again, something to combine with it to, for like an awesome one, two punch right next to it at the store is um, certainty. So get certainty, combine it with Celsius and Happy days as far as keeping weeds or killing weeds in your lawn. Keeping weeds out of your lawn, just use pre-emergent. But for getting rid of weeds, that combination of orange season, season grass is pretty awesome. All right, we're winding down. We got Ernie says, hello, Ron, checking in. The areas of my lawn that were attacked by army worms this summer is coming thicker than the rest of the lawn. What do you think is the logic behind it? Don't know. I don't know, Ernest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe they got rid of some thatch and it's greening up. <laughs> they because they eat everything, so maybe they they ate a lot of the the grass clippings, a lot of the um maybe the material that was in those that area, and it's causing it to green up a little bit faster. I don't really have an answer for you on that one, but that's the only thing I can really think of as as to uh, as to why that 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 area is thinner than the rest of the lawn, so it's getting more heat and uh, it's going to cause it to green up a bit a bit sooner. That's that would be my guess, but I don't I don't know for sure why. Uh, your the areas that was attacked by army worms is greening up more. All right, um, Drea Poach says, "Hey, bud, I put down pre-emergent last week, and yes, I watered it in, and I'm starting to see weeds, mostly poa. What's the next step I should take?" Yes, so the pre-emergent that you that you put down last week, uh, Drea, is not going to do anything for the weeds that are currently in your lawn, and it's not going to do anything for poa. To prevent poa, uh, you need to put you need to apply pre-emergent in the fall so the to prevent like spring early spring weeds like the or I should say um late winter early spring weeds like poa um use pre-emergent in the fall so right now to get rid of them it's going to be more expensive um you can do a couple of things if you want to get rid of poa you can either use um certainty or negate um or just wait until it gets hot and then it'll die off but the pre-emergence you're applying now is going to prevent 
crabgrass and spurge and other warm season weeds from from um, taking root in the lawn. It's not going to do anything for the uh, the existing weeds in your lawn, unfortunately. All right, um, and then a large patch description says my my dirt my backyard is dirt. I'm going to seed it. I have many dips in my ground. Should I add sand to those dips before leveling? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would not fill in heavy dips with just sand. I would use. Um, really topsoil for initially. And then if you wanted to use at the top layer, at the, as you get closer, if you want to use a sand soil mix, that will work fine. But I would not do just 100% sand, depending on, you know, if you're talking about a really, really deep run, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And Jeff, you're very welcome. He says, I want to thank me for your soil test recommendations. You're very welcome, sir. No problem at all. Happy to help out. Glad it was useful. And then uh, Herbie says, yeah, you guys still live. Yeah, tell me about it. It's four, four and a half hours. He says, uh, wow, this is much longer than I've seen before. It is, but you guys have questions. I'm going to have to start, you know, here's the thing. I'm going to have to start making sure the questions come in sooner or we're just going to have to call it at four hours. But since I didn't, I didn't institute that, I didn't say that ahead of the live stream, I feel compelled to finish and we're almost done anyway. So we'll finish, we'll finish. And then, uh, and then Red Twin 1968 says, I agree on Celsius uncertainty. I'm glad that you agree, Red Twin. It's a very good combination. Not the cheapest, but it works. And uh, it's, uh, it's what I'd recommend. So there you go. Um, Robert Wallace says, hey, Ron, happy um, Friday. Wonder where you purchased your AccuGage from AccuProducts. So AccuProducts International, the people that actually make it, that's where I got mine. So just go to their, their store and then configure it the way you want it and then um, and send it out. Because there's different options. You can get it with a, uh, what do they call it? It's like a handle that has like a guard that prevents the um, the dial indicator from being damaged. There's, um, there's an electronic dial indicator option. There is a case option. There's a ton of different things you can do as far as that. So just go there and spec it out the way you want it and then order it. I got it from the actual manufacturer. So it's it's Accu Products International is who uh, sells the Accu Gauge. That's who does it. Uh, let's see. Adam Carter says, hey, happy Friday, Ron. Wondering where you... Per oh, I think I already know. He says, uh, wondering... If a person lives in Georgia, now I already answered that question. I don't do that, I think. And um, uh, let's see, DDOM, I'm gonna have to look at your soil test. I can tell you already. He says, why, why would my front lawn have 50, 51 parts per million of iron compared to 0.18 parts per million in the backyard? They both received the same treatment all of last year. I emailed the soil test results. I have to look at it, DDOM. I'm not sure why the iron between the front and the back would be that much different. I'm not. I'm not sure why there's that um, that big of a of a difference in your in your soil test results for iron between those two areas. What I might say is uh, for the front lawn, just don't put any don't add any products that have any have iron in them. So just refrain from adding any iron to the front lawn, at least for the first part of the season anyway. And just use iron products like something like a like a like Nutrizol or something that has like um, iron in the area. It's deficient. I'm not sure why there's such a, a huge swing, but it, I have seen that. I mean, you, you look at some lawns. I've seen test results where you look at like a front lawn and a back lawn, and like the phosphorus levels between the front and back lawn are are different. I mean, they're not like they're not like night and day different, but they're different enough that you wouldn't think that's they came from um, you know soil that's within a hundred feet of each other. You know, so it can definitely happen. It can definitely happen. Uh, Andrew Buck says, hey, good afternoon, Ron. I've been, afternoon, you must be somewhere on the West Coast. It's, it's like late here. <laughs> he says, I've been looking at the spike, the aerator spike shoes. They kind of look like a gimmick, but I'm interested. What are your thoughts? I don't know, man. It seems like a lot of work. I don't know how well they'd work. And it's, you might, I mean, I'd be afraid of damaging my knees with those things. You know, if you're, if you're going, walking, sitting there walking around with the spike area, with the spike shoes, and if you, they got stuck and then you, you know, you, you zigged when you could have zagged. Like that's you can that's how you get knee injuries, man. So I don't I don't know. Um, I would just get a real aerator. I would get a hollow. I would just go and rent a proper aerator and do it that way. That is what I would do. But if you decided to go with the spike shoes, let me know or let us know. Come back to the live stream and let us know uh, how it works out. All right, Ryan uh, Wolfell says I got my Bermuda scalped as low as I could with my John Deere one inch. What height of cut should I aim? Uh, should I aim for to give it a nice golf course lawn look? Just shy of twenty five thousand square feet, no real mower yet. So that a lot of that Ryan is going to come down to time. Like how much time do you have? Really, to have the lawn look nice, you're going to want to be mowing it at least 
twice a week, which I know for 25,000 square feet is a lot. So if you can mow twice a week, um, if you can maintain it at an inch and a half, below an inch and a half, you know, inch and a quarter, somewhere in that space, uh, that's gonna look really good. And that's that's doable. That's doable with mowing twice a week. As long as you really are careful about how much uh, nitrogen you're feeding the lawns, you're not trying to push a bunch of excessive growth, you could pull that off with, with mowing twice a week. And, and the lawn is gonna look really nice uh, nice for that. In the peak of the summer, you might be on three times, but for the most part, if you can, if you can get out there twice a week, and you can maintain the lawn at an inch and a half, maybe just a little bit under that inch and a quarter. It's going to look really nice, and uh, and that that's that is doable for twenty five thousand square feet. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Um, Tim Jackson says I, I saw today Earthway has sand distribution insert for their spreaders. Sounds like a good idea for top dressing. Huh? It might be. Might be. I'd have to check it out, Tim. You have to send me a link. Send me an email, man. Send me an email with, with, with where that is. So Ron at golfcourselawn.com, uh, send me an email to that um, that uh, add-in for sand distribution. It could be kind of cool. That If that actually works, that would make using um, carbonized PN uh, you know, an option for, for top dressing then, using a broadcast spreader, which would be really cool. So yeah, send me that if you don't mind. Good stuff. And again, that's my email, ron at golfcourselawn.com. Hershey's Don says, Ron, blessings. Thanks a bunch. You're very, very welcome. And I think we are done. That is it, guys. So long night, a lot of talking. Throat's a little dry. And uh, yeah, it was a long one. But guys, I appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, you know sticking out to the end of the show. Again, what as far as housekeeping things, make sure you go and take advantage of the um, that sale on the MySoil test kits. Again, the discount code is start spring right. I'll have it in the description of this video as soon as the video is over, as soon as the live stream is over. And what else can I tell you? Um, by this time next week, we should have uh, Primo Max. We should have PGR in the four ounce quantities in the uh, in the golf course lawn store. I'll make an announcement about it before then if it comes in sooner. Make sure you get your pre-merger down. If you've not done that, guys, please get your pre-merger down. Please, please, please apply some. Even if you don't buy it from me, like get pre-emergent and apply it because you're just, you are gonna save money on herbicides if you do that. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, outside of, uh, you know, maybe looking into some acelloprin here in a few weeks to keep uh, insects out of your lawn, I think you're all set. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out and and asking some great questions in the show. And